Oh, here we go. I think we're maybe we're uh, starting up the live stream now. Hey, welcome to this uh, Messier Marathon 2022, the April version. We are a Cloudy Nights team, that's from the forum, Cloudy Nights, specifically from the EAA subforum. And the EAA stands for Electronically Assisted Astronomy. Perhaps you've already caught part one, which began about nine hours ago with our Australian and New Zealand team. They've already bagged uh, just over 80 objects out of the 110 objects in the Messier Marathon. But now darkness is descending on Europe. And so Phil is here and he is in UK and he is going to try to see what he can get started. We'll be having observers pop on from Europe and then finally here in the eastern time zone of North America. My name is Doug and I'm here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Phil's in uh, UK and we'll also have West Coast observers now coming on as well. Uh, probably we'll be streaming for, I don't know, the next uh, uh See, probably uh, 14 or 15 hours. Uh, we might divide that in two parts. But either way, Phil, uh, we're glad to have you on. And tell us where you are and what your equipment is and show us whatever you can show us, brother. Well, at the moment, it's uh, too cloudy, but uh, it is clearing. But cool. um, what I've set up is uh, an Evolution 8-inch Hyperstar um, ZWO ASI 294. Uh, and it's an entirely remote connection using um, twin Intel NUT computers. So when I get to sharing the screen, uh, there'll be no wires between my little observatory here and the kit. So lots of vulnerabilities to technical things going wrong, but that bit tends not to fail me now. That's awesome. The major guess... problem I have is obstructions. Um, I've got a list of objects that should be ideal for my uh, location, but I think a lot of them are hiding behind uh, houses here. So I'm in a very dense urban area around 60 miles north of London. 60 miles north of London. Boy, you've had a lot of clouds this spring We've so far. Had terrible clouds. <laughs> uh, this is only my third evening out in uh, 2022. And I didn't get a great many number of nights out last year. Wow. I'm so sorry to hear that. Why do you think that is, Phil? Is it that you guys act as a shield for all the weather coming into Europe from the Atlantic? I, I know exactly what it is, Doug, because I used to work. Well, when I worked, I, I'm retired, long retired now. But I got involved with um, uh, hurricane insurance oh. and well, derivatives involving uh, hurricane insurance. and. Uh, there was a time where the West Coast of America, particularly obviously Carolina and Florida, would suffer from a long succession of major hurricanes. And more recently, the instance of hurricanes making landfall there have reduced. Of course, they've come across the Atlantic, albeit much lesser force, and we've been getting the tail end of them. Oh. Now it's changing global weather, although I think it's a prohibited to a to topic, so better not go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let's just hope they don't cancel us, Phil. But our, our gain must be, sorry, our loss must be somebody's gain. Um, That's right. You know, I think the rain and cloud drop dumps on us, which gives Belgium and France a chance. <laughs> wow. Well, let's hope that We've we can... Got our snow. We had snow yesterday. Oh my. And that's now uh, wiped out the uh, Central European contrib contributors that we had. Wow. Well, so, I see Stefan from Sweden has just joined us. So Nice. Welcome, Stefan. Maybe he's got a chance. Oh, you've got snow. <laughs> you've got snow, have you? No, actually not. We had, we had snow. Uh, but it's uh, pretty cold right now. It's uh, going to be minus six or something. Wow. tonight so uh it's a good thing i can be inside <laughs> yes for sure doing this me too 
Yeah. So I um, I started with uh, M forty five, and uh, I don't know. Sixty seconds is that uh, legal? <laughs> oh yeah, by all means, that's legal. Okay. And ten subs. Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd yeah. be beautiful. So, so which object is this, Stefan? Uh, M45. Forty-five. Okay. Yeah, we don't have that yet. The um, the team in Australia, New Zealand, didn't do that. No. Uh, maybe I can get the stop on. Uh, uh, see what M77 before it goes really. Oh, strong. that would be great. Yeah. So through well, the snow. Know, just look outside. Let's see how I. Blah, 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 blah. I want to check with Stellarium. <laughs> M seventy six. M seventy six. Oh, you're doing M seventy six. I thought you said you're doing uh, forty five. Yeah, I did 45. Oh, well, can you show us a picture, Stefan? Yeah, show us. Sure, I, I will try to share sure. my screen here. Please. Uh, share. Can you see it? Yes. Wow, it's, that's beautiful. Uh, just uh, fitting in the view. T tell, tell us what equipment you're using. I'm having a, a refractor, a one, one 10 millimeter. One ten. Seven refractor with a, now it's got the field flattener and the reducer point. Point eight reducer. Great. And then uh, it's on uh, AFI Air five thirty three. Got MC it. Pro camera, the same as uh, this guy in Australia. Oh but, yeah, uh, Michael. So it's square. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a good camera. It's, uh, a little bit tight. I wish I had a bigger field of view, but uh, I uh, recently bought a smaller scope also for for a wider field of view. Got it. Um, yeah. Bought this one <laughs> from Amazon. Nice. A 70 millimeter f6 with a reducer and flattener. Wow, it's so doing you a great job. And the plan is to put it on top of the other scope and you can okay. switch easily. So you've got 45 done and now you're going to 76 or so you said. Sorry? You said you're going to 76 now, the little dumbbell? Yeah. Okay. Give it a try. Uh, let's see. Nice. If we can see something. Yes, we can already see it uh, forming up there along with a satellite trail. Uh, it's not, <laughs> that, that, that's something else. <laughs> uh, go in here and there. Look at this. Um, maybe it was the same target <laughs> but that was uh, from the archive no, no. I, I think I tried it some weeks ago but it was uh, quite hazy and uh, the moon was up 
hard to get something. can see it, I think. Um, oh, yeah, it's very tiny there in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. This is some kind of nebula. So it is. It's a, it's, it's a little, uh, yes, it reminds you of... Um, it reminds you of 27, except it's about uh, one fifth the size. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, go live directly. Don't waste any time. <laughs> so, no, we'll see. Now, did you uh, have uh, no possibility of M77 or M74? Uh, I think uh, M77 is a little bit lower. Too low. Okay. Yeah. Uh, M74, I'm not exactly sure. 74. What is that? Ah, oh, that's why I'm gonna have to kill my video for a second. Mm. Go. You did say 72. 77 and 74 were the two that we we're really missing, but uh, if you can't get them, don't worry about it. 74. Okay. Uh, it's uh, like minus 10. <laughs> oh, no, no problems then. It's going to be hard. Yes, no problems. Uh, I have to dig deep. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. It's too many. There we are. Yeah, you can see something. Um. So what are you going for now, Stefan? No, it's, uh, I think it's this little dumbbell, uh, 76. 76, okay. 76. Still uh, stacking. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep, 
seven to six. I um uh it was an uh, update to the firmware oh the yes AI yes today when I started it and uh now I got a nice feature here I can uh, center uh, up the view the field of view more oh, exactly oh wow that's awesome before you could uh, point screen like this but it was quite uh, uh not that exact uh-huh so uh, this is much better nice basically you can drag a square to where you want how you want to frame it up and then you say go to it and then tilt nice you can reframe it Let's zoom into it. Maybe this target uh, requires a, another filter. Right now, I have this uh, UV IR cap filter. Uh, I, I wonder if it's just very faint and very small. Could be. Uh, maybe you need a better uh, big telescope or something for this one. So this is um, M76. <clears throat> Maybe those guys would have uh, those really big telescopes on the California. They can do something with this. <laughs> Maybe. 
maybe, but already that's probably good enough, Stefan, because that's what we're used to seeing in a, how big is your scope? Was it uh, f about four inches, four and a half inches? Uh, well, it's uh, 110, so that would be four and a half. Yeah, that's good. I'd say save it and go. That's good. Okay. We're going to count it as done. The little dumbbell. So you can't do 77 or 74? No, I don't think so. What about 33? 33, perhaps. Okay. If not, the house is in, in the way. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yes. Mm, it's quite low. But I don't know. Maybe okay. we'll give it a try. Our dog. Robert, how are you? Yeah, I'm um, not too good at the moment looking up in the sky. Um, we're pretty well socked in. Oh, no. I'll keep on trying. I'll keep on listening and then I'll, um, I'll report back in. Okay, sounds good. Okay, have All fun. Right. See, we'll see, see you soon. Yep. Cheers. Uh, 37 stars. I wonder if that's stars or if it's spots on the wall or something. <clears throat> well, I can just about see M fifty one, Doug, but I don't think it counts. <laughs> <laughs> it's such thick cloud. I can see the, the bright cores, but I've got such a dense cloud. Oh, <clears throat> it, it just won't live stack at all. Bummer. But when uh, when Stefan's is that a dumbbell, the little dumbbell. Yeah, little dumbbell. Yeah. When Stefan's done, I will share my screen. But it's. All right. It's Paul. <laughs> Stefan, you want us to take a look at Phil's screen real quick? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It really isn't great, Doug. But you can hang on. All right, take take a take a try at it, Phil. Need to pull that. Can you see it now? Just not yet. Is that not sharing? Uh, it might be on a second screen. You might have to drag it over to this one or something. Uh, well, I'm doing it through. Um... Remote desktop. It worked earlier. Oh, I see. Uh, where are we? Share screen. Am I sharing now? Yes. And can you... <laughs> my cursor is pointing at the yes. M51. We see it. But as we you see can it. see, yeah. it's... I'm through thick cloud. Yes. So uh, right. it's just not, it just won't look live stack. No. You're right. Well, I'll give it, give it a while. I mean, why don't you, yeah, why don't you give it a while? What, what time is it there again? It's uh, uh, 2036. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. I'll just sit on this because okay. I, I, I want to go for M51, 101, 102, 81, 82, 97, 108, 109. Okay. And they're all in the same area. Gotcha. And unless till this cloud goes over, I mean, Hyperstar will penetrate the cloud to the point of view of I can see where they are, but 
right? That's not good enough to say what they are, but you can you can obviously see is right. the galaxy, right? So I'll stop sharing and we'll Sounds concentrate good. on Stefan. Sounds good. Uh, no, I've got to find out where. <laughs> oh, oh I I can do that for you if you want. Yeah, that's done. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, using the technique I'm using, uh, yes. even though I've got a very large screen, it's yes. not very helpful. <laughs> no, I don't. Too many windows open. Well, I don't know if you can see my clouds uh, when you look at the participants, but I, yeah. I still have a lot of clouds too. That's about the sort of cloud I've got, but mm -hmm. at least I'm dark now. Yeah. Well, I'll stay on M51 and see if it clears. Okay. Sounds good. What's that, Stefan? Uh, which is the next target? Do you want to try... Um, do you want to see what you can see for Andromeda 31? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Frank. Welcome, Frank. Howdy ho. Still got clouds, Frank? Yes, sir. Lots. I was hoping some miracle had happened. I know it. Birds are chirping. That's good. Yep. I think it's also a bit low, but... Phil, it sounds like you've got a an AM radio on. Oh yeah, I know what it is. That's that's gone. Oh, I forgot to turn off the TV. I was watching some football. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just turn down the volume. You you can keep. Well, I just weren't, weren't even paying attention to it. Oh, okay. Though. <laughs> what about M thirty seven? Yeah, go for it. The Auriga salt and pepper cluster. Yep. Yeah, go for it. That could work. Okay. Now, Phil, are you outside? Because it looks like you have a hat on. Or is I have got a hat on, but you're in uh, your garden. Your garden I'm shed. Actually indoors. Okay. There's some kind of um, loud There's some hiss. background. Yeah, background. Yes. Yeah. Some kind of loud hiss, Phil. Do you mind if I mute your mic yeah, when you're not talking? You know what it is. It's my heat. Oh, oh, well, oh. Well, keep, keep well now we've got to, <laughs> you gotta be comfortable. Yeah, keep your <laughs> Absolutely. Heater running. I'd say keep your heater running and just uh mute when you're not when you're not talking yeah. but but it it reduced it drastically what did you do did you turn it off yeah but well, it's warm enough oh don't turn it off brother you'll freeze. no 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 i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> okay well we'll turn it back on and just mute when you're not talking how about that when whenever you get cold <laughs> frank
Frank, uh, why don't even though you don't have uh, your scope active, mm -hmm. and there are clouds up there, at least tell tell any of our viewers that are listening what you've got. <laughs> uh, so my gear consists of an eight inch Celestron Evolution SCT. Um, it's mounted on a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Uh, I've got a Pegasus Astro Power Box Advanced, distributing power and USB to the mount, to the cameras. Uh, the, ca the main imaging camera is an ASI 533MC Pro that gets attached either to the rear cell um, when I'm using the focal reducer or going with the full focal length of the telescope or to the Hyperstar on the front cell. Um, I've recently added a 60 millimeter guide scope oh, as well. Nice. I'm gonna play nice. my, see if we can get any longer, uh, longer exposures, longer than longer than a minute and a half or two. See if we can go for some faint nebula um, with some five or even 10 minute um, exposures in the future, whenever the clouds decide to part. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and oh, and the guide camera is a ASI 224 MC, which doubles as my planetary camera when I have the the scope set up for planetary imaging. Got it. Wow, cool setup. Yep. Does you know it's it's great the the the, the uh, versatility of the SCT being able to go from you know f10 at native or f63 with the smaller reducer or f2 with the hyperstar or or even f20 or beyond if you're talking about using a barlow lens when looking to do you know um planetary imaging which is a far you know a completely different type of imaging than than eaa or, or yeah. any deep space photography um is concerned it's it's a completely different process yeah different setup yeah, I see Mike is on. Mike, it looks like you've already done uh, M33 and M52. He's muted there. Mike, are you able to unmute? Maybe with your rig. Oh, there I'm you go. Doing, I'm doing M33. Uh, yes. 11 degrees. Oh boy. And um, I've got 21 frames, 84 seconds at the moment. I can kind of make out the arms sorry i'm on another computer so i can't oh no problem my screen i'll try and figure that out in a minute when i get going on no the other problem screen. no problem uh i had a, as you might have seen from the cloudy nights i had a big um a big cloud right in front of m33 yes and that i blew that out of the way so that's gone um <laughs> uh, so um yeah uh Plate solving is a wonderful thing for finding these things. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah no, that's M33. I can see the big, um, what's it, NGC 605 or something, that big red uh, nebula at the top of it, mm -hmm. and then the three stars through the middle. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going a bit longer, but two minutes at the moment. It's not the best. That's triangulum, isn't it? It's triangulum, yeah. There we are. Yeah, that's definitely a lot of gradients going on here. Yeah. Doug, do, do we have the ability to fill in other cells in the Notion spreadsheet beyond the the ones that where we're checking boxes, like the the row for the triangulum galaxy that Brian added is is you know uh, still missing a lot of the the other information. Oh, yes. Brian. Yes, I don't, we, I don't know, we should, you know if there's a if it's a permissions thing. I, I, I it's, don't. It's not. You should be able to edit all of it. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't seem to be able to add data to those cells. You're kidding. Nope. Well, that's weird because uh, you have full edit privileges. So that's that's something of an aberration. I mean, in the I'm looking at the sharing here. And uh, it definitely says that you can edit fully. Oh, I know why. I'm not signed into Notion. Oh, that's it then. I have to log. I have to use my. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's I, it. I, I was basically viewing viewing it as a guest. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's try stacking again. I recentered it now.
I'll um, yeah, go down to it's, YouTube. It's, uh, I think. Where's my spreadsheet? I just uh, entered in YouTube. Um, any of our viewers can follow our tracking sheet so they can see as we, uh, as we check an object that we've been able to image, the, our YouTube viewers will be able to see it. I'll go back to cloudy nights and in the, um, in the thread that's about this event, I'll put that in there as well. So. My apologies, guys. I've got the dreaded not enough stars found. Oh, no. Just so oh, come on. Just come over black. Yeah, I think I've got it now. Where's that spreadsheet gone? Hang on. Let me get up again. Oh, I got five. Uh, uh, notion. There we go. Um, I think that's officially M33. I've got quite a. I took. I've done a few different stacks, but it's um, it's it's pretty possible. Nice. I'm putting comments as to quality, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I call this pretty possible. <laughs> yeah. Mike, if you saw my M51 earlier on, you'd know yeah. that this is significantly better. We did see it though, Doug, didn't we? Yes, that's right. We no, saw I can, it. I can, um, <laughs> It, it, see, I gotta, it, it was definitely like the right cream on a faux de- frothy beer. That's right. No, yes. The but other one is well. pretty. I might do 52 again. Stefan, what are you working on now? Uh, 37. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Ooh, M52. Well, M52 is higher than um, M33, so I might give that another go, but that's that's definitely M33 we got there. I'm just trying to see if I can play with the Instagram. Mike, you, you can't do Andromeda, can you? I think that's already... I'll give it a go. That's next. Okay. Let me give it okay. a go. Good. Oh, that's uh, beautiful. Dave exactly has seen... Wow, yeah. that's you, Stefan, right? Yep. That's really beautiful. Good. Well done. Well done. Okay, oh, that's, that's definitely nice. M thirty three taken care of. That's Great. a yes. Okay, um, M. What did we say? Andromeda was that? M thirty one. Might as well try M thirty one. M thirty one. Let's see what happens. What kind of equipment is Stefan using? He's got a one ten millimeter a refractor, right, Stefan? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, M thirty one is at ten degrees. Oh, uh, barely. Yeah, might just be above the neighbor's trees. I know I see stars. Let me plate so. I think I went to the, well. One move. <laughs> so I'm just in that. M Andromeda is M thirty one. One. Yeah. Please confirm sync. Yeah, it's plate solving. Can you see there? Thirty one. I will only get a fraction of it. I've only got a one degree field of view here, 0.95 or something. So does that count? Oh, yeah. You'll probably pick up 32 as well in there. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, those are the various satellite things you mean. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. What are we at? Point one within point one degrees of it. It says. Let me just do one more click. On the plate so but it's I'm amazed. It's at ten degrees. I'm getting it. Okay, let's see what this plate so is. Point oh nine. I'll take that. Okay, labels correct. Um, plate so No, I mean uh, live stack. Clear that one. Let's see what we get. T 
two stacks. Oh no, when, when I when I get to some of the higher objects, I put my screen on. I'm just <laughs> really sure. I've got three I've got three computer screens up here. Okay, so I've got an old Dell Latitude that's got all of the uh, Messiah objects showing in the sky, so I know roughly where they are. Right. Using Delarium. I've got you guys on Zoom and the notation right in front of me, and I've got <laughs> the Workmaster, the uh, Lenovo, um, yeah. um, doing the heavy lifting you, here. You, you probably look like one of those desks at the JWST, you know, uh, where they're they're monitoring the JWST or like at NASA Space Flight Center. I hope they're better organized than mine did. <laughs> so, otherwise, let's have a look. I'm gonna. Can I see anything? It looks like Andromeda. The plate solving says I'm there. Oh, I tell you what, that that sky view of my scope is seeing more and more blue. I'm loving that. But I'm going to save this one at 72 seconds, and then 31. I don't recognize anything on it, but I'm sure if we confirm it later. Um, I'm going to come out and um, write so again and see. Randy, welcome. Roll, welcome. Do you have snow, Roll? Is Roll here? Roll is here. Uh, I bet he's brought his snow with him. You better keep it away from me. <laughs> I think it used to be my snow. Roll, well, are you are you in Antwerp, Roll? Well, you might want to laugh at this. We got a, a, a weather alert here. Uh oh. Temperatures are going to plummet, plummet to six degrees. <laughs> oh boy. That's that's cold in Valencia. The, the, for this time of year, it is. That would be forty-four yeah. Fahrenheit. Forty-four Fahrenheit. Yeah. Okay. So let's live stack again. Let's try another one. And then I'll try. After this, I'll try the satellites at N thirty-two okay. as well. Um, Randy, good to have you back. Thank you. When do you leave for the observatory, Randy? Oh, I'll be there at six thirty. Okay. Over an hour before sunrise. All I'm right. Set. How far are you from it? How big of a drive is it for you? Eight minutes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, one thing I'm going to do this afternoon, if it's okay, uh, we do homeschool with grandkids. Yes. And I'm teaching them astronomy this year. Okay. And I think I'll bring them over and- Oh, that would be high. Is that okay? That'd be great. That'd be great. Hey, uh, Roll is monitoring the YouTube stream. He says he's in Antwerp and they have no snow. He's following at the desktop without camera and microphone. But I bet that means uh, no snow, but yes, clouds. That's what I'm guessing. And Roll, we're really sorry to hear that. Yeah. So no camera, no microphone, but he can follow in the Zoom room and then he's able to type into the stream of the YouTube channel. So so whose uh, observatory are we looking at? It's beautiful. That was, well, thanks for the encouragement. That That's uh, Emerald Hill Skies. That That's the one that God has provided for me to use. It's awesome, huh? No, that's really nice. It's a lot of fun. Emeryville, California? Where, where is it? No, Louisville, Kentucky, outskirts. Oh, okay. Nice. Hey, Doug, quick question. That yes. label tag uh, that you sent through, uh, does that include um, um, altitude in it? Uh, it? No. So you're, oh, yes. Uh, no, it doesn't include altitude. It does, you said? It, it does not have altitude. No. Yeah, Do you, would you like to put it in there? You can. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, I think, what is it? I think this is the 11, 10 at the moment. 
amazing thing is I still see stars, but I don't recognize, I think because I'm too close to it and I'm not seeing any of the nebulosity or anything. Um, but I'll save these because um, if we can play it solve afterwards to verify, I mean, no label, then if no one else gets it, I think you need a wider field of view for, really for this. Gotcha. So I'm going to try, go out of this and try. Uh, let me see before I move on now. Uh, get up the... Go into. So we're at 87 objects uh, with the images that we've counted. And I notice, uh, Mike, you're not counting Andromeda as done. You're just. No, you just... Uh, M33, definitely. Yes. Um, and M52 and M103, I notice. Yeah. In fact, before I go, let me do, uh, let me try M103 again because that was a bit, wasn't pretty. I put it in a better flat since then, M103. Let's see what that will be at. Oh, M52, I said, not pretty. Fair quality, no, it's, it's I want to go to M52. Let me go back. This telescope's going to get dizzy. Okay. <laughs> It's amazing how well it's behaving now after the trouble I had all day and last oh, night. Oh, good. It was the software. It was corrupted or something like that. Oh, no. M103 is pretty pretty, actually. It's got um, a nice bright red star. It's a cluster. Oh, good. It's, it, it, it's, it's um, not the best cluster picture I've ever taken, but it was, it was pretty pretty. Um, OK, M52. OK, it's better now. There were too many clouds before. So I'm going to repeat M52. Okay. Just, I can't believe it. I'm getting these at like 10 degrees. <laughs> Good. Have a look. That was way off that one. Okay. okay. Let's go again. Okay, offset of 0 0.07. So, and what is M52? It's a cluster or something? What is it? A, an open cluster, yes. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look in here so I know what I'm looking at. It should look like a bit a bit like salt and pepper, like um, the Auriga salt and pepper cluster that yeah. Stefan did a while ago. Um, okay, well, this says I'm within 0 0.07 degrees of it. So That's I'm going to live. Pretty track. close. Yep. I'm going to live stack that again. Uh, I've got a better flat in now than I had before. So, okay, and it's stacking. So this this should be better. Good. Phil, no luck in. Uh... No, I, I I can see the core of uh, M51, but it's it's just clouds just too thick. Oh, right. Maybe they'll clear away here in a while. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm continuing to track it. Okay. Hopefully, oh, blow over, nice. but. I was supposed to have clear skies. Well, let's hope they clear away. Stefan, which one is this here? Uh, it's uh, 36. 36, the pinwheel. Yeah, it's not. Okay, yeah, this one's much better now with M52. So, well, that's, let me take a quick stack of that. You know, then... I can see why they call it pinwheel cluster. Can you guys see the uh, the different blades of the fan, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, like this. Yes, I, I've never seen, I've never noticed that before. And this is the hub, of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah, could be. I hadn't seen that before. That I hadn't seen that artwork until you did it on your refractor, Stefan. Um, sometimes it's hard to image the, oh, the name yes. of it. <laughs> yeah, yes. We had great imagination when they right we find the yeah. invite to the zoom mm -hmm. this computer almost there cloudy nights oh, here it is join meeting okay i'll be joining from another computer as well 
So I mean, I'll share this screen. This is like your ninth computer, right, Michael? Um, there's three <laughs> active at the moment. <laughs> You're wild. Recording in progress. Okay. Let me share Let me my share screen. My screen. Uh -oh. oh, I've got to hang on. Cut some microphone. The only thing more exciting than one one voice of Mike is two voice of Mike. You flatter. Okay, so um, you let me share my screen. Stefan, would you mind if we uh, look at mics for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. There it is. Share. There we are. So that's M52 stacking at the moment. Okay. Very cool. Um, huh? Yep. And remind us, Mike, what is your equipment one more time? Tell us. It's a 14 inch Dobson. So Newtonian wow. on a Dobson thing. That's all I use. Wow. Very simple, very simple setup. Uh, guy to go to, obviously, so I can uh, uh, control it remotely without a problem. Well, normally without a problem. <laughs> That's weird. Um, yeah, so I've got all kinds of bells and whistles on it. Uh, I mean, it's meant to be a visual scope, but um, they didn't tell me that when I bought it. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been my, my first telescope. I'm pretty new to astronomy. Started this about a year and a half ago. Wow, you've learned a lot in a very short time. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, so I think that's enough out of that one. 14-inch Dobsonian. Yeah, it's not, nothing like one of those, what are those, plain view things? Yes. Oh, a, I wish I had one of those. They go to mount, though. So, and uh, what's, what's, the, what's your camera um, again, Mike? That's an ASI 294 MC Pro, so that's the cold one. Um, so M52, we've got, um, we could try a satellite of Andromeda. There you That's, go. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, put these in the um, description. So and if you, uh, Stefan, if you've got anything to show and um, want to grab the screen back, feel, feel free. All right. Um, let me know. Stefan's got a um, okay. 110. Going to go ahead and write these in the descriptions. Stefan's got a 110 millimeter refractor. So I'm on 110 now. Right, you've got the screen back. Did I give it back? Yeah. Uh, yes. Good. Okay. Brian Halkett, did you get to sleep any, brother? Um, yeah, I got a little bit. I got to find which window I have open with the other. Uh... Oh meeting going here gotcha frank has an eight inch um sct with with a hyperstar so i put 52 in there would you call that an edge frank uh no mine is not is the non-edge version of the celestron sct line got it so would that be called a c8 yes Okay. So the C8 comes in a couple of different flavors. It, it's, mm -hmm. it comes in the um, classic C8, and then there's the Evolution. Yes. There's also the, um, the Edge HD. There's another one, too. That's uh, that, So there's the, like diff different trim levels, I guess, is what you <laughs> the, the, the Super 8. Yep. <laughs> Phil, are you using an 8-inch? Yeah, I'm using an 8-inch with Hyperstar. Is Phil it has the same... Phil has the same exact OTA as I Got do, it. except Got this it. is still mounted on the alt as mount. My, my alt as mount is down in the basement, um, collecting dust ever since I went to the into ever since I went to the EQ6. Got it. I'll probably put it on cloudy nights one of these days. Gotcha. And uh, hey. let's see, Brian. I might as well. Why I'm at it? Tell me again what equipment you're going to use. Okay, I'm not going to get that. Which Brian are you talking about? Brian H. Well, that's a great question. Um, if I if I hear back from Randy and the positive, I'll be I'll be driving a um, plane wave 17 inch RC 
uh, on a astrophysics mount at the observatory uh, with my poor little baby ASI 533 uh, MC Pro on it in an itty bitty field of view. Um, if, if they were having a little bit of problems with the mount, um, so if that doesn't work out, I'll be on my, um, as an alt, you want my alternate just in case? Yes. My alternates, my, uh, eight SE, uh, with a 6.3 reducer, uh, with the 533 on my Slustron GSX mount. No hyperstar this time. Got it. Okay. So I've given on the, uh, given up on the Andromeda stuff. That okay. You know, eight degrees. No I was seeing a few stars. So I'm now on Starfish cluster. That was a gap. Good. So that's my strategy is basically filling in after the Aussies moving down the sheet. Yeah, that's good. And the Kiwi. Sorry. <laughs> they're, they're, they're probably asleep now. Are they on the <laughs> Yeah, they are. They told me they were going to sleep. Yeah, they do that occasionally. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, it's clear there. I mean, it's really patchy cloud here, so it's 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 kind of a matter of luck as to where I slew to is is free. Okay, and so far offset. How dark are we in Europe already? I mean, uh, Phil, are you? Oh eight yeah, hours? full darkness. Full darkness here. Yeah. I mean, it, it got dark about nine thirty. Is good astronomy dark? Okay. Dark enough, just too much cloud. Yeah, oh, you're back to clouds again, Phil. Yeah. yeah. And the interesting thing is uh, I'm in Spain and um, Phil is in um, Colchester in, yeah. in, in the UK. And we're pretty much exactly on the same longitude. I'm a zero and a bit. And I think Phil is as well. Yeah. Even, even though we're one hour ahead. And we're only one hour ahead because of Franco. He wanted to be on the same time zone as, uh, as that German dictator. <laughs> It's true. The, so the, 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 huh? the guy about this tall. That, exactly. Uh, it never snows in Oberammergau. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think that's a little bit offset. Let me center that. No dumbbell. Oh, so we're gonna. Are we're we're gonna have to do in the United States? We're still on for 74, 77 in Andromeda, huh? That's right. That is that. Uh, uh, who do we have on the East Coast, uh, Doug? Do we have Florida or or any of those guys? I don't think Florida is. No, they're good too low. Yeah, I don't think Florida is feeling good about it because of clouds. I think you can see my uh, sky. I mean, if these clouds clear, I think we've got Linden, Tennessee, and here, and that's it. We don't have anybody up in uh, the Northeast anymore this time, huh? It's cloudy. Um, my God, yeah, I'm full of clouds here. Yeah. Uh, well, I am bright, sunny skies so far. Good. Uh, well, if that's the case, if we end up staying that way, I'm going to end up finding a place low. I'll, I will find a place that has a good northeastern view. Okay, good. I'll put my telescope there, you know, and then I'll go up to the observatory after that if I need to. Wow, that's great. You can come to Sweden. <laughs> Don't, don't we need a northwestern view to get? Sorry, northwestern. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I, I'm I'm I started out sleepy and I haven't gotten any better. <laughs> Look at the forecast. Brian, the good sport that he is, Frank. Yeah. He he insisted on coming on at uh, three a.m. So that I, the, I heard. I yeah. heard. Yeah. So. I only get up that early to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I love this pixel recenter thing in Sharp Cat. That's great. Show that to us, Michael. Uh, I just used it. Okay. Let me start imaging and I'll show you when I'm done. And when I'm, um, let's see. I'm doing the starfish one now when, it's, when, it, when it steadies itself. I will start. It's M38 I'm on at the moment. Right. And uh, here we go. Live stack. Clear. 
trouble is you're not sharing your screen so yeah no sorry guys uh <laughs> let me switch back over now whoops where are we where's my zoom screen Up to the zoom screen oh there it is okay let's see i've got to click on the zoom icon is the best way to do that there we go share screen Actually, let me stretch it first before I share screen. Otherwise, it will look ugly. It's not bad. Um, boom, boom, boom. Share screen. Where are we? This one. You see it? Yes. Uh, it's M38, guys. Uh, 40 nice. seconds. Nice. So... Let's see, I think that's probably as and as uh, Michael and Stefan, you guys know how to post these in the in the notion sheet, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna they're, they're all being saved on the drive and okay. um uh, I'm just kind of only got two hands here, so yeah, I'll put them up, not a problem, not a problem. <laughs> only got two hands. Thank you. Do you guys remember the faint fuzzies of um visual astronomy? Yes. I've now got the faint fuzzy of EAA. Oh, no. Do you want to have a look? <laughs> yes, by all means. Uh, tell me when you, uh, you're you happy me to share. Okay. Is, um, um, on, what was Michael going to show us? The, the oh, cool feature? Oh, pixel thing. Uh, let me do it on the next one. Let's go to the okay. next one. All right. Which will be 81, Bones Galaxy, yeah? Pixel. Right. Um, got me intrigued. Yeah, M81 or 82 is all the same. That's going to be a big slew. So let's cut the live stacking and put M81 in before I forget. This is always a trick. And go to, and there we go. Can you see the SINSCAN the app slewing? The number there? Think you can pro sometimes you can only see the main screen you initially show and it's slowing to bodes nebulae at the moment i've got to go check the cable in a minute <laughs> we're seeing a uh, a sharp cap view that looks still dark it's still dark because it hasn't got there yet oh but we can see the slewing with the numbers under the yeah, yeah the okay just just wondering, okay app driver here we go and we go. now let me go and um Plate solve. Oh, that's that familiar, that little familiar look. Here we go, plate solving. Can you see it, uh, the, you still see the screen, yeah? Yes. Yep, actually I should, I don't have a look at my screen. There we go. Okay, offset 3.97, so yes. it's a big jump to it. Because that, that went all the way from the west, I think it's up in the northeast somewhere here. Yes. So um, let that settle down and we'll do it again. Should have moved by now. I see your plate solving and resync, right? Yeah, that's great. You just press the little button on the bottom right. See where I am here? Yeah. And then at the top left here, so yeah. solving. That part he's familiar with. There we go, and it's now uh, 0.05, so that should be right on it. So it's M81. No, I, I love the plate solving. That's why I, I live for Isn't that. it great? Isn't oh, it yeah. magic? <clears throat> I had to upgrade the computer for it to really work well. I This old Latitude that I bought, Dell Latitude that I bought on, the, on eBay just wasn't fast enough, and... Uh, so I bought this Lenovo and uh, wow, that made a huge difference in them. Um, okay, I'll do one more plate sole for good measure. Which Lenovo do you have, Mike? It uh, tells me the name when I start off. Oh. It's the um, Logico or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, 0 0.04 degrees. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna try stacking now, see if we can see it. Clear that. We're going for bodes, huh? 
Yeah, let's see if we see it. I mean, we were, we were right on it according to the plate solving, but I don't. Um, yeah. Let's, um, yeah, let's, let's stop the stack and uh, plate solve again. When you guys are starting out uh, EAA, does it take you a while to get your screens all figured that's, out? That's perfect. You'll figure it out, Doug. <laughs> it does me too. I mean, it's I, only in Zoom I've got a problem. I uh, I bought this little stream deck. They're just like inexpensive things that they're supposed to come with a uh, uh, macro. To once you get your screen figured out, they're supposed to save the way you've got your screen all arranged and I haven't figured out how to make it work yet, but, but I can't wait to figure it out. Cause it takes me so long to draw all my little rectangles the way I want them. I'm not seeing, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to M82 next door. Cause that's a lot more uh, obvious. My problem with a twin computer Windows remote desktop setup, there's just not enough real estate on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Probably should do, I could do with setting up two screens, one for each bit of it, but we are where we are. Yeah. There's M82, though. It's plates on, right? So this is M82 I'm trying to do now. This is just next door. Offset of 0.31. That's normally really over this. Let's try that again. And it settles. Ah, oh, there we go. It moves. Sometimes I've noticed that, and I think it's the SynScan app, it won't always recenter by itself and I have to go back out to the SynScan app and do a go to to the newly yes. synchronized data. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen that as well sometimes? In when I had the SynScan, yes, when I had that. Okay. Okay. Might have been what's going on there. Okay. So now we're 0.11. That's moving. You can see with the uh, the little trail there, the star trail. Right. Just moved. Do one more. It's being a bit picky. Those big clusters are easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think the thing was I didn't have the, the map, the sky map wasn't uh... set up for this part of the sky. So gotcha. it's, it's 0 0.06. Okay, that should be visible now, 0 0.06. And let me go back out and do a go-to as well to make sure it has moved there. Ah, look at that, three degrees. That's more where it should be. Let's see. Uh, something's not right there. And play it so again and see what it tells me. Because it just moved three degrees after I go to. And you can see the plate so is pretty quick here. Point seven. Stefan in Sweden, you got anything? I <laughs> <laughs> have uh, yeah, I'll stop there for a minute. <laughs> M97. I won't embarrass myself any further on this till I find it. Yeah. I now have a recognizable M51 if you want to have a look at it. Oh, let's see it. I uh, say so it's a bit like the faint fuzzies that we had when uh, we were doing visual astronomy. But, right. Can you see it? 
Oh, well done. Good job. Oh, yeah. yeah. You cannot, Great. if I look out my door, I cannot Ooh. see a single star in the sky. I bet, yeah. Not a no. single star. I mean, that it's is. Not, that works. That's 139 frames stacked, nine minutes of exposures. <laughs> wow, that's great. On Hyperstar at four seconds and. You know what that is? That's a that's an advertisement for EAA. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, and it hasn't even thrown out a single frame. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, I, I you know quite genuinely, I cannot see a star in the sky with a naked that's, eye. That's and, amazing. But uh, it is sorry, nothing but a faint fuzzy. So you're going to tick that one off. Yeah. Right. What else? What else are we looking for in that neck of the woods? Well, uh, let's see. Did somebody do? We finished M81, didn't we? Oh no, I couldn't. I couldn't get oh, it. Yet. Okay. Can right. you do it? I'll have a go at M81. M81. For some reason, I'm having a bit of a problem here. That's, that's Bones, isn't it? M81. That's, that's yes. M81 and, and, and Cigar. And M82 right. need to be done. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop sharing and uh, I'll have a go did, at M81. Did you, did you save okay. an image of that, brother? Did you save an oh, image? Oh, hang on. You want me to save it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, what do you want? Save... Uh... What do I do? Save it on here and then upload it to the Notion. Please, please. Uh, well, I save exactly as seen. Yeah. We, you, if you upload it to Notion, you'll be one of the one of the brave souls that have started uploading to Notion. Did right. um, okay. Did, did someone do the pinwheel one hundred and one because it's not ticked? I've got it on my list to do. No, but has someone done it? I thought no, I, if it's if it's not checked off, I don't think it's done. I can do for that. I could do it. Okay. One of these little, little galaxies. Right. Go for a real galaxy. <laughs> okay. So I need to upload this to Notion. Do I? How do I do yeah. that? Doug? Yes, please. You you just uh, find the the row where you want to upload it and click well, on the find Notion first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, get into Notion. Once you're in Notion, you just click on the box in that row underneath the column images, and it'll bring up a file picker. I'm going to go check my cables. Okay. Let's just see. Actually, before I do that, let's just check this. Jensen, I'm going to step away. I'll be back uh, in about an hour to an okay. hour and a half. Okay. We'll, we'll see you then. See you then. Okay. Four degrees. No. I think that's it. Let's have a look. I think I've got M101 coming up. Let me just see. I can All see right. It. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's got to be it. Oh, I did, I did, I did, did someone just take it for me? Put it I did. I did. I, oh, you did. Well done. I did. Okay. I, I didn't remember wanna, that. I didn't want to forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me share my screen then. Um, if I can. Share screen. Okay. I haven't done the uh, histogram thing yet. Let's see oh, this. Yeah. This. Look Here at we that. go. We could even tell that you're imaging through a cloud, and yet you can still see it's a pinwheel. Yeah, I, uh, that, again, that was one of my prepared excuses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to 
say that real quick as a quick one, but I'll keep on going for it. Okay. On a bit. Sounds but that's sent it up quite nicely, actually. I took t- two plate solves. Yeah. First one was five degrees, and then the next one got it closer, and it came up dead center. Yeah. What nice kind thing. of Dobsonian do you have? What's the brand name, Mike? It's the Skywatcher one. Oh, good. 14 inch go to. I bought it used uh, about a year and a half ago. I'm actually the third user. Wow. So it was a deal. It was 700 euros. It included, wow. yeah, the scope, uh, the co- a- two inch Skywatcher coma correct. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's uh, great! A um, twenty-eight millimeter wide-angle objective, um, um, laser collimator. Wow. The guy just gave me all the stuff, you know, much more. You got a great deal, brother. I mean, I think deal. about it yeah. for seven hundred dollars. That's a fan, or for I guess it would be eight hundred. They retail. Yes. They retail the basic. The go to this go to about three thousand. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so it was. I mean, I, it was a starter scope for me, but yeah. Um, I'm boy with plate I, solving. I was thinking of you know, I was thinking, oh, it's limiting, and you know, I want to upgrade, get a an EQ mount and a refractor, and um, I got as far as buying a HEQ five Pro mod um, used. Mm-hmm. Um, on Astro by Cell from someone in Serbia, I think it was, wow. and um, but never got around to buying the refractor because I've been having so much fun with this Dobson. <laughs> I can understand with that uh, aperture and with plate solving, that's that's working great for you. Yeah, so there you go. This is looking pretty good now. Not too bad. I mean, it's. I've now got M eighty one. Well oh, done, good. sir. Again, it looks like a, um, a visual astronomer's uh, view, but give me a shout when you want me to share a screen and I will. Yeah, why don't you? you can, yeah, let me you, stop. Yeah, why don't you stop? You can go, go ahead and show it to us. Okay, uh, right. I need to share screen and then I need to. There we are. See it? Oh, my goodness, yes. And that is again through very, very thick cloud. I still can't see a star in the sky. We're just happy that you can you can do this this year, Phil. I remember how painful it was for you last year. Oh, it's it's, it's been hopeless for two years. <laughs> it just shows it, yeah, it, it does show yeah. the power of hyperstar. Yeah, what? You know, I mean, I'm up on 150 percent zoom as well. Oh wow! I mean, if you looks know, looks adequate, here. Phil, especially Sorry? given the conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. going to remember to save that this time, right, Phil? Yeah, I will do. Okay. No, I saved it to my um, uh, uh, SSD. Good. What do I do? You've ticked it off on um, Notion. I, I did. Do you want me to upload these somewhere? I, I would love it if you would put them there in Notion. You just click on that uh, white box underneath the column images. Right. Okie dokie. Um, I will on- do I'll, I'll collectively do that in a bit. So okay, uh, that's M51 clicked off, and that was M81. Okay. Uh, have we got okay. 102? Well, I'm doing. I've done 101. I'm going to 102 right now. Have we got M97? Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, Stefan Stephen started it. 108, 109. Not at all. Right. I'll have a, I'll try and chase those. Okay. And I'll stop sharing. Uh, right. Okay. Hey, we're at 92 objects, guys. <laughs> this is great. I tell you what, this is a, this team sport business is just a winner in astronomy. <laughs> we're, we're like gaming. We're gaming the system here. <laughs> Question. We've got we've got a dog on our shoulders and everything. Yes, what's the question? Uh, for one hundred and two, the comment is it says duplicate of M one hundred and one. What does that mean? Yes, you know because of uh, uh, Messier's notes, it's not real clear exactly what his notes ever meant. So, uh. so we just go ahead and do them at the uh, at the locations given in the in the sheet there in the modern 
the modern list and and we just do them you know that's a, a modern too. you see the ra and deck are a little bit different i mean the ra is the same but the deck is a little bit different just gonna have a look on the on the, on the cheat sheet oh i see m102 is like a sideways view of a galaxy yes yes yeah i got it okay yeah i think i've got it here yeah good have a look point two two is that it there let's do one more i think that's it there i go to satellite <laughs> so um Okay, so here's um, M102. I'm going to start stacking now. That's clear M101. All right, there we are. I'm going to drop off and go have some lunch. Okay, good luck with lunch. There's M102 coming up. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Got a bit of a light gradient there or something. but oh, a cloud. Or the wife switched the kitchen lights on. Let me check. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> oh, it was clouds. <laughs> it was clouds. Yeah. Good job. She doesn't watch his YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> Let's see if I can fine tune that a bit. Yeah, that's pretty much what my cheat sheet shows. Um, that um, link you gave us for the marathon planner is good because is. you can include photos. It has yes. the photos, the little thumbnails in it. Yes. That's very useful. I'm using that. I love it. And a lot of information, yeah. too. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, there's, there's pretty patchy cloud around here at the moment. That's pretty good. Eight oh five. Eight oh five is when the sun's supposed to set here. Eight oh five. You think that's good enough, guys? For one or two? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. On We've Messier Marathon, Messier Marathon night, that's way good enough. Okay, I'm going to tick that off. Uh, okay. Go to work back up. Sunflower Galaxy M63. Um, Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, slew to it and see if I can use the recentering thing I showed you. Oh, okay, before. we're watching. M63, 20 degrees away. What is M63? So is that the SynScan app, you know, hand paddle replica there in front of... This Sharp bit here is... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's what that is. Gotcha. Okay, no, uh, M63 is a head-on galaxy. So um, let's have a look. That's um, plate solve. <coughs> yeah. And again, uh, yes, because it's a big jump, five degrees away. Okay, it's moving. See the streaks across the screen. One more plate solve. What have we got there? Point three eight. Anyone see anything like a galaxy there? Okay. Maybe right there in the middle, that's the core. 
Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yes, I think you're right. Okay, let's go for it. M63, the label's set. You're right, well done. Uh, shop covers coming out. Are you sure you want to? Oh. Uh, no, I'll leave it. No. What do yeah, you want? I don't know why. Yeah, sin scan. What do you want? Uh, but yeah, that looks like that's a galaxy coming up there. Yes. Just, um, <coughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. Got it. That's M63 we got then. So, what were you going to show us? Uh, well, it's centered perfectly by itself. So, we'll wait to the next one. Oh. Um, but I'll show you where it is. It's up here. Tools. You do, um, uh, oh gosh, what's it called? Pixel position, click to recenter. Then this thing comes up. So then you can even do it while it's live stacking, but I won't. Oh, so Imagine if the galaxy was down here and you want to move it to there, then you just click here and it will move it into the middle. Oh, that's nice. It really, really neat. Robin is so brilliant, these things, yeah. <laughs> He has to be using this in his backyard. Oh, yeah. You can imagine, you know what? I think I need a recenter. <laughs> Let me just write the code for that. Yeah. Then he says, how would I write that? <laughs> no, he's great. Okay. I think that's good. 60 seconds on that. And we got M63. Nice. <clears throat> that's the, the sunflower galaxy I don't know why it doesn't really look like a sunflower but okay and then let's go up the chart to the Crocs eye galaxy oh yeah nice this, this one not very credible but I've got an M108 here alright let's see it let me uh, stop sharing go ahead okay. go for it Okay, uh, where's share screen? There we are. Click on there. Share. See it just there? Not yet. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna check the box for you. Yeah, it's not very. I mean, it's through cloud again. I I cannot see a star in the sky with an naked eye. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. But, that's the hyperstar, yeah. You're not yeah. going to forget to save that on film. I'd save it soon because that cloud looked like it's about to overtake it. <laughs> yeah. Save exactly as seen. So that's M108. This looks like a scene from Star Trek when they're about to go in some kind of a, yeah. you know, across some, uh, what's that called? A, a line of something, you know? Yeah. I mean, these are my typical conditions. So, oh, yeah. poor thing, <laughs> Phil. All right. I told her I'm done. I got the okay. naming target naming M108. No. Same as seen. Right. I'll stop sharing. Must upload these in a minute. Yeah, I'll do that when I finish the session or something like that. To, um, let's just see. I'm on M94 at the moment. Crocs eye. So, plate solving at 43 degrees. Recentering. Oh, there it is. Got it. And it came up pretty centered, guys. So sorry, you won't be able to see the recentering until then. <laughs> That's funny. No, we, we know what you mean now. So now we're going to try it. <laughs> it's it's really good. Well, it's really strong. Let me show you this. This is amazing. That was one. Sh um, this is the. Um, Oh, that's me there. Croc's eye. You can oh, see why wow. it's called the Croc's eye. Yes. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's, that's nice. 20 seconds. What's the uh, uh, focal length of that 14 inch? 1,650. Wow. And, but you have yeah. a reducer on there. No, no, no. no. Wow. 
That's his natural. It's 0. 0.95 degrees, I think, is the oh, field of view. I see. Yeah. Wow. That's not bad. No. I do. I'm doing kind of multiple saves. I'm doing it as get it while I can, just in case a cloud Good. falls in, then I wait a, a, another minute. Good. Um, so I'm working my way up the ladder here. Um, 110. Huh? 110. 110 would be great. We don't have it yet. Okay. Is that Exactly. So oh, that's that. I'll stop sharing for the moment. If anyone else wants to, and the next one going up is one hundred and six. Yeah. Almost as productive as those Aussies down under. Now. <laughs> I would say you are a good match. <laughs> Okay, but I wish I had his telescope. Man, that was that was something. Do you see that? Yes, it was. Uh, it was. Kim's. That was. Oof. Yes. That wasn't seven hundred dollars used for sure. No. That was. <laughs> that was nice. Hey Doug, I've got two of my grandkids here. Oh, uh, that's great. They just want to say hi. You guys say your names and your age. Hi, I'm Daniel. Three of them. Nine years old. Well, it's great to meet you both. Daniel and who else? I am Whitney and I'm seven years old. And Tad, how old are you? I'm Tad and I'm six years old. Great. I understand. I've been a lot of time studying in science this year. Um, space. 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 That's what we're looking at. Yes, they are. And these people are all around the world, and we're trying to take see these objects over here, you guys? Yeah. yeah. We're trying to take all those pictures of all those objects in one night. But we're kind of cheating because we're <laughs> our night is, is spread out for everywhere from New Zealand, and right now some of these people are in England and uh, the United States and Europe and Spain. And they're taking pictures of these, and we're all sending them in to one place. Uh, so we can yeah. try to get because, all of them in one day. Because, hey, one day, I know that. We only is day for now. The other side of the world is night. Right. And exactly. Well done. Yeah. That's pretty smart. <laughs> so, so, guys, could, could I get you guys to say where you're from? We're from America. No, where the <laughs> other people on the thing are from. <laughs> Who wants to start? I'm in Spain. Or Spain. I'm from Spain. North London, England. From England. England. I'm from Sweden, Bobtola. From Sweden. I'm from the US in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Roll, roll down there. Roll is from Antwerp, Belgium. Wow. Good. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we'll let these guys go. We, we live on a ranch and they're uh, ranch kids. That's awesome. So we, we're loving life out here. We've got our little, uh, we've got our little personal observatory set up on the ranch too. But. That's awesome. So they get to they get to do that. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for letting Bye. him come. It's an honor to meet you all. Bye. See Bye. you later. Fuck. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. I don't know why. Maybe there's a cloud there or something. It's stacking and it starts and I'm there, but. Let's try right so in again. Phil, is that, is that your name in Colchester? Did you do M82 as well? Because right next to Bode's Galaxy. Uh, no, I didn't. It'd be, it's just a few degrees over, so. Yeah, I'll have a look for that. 
Uh, very, Doug, dis very, very distinctive. Error, Say again, Phil. I've made an error. What I said was M108 was actually M110. Oh, really? Yeah, my so, error. So uncheck 108. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uncheck no 108, but check 110. We're glad you got 110. Yeah. Because that was pretty low, wasn't it? Yeah. How did you get 110, but you couldn't oh, no, get... No, 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 110, 110 is fine. 110, 110 was... is, uh, where is it? It's quite well, high. If you can get 110, I bet you can get 31. I probably can. Let me try it in 31. Well, please. Andromeda Galaxy, go to target. Andromeda, you won't be able to get Andromeda now. Mm -hmm. That's what I wondered, but he said he got 110. No. Let's have a look where 110 is for me. Well, I'm going to check my cord wrap. M110 is on the horizon. 110 is on the horizon. That can't be right. Yeah, it's too low. Okay. You didn't. You couldn't have got one ten. Yeah. So you didn't get one ten. Hang on, let me check it again. There's, there's no way. I mean, that's that's right in right in. Phil, Phil, you're not inspiring much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to M one one zero and just check what I've got there. It should be like an elliptical looking thing. Just a. Blue. You can always throw it up in um, what is that called? Um, it's not astronomy.com, the uh, the plate solving site. Blind plate solving site. Yes, astrometry. Astrometry. That's the one. Yeah, that's really weird. For some reason, 106 is not appearing. So I will move along. I hope 106 didn't um, vanish or something. I think it must have. I think it might have got it. Um, I'm going to try M40. I'm just glad I got M33. That was my, yes. for me. It wasn't beautiful, but it's definitely M33. What did I say? Let's change the name. It looks like it's going. M40, it's 57 degrees. Let's play solve. What is M40? Oh, come on. M40, looks like it's two stars or something. That's nuts. Oh, I can see it. There it is. Hang on. Let's check this on the web. M40. We have a, a, a YouTube partner named Clifford that's been watching. He's from Sydney and he says it's been cloudy and rainy for weeks. Okay, got M40. It's crazy. Okay. It's, two, it's two, it's a dual star. It's a twin star. Yes, that's true. Doug, I need to correct my correction. Uh oh, it was 108. I got I've just gone back to it. <laughs> oh, you corrected your correction. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I, I'm looking okay. at it now, and it's definitely was M108. And you caught an image of it. Yeah, I've got an image of it. All right, I, I'm I'm unchecking 110. No, uncheck it. Yeah, I haven't uh, got done. Then, but I have Every, got everything's, everything's fixed. Good. I'll save this one then. So M right. I've got um, M40 now, the Winnaker 4, it's called. Oh, nice. It's just a dual star. Yes, but it's a beautiful dual star. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's another galaxy behind it as well. There's two. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think I knew yeah. this. 
Mike's field of view. Let's just save it. Um, where have we gone? I'll show you. Here we go. So that's M4, M40. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And here's another, there's one, and I think oh, another wow. one when that. I've never thing noticed moves. that. Yeah, and I think that might be something here as well. But there's you know, probably Messier Marathon is the only time we ever go look at M40. <laughs> Sorry to say. See, look, there's two. <laughs> there's a there's a galaxy here and a galaxy yeah. here. Can you annotate that with your with your how do, you, how do you use the annotation? Oh, you, you've used this before. Walk me through up, it, up, they're up there under tools. No, I'm, yep. Tools and then deep sky image annotations in the second group, the last item in the second group. Uh, I haven't used it yet. So what do I do here? It'll it'll do everything for you. It's it's oh marked, well, look at that. It yeah, did everything for it, me. It marks where the galaxies are. Oh shoot, let me do that again. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's, so it's now not, I just save screen now, and it will save that with um, the annotation. I'm trying to remember if it saves the annotation. I think there's a checkbox you have to check somewhere. Is it under settings? I can't remember. Okay, but anyway, it? they yeah. are NGC4290 okay. and NGC4284. I would have never known. But it doesn't show M4. Why not? No, it just means that the, the catalog that Robin has got us hooked to didn't uh, really agree with Charles. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, it's two minutes on those guys. That's enough Fantastic. time spent. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's going to check us off for sure. And you've already checked it, haven't you? M40. Yeah, that's done. And now I'm going to do M39. Let me just uh, nice. put this in. Tell you what, you guys make a strong case for Europeans. Oh, wait, you hadn't checked M40. Oh, yes, you had. Yeah, I have. Okay. Oh, that's what about 106? Oh, 39, we don't have either. You're right. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that now because it's right close to it, I think. Right. Uh, hang on. No, it says you guys minus make one. No, I can't do it. It's, it hasn't risen yet. Yeah, it's a minus one. But, but 106 maybe has. Uh, I, I'll try it again because I just tried that and oh, maybe it was cloud, but I could see stars, but I couldn't. Okay. I'm going back to it now. You guys make a strong case for European astronomers being just top notch. Did anyone ever think otherwise? <laughs> you put a Spaniard next to a, a UK Englishman and put him beside a, a Swede and you have a, a a a Belgian a, a Belgian who who's cheering them on, and pretty soon you've got a knockdown, drag out, top notch set of observers. Let's be very clear on one thing, Douglas. I oh, am you're not, not a Spanish. Spaniard. You're not, a, not Spaniard. a Spaniard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. By residence right, only. Doug, have we got M ninety seven, the old nebula? M ninety seven. Uh, well, Stefan was working on it. Yeah. Do you have it, Stefan? Yep. Oh, good. Let's see it, Stefan. Oh, I've got one as well. Okay, that's good. We okay, 106 worked this time. Oh, good. Was it 106 we said? We needed it? Yes, we needed it. Yeah, so sending, where is it? 106. Maybe you're already maybe you're already imaging something else, Stefan, and maybe it's not convenient to show it to us. Yeah, I'm doing uh um, Stefan just quietly works over here. He's just like a, a little, you know, bear, just, just okay, quietly working over the side. You know. <laughs> what are Swedes like, Stefan? Describe Swedes to us. Uh, we don't try and speak. <laughs> <laughs> you work a lot and speak a little. <laughs> Sorry? Swedes are famous for working hard and and speaking little yeah <laughs> okay here's 106 let's do the okay. little an annotation thing there we go good, good. m1 see that does oh, call it a galaxy m106 that's, yeah. that's great man and there's another one up there ngc4218 two for one special point four. so it's, it's it's pretty bright it uh, is m106, yeah i love that's, this annotation so it's wonderful
Wow, that's almost as good as pixel centering. It is, it is. <laughs> would you care to see okay, my got... M97? Yes, we would love to see your M97. As soon as uh, Mike's finished yeah. sharing. Sorry, 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 buddy. Here we no go. Problem. Again, you can't see a star in the sky, so but you can just see it there, look. Oh my goodness, you're right. It is an owl. I can even make out the two eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the greatest, but you can see the, the extent of the cloud coming in from the, uh, oh. the left-hand side. Yes. That's a, that's a cloud bank. <laughs> uh, it's just wall to wall. I, I, cannot, I cannot see a single star anywhere. Oh my goodness. What is your Bortle? What is your Bortle reading, Phil? Here, oh, about seven. Uh, well, oh. it's it's seven on the uh, uh, any reference um, uh, points on the internet. But they since I moved here twenty years ago, I've been surrounded by six thousand new houses. Oh my goodness! So it, it's it's Colchester is the fastest growing town in the whole of Great Britain. Oh my goodness! But, Question, uh, Phil, did you get M82 in the end? Uh, no, but I will go there next because I'm sure oh, I can sure. get it. Having got M82 in one. <laughs> right, uh, I must remember to save this M97 first, though, because that's going to yes. be a mistake. You're in the right it. part I'm of the back. sky. Yeah. So I'll stop sharing 97. I better write down now, M87. Michael, if Phil goes to M. I'm, I'm going to M82 right now. Let's it, see if I, well, I tried it before; it didn't work. And uh, Phil, if, if Michael if gets I get there, it, if Michael gets there first, will he be sucking all the photons that are coming? I've got it. And you got it right. To, you and I'm now it. going to demonstrate the pixel recenter tool because oh, M82. Right. Oh, let me get the um, before the clouds come in. Where's the zoom? Someone has to stop sharing. Uh, Stefan, can, do you mind, yeah. Stefan, if I, there you go. Uh, I just did something stupid. No, okay, good. Um, uh, still not letting me, oh, there it is, share, there. Okay, so here's the tool, and there's M82, is all the way down there, oh. and I click on this, and it says, do you want to move it? And let's see what happens. It should move it into the center of the screen here if it cooperates. That's so cool. There it is. So now I switch this, this off and M82. Well, it's not quite in the middle yet. Let's do it again. Oh, how did you see that? Uh, these experienced European astronomers, you know. <laughs> All right, have... that's nicely centered now. And now we will stack. M82 is one of my favorites, so I'm glad. Well, do, you think, do you think if Michael is pulling these photons in that he'll be dominating the, the photons from the Earth and there won't be any for you, Phil? No. Yeah, that's a cigar galaxy, isn't it? Yeah, M82. Yeah. Look at that. It is, a very, it is a very interesting target, isn't it? Because it's got those multicolored core things going on, right? Yeah. Look at those. HA uh, emissions and all that. Yeah, and there's a reddish and an almost a greenish too, right? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It is. I was imaging that when I first started with the um, planetary camera, the SC224, uh -huh. and um, got some pretty high, with different, oh, I was playing around with different filters and things like that. It's a lot of fun. Has a lot of different things being emitted from it. Fun. Um, but it took you a long time yeah. to find it with the, with the 224. Uh, it wasn't too bad, and that was before I was plate solving even. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, so you're right, it was a bit, yeah. Well, it's now we know if you put a, a batch of a half dozen Europeans together with a couple of Aussie and, and, we, and Kiwis, you can end up with 98 Messier objects in a very short order. 
Okay. All right. Here we go. David C. Have we done 76? Uh, I think somebody did. Yeah. Uh, a little dumbbell. Uh, uh, yeah, Stefan's done that. Stefan did that. Have so, you got, if you look at the list, um, you can see yourself, yeah? Yeah, I've got, I've got it here. I'm on my mobile phone. I haven't got enough real oh. estate on my desktop to... Uh, that's why That's why it really helps having... I've got these, you know, three computers oh, running. The, yeah. the NASA, the NASA computers. Nobody's done 27 yet, Phil. Do you have Do you have 27 in your cloud bank? Uh, I'll have a look. Why have we not done 27? Uh, 24 is too low. I know it's too low. Okay, M77. Let's have a look. Oh, it says in it says in my world it doesn't rise till 3 a.m. Oh, it says in in my world it doesn't rise till 3 a.m. 92. So I bet it hasn't risen for you guys yet. Um, where's M1942? Minus 11. Why is, it, why is it letting me go there? Is that plus 11? I'm not going to bother with that. Stefan, did you get 109? No, 110. Hang on. We don't have much left. M92. Let's try M92. It's plus 11 somewhere in the northeast. Might be able to get it. Uh, no, I've got trees in the way, I think. Did you get but 102, no. Mike? Were you able to get 102? Uh, I think so. It's yeah. not checked. Uh, let me just check in my files. Stefan, did you say that you were able to get there, uh, 109? Yes. 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 M27 is below my horizon. Yes, I was afraid of that. Yeah, I've got 102. Okay. Yeah, remember that was the um, one where I questioned you, was it, you know, because it said duplicates. Oh, that's right. Uh, let me take that, sorry. So what about, I, I bet 70 hasn't risen yet for you, Phil. I'm sorry, 92, I bet 92 hasn't risen 92, yet. I'm trying right now because it's really low. Okay. I'm seeing stars, so that's promising, and let's play so. You guys might be ready for your nap. Uh, it's early, yeah. Let's, um, I'll let you in on this one. Let's just see if we can um, get 92 together. I have a okay, chance yeah. 92. You go first, right. Mike. Yeah, give it a go, because <laughs> it's difficult. It's 11 degrees. It's, um, yeah. Let's I, do this I hand in hand. Way. The South End Colchester Coalition. <laughs> we, 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 he lives about 10, 20 miles from where I grew up. Oh, my goodness. Well, bearing yeah. in mind the rivalry between the two football clubs, it's the only coalition ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what are we? We're not even in the, well, we're out of the league. We're not in the league anymore, South End. Mind you, we're <laughs> yeah, terrible. Oh, M97 is not in CPWI. So, what is M92? Let's have a look. What it else is it called? Oh, well, I got M92 it. M92 is just a cluster. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm going there. See what you can find. Um, see, see, it's meant to be a cluster. And let me play it so it says it's 0 0.09 degrees away. Oops, I played so old. Not sync. Okay, I'm amazed I'm seeing anything at 11. I think half the screen is obscured by trees, but let's see. 0.08 degrees. That, sh that should be. I think I remember you saying you had a chainsaw. I've used it before. How much? Actually, during how an astronomy, yeah. To get how, de Venus. how dedicated are you to this cause, Mike? <laughs> um, as dedicated as I am to gardening. So sometimes <laughs> the two combine. No, I literally did cut a few limbs off a tree to get Venus uh, a few months ago. 
That's funny. <laughs> the tree needed a trim anyway. So what do you want? Clifford, Clifford is watching. Uh, remember, he's from down, I think it's Sydney. And he says, sharp cap just gets better and better. And then Vito, the, um, the designer at PeerTech, happened to notice that we were looking at a PeerTech pier in that observatory in my image. And he's observing. That's a very nice height adjustable pier in that, in that image. <laughs> he built it. <laughs> Now I know why I couldn't see it properly. I had the thing zoomed in all the way. Okay, so that actually might be M92 obscured by clouds. Oh. Let's see. I it think I might it... have 92, but... Let's both give it a go. I'm going to stack now oh. M92. If it'll let you stack on those four stars that you can see. Yeah, there. I think this is it. I think this is it. Look, it's... It's a, it's it's a cloudy M92. Okay. I think we'll take it. But um, let's let's uh, um, Phil save yours as well, just in case mine's a bit off. Oh, hang we're, on. I think I might have a we'll slight one. Hang on. Just compare. It's supposed to be seconds. supposed to be a globular. Well, yeah, I might not be picking. I, I've got three strong stars. Let's have a yeah. look on the web. Messiah. I'm slightly different orientation because the camera's different, but I've got All some right. fairly so Mike, similar. Mike, do you mind if we stop your sharing? Yeah, sorry, sorry. No um, problem. Take yeah. it away, Phil. Show us what you got. Yeah. Uh, let me, hang on, where's the share button? Uh, I think this might be it. I think this is fair. It's got, it's got of yellow stars in it, and that's what this had these three yellow stars, so it could be correct. Yeah, I think I think this is it. Thanks, brother. See you. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Again, I'm I'm shooting through thick cloud. <laughs> you can see the cloud. Yeah, no, me too as well, but not thick, but yeah. I mean, this is dense cloud now. So is that it right in the middle? Have you looked it up, Michael, on uh, the internet? Does yeah, I've got a well, picture got? of it um, on the web. And it's, uh, what you see is kind of a, 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 a wide cluster of yellow stars with whites in the background. And I'm seeing the yellow ones. So what about that? What? What about that big white misty looking cloud in front of it? Is that on the web in the picture? No, no, oh. no that's not in the web. Bill, you've got the wrong picture then. <laughs> I better clean my glasses, I think. <laughs> well, I'll stop sharing. So we don't count that one. No. We well, put it now. You never know. I'm, I'm going to, I'm not sure if mine is kosher <laughs> or not. So uh, I'll share my screen. Hang on. Michael, we can't count a globular cluster that we can't see. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> I believe we counted M30 before that we could only barely see. Here we go. This is what I've got. Yes. A Not triangle. exactly. You have a triangle. Yeah. The triangle. Yeah. And there's. Yeah. Which one is that? It might be. I'll put M92 uh -huh. question mark. <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna put the question mark. Let me do a question mark. <laughs> let me do a question name. mark. Okay, whatever. That's because okay. they don't like um, question mark. <laughs> they don't like okay, save exactly as seen. Oh my goodness, I can't and, and stop that and do another plate solve, and you'll see. Yes. Now now once we plate are. solve, then we can do the annotate. Yeah, good. Uh, I should have annotated the live stack. Well, it it, it likes well, it. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so that is pretty close. So let's do the um, annotation, annotation here. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't detect anything. Yeah. No. Um, let me switch that off. Whoa, something happened. It just didn't like that. It's because it, it knew you were trying to fudge and put a question mark in the name. <laughs> no, please. Um, I'm going to live stack again. Oh, good. I can resume. That's good. And then um, 
Let's do the there's annotation. A, there, there's a panel of judges at, at astroma, astrometry.net and they have those posters that people lift up at those swim dive competitions. And instead of lifting up sixes, they gave us all zeros on this so far. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's the annotation isn't picking it up, so it's a dubious. Yeah, it's we're we're right there with Charles Messier when he did his two star <laughs> deep space object. <laughs> okay, so let's see what else have I got. So that was M ninety two. I mean, uh, I'll throw I'll throw, it, I'll throw it up on uh, the astrometry dot net thing later. Okay. Hang on, no, someone's got M92. Stefan's got it. Stefan started it. Stefan started it. Yeah, let's see Stefan's picture. It's because of the fact that Stefan is a Swede and they can do these things. <laughs> well, he just, they're the quiet type. Do you want to see? <laughs> Could we please, Stefan? Well, hang on. You um, want to see something that looks like a globular cluster? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I don't think there's much more for me to do here. Um, well, then it's time for a nap. There you have it. Hey, that's it. Yay, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, not even going to delete click, my... click it as done. Nothing well, like uh, what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys, I tell you what you could do. You could start uploading these into Notion. Yeah. 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 What did Stefan just grab? Which one is that? 92. 92. Oh, okay. On the cloud. So really, then, um, what's left to do um, for... What, uh, what, what, time, what time does dumbbell rise for you guys? Probably three? I don't know about that. What, what dumbbell is M90 something? M27. Let's see where it is. Maybe Let's have a look. Um, okay. Brian, did you just drop a vase? Drop a what? It sounded like you dropped something. My daughter pulled out the power cord on the one computer. Oh, got it. So what, what does it look like? <laughs> Sorry. A barky dog. Um, <laughs> a barky dog. What does it look like for the, the five? I, I, the five I'm worried about because unless weather happens, uh, 27, 29 are not a problem, it, it, unless clouds roll in. 27, um, sorry, I'm looking at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So, come up, but, and so that, that, lets, picture, uh, five or six. that lets you go to yeah. sleep, go to sleep now and you can get up at whatever, five, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, let's have a look, what's the out at? Um, your question, Brian, four. is your question is how do we get 77, 74, and then 31, 32, and 110? Yeah, and, and I'm really worried about, um, let, me, let me pull this up, 74. That's what I'm really. I'm telling you, it, 74 should not be a problem here if these, if these clouds go away and we get blue sky, unless uh, those clouds gather. Otherwise, I, we should be okay here. Well, look at that. My um, sin scanner just decided to malfunction just as I had finished. Brilliant. Well, we're glad you got through. <laughs> no, it's good. To, it's good to hear that, Doug, because I'm 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 going to go scope out a location. Um, it has some downside. It basically overlooks the whole Sacramento Valley. It's the best I could do <laughs> to have that wow. south. Uh, what is it? Let's see which direction is. That? I want to make sure I. Uh, It'll give me a northwest for Andromeda, and also it'll give me that west, the direct west. I'll be looking over the Sacramento Valley. Great. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't do any better than that. 
Um, I'd be, I'd be camping out near a, where they have a group of mailboxes, <laughs> you know, and a little turnout area. <laughs> um, but you know, it means getting out there. The biggest concern I have there is setting up and getting, Yeah, I'm not going to see, I need to get reasonably polar aligned because yes. I can't rely on getting plate solving at that point with that limited field of view pointing with so little stars that are going to be available. Yeah. Okay. So what do I do now? That. See if uh, I can as reactivate as, my. As long as that. these clouds uh, continue to break up and don't gather. Okay. I'm going to go check the screen. Yeah. I can put my hyper star back together. That'd be maybe better. No, you don't have to do that, brother. It's all afternoon, curious. There is a better time for me to do the recumbent eclipse. So, Doug, it's going to be what four hours before you are going to be set up to go for this. Um, I can tell you that exactly to the minute, because while you guys have been joking around about trying to find globular clusters Actually, and, and pretending that stars were globular clusters, uh, I've three figured hours. out to the, <laughs> yeah, it's 8.05, I think. So in three hours, we'll know. Yeah, that's right. All right, okay. just figured out the problem with M92. What's I have problem? Half, a half a bougainvillea bush in the way. Oh, no. Let's go saw that bush down, brother. <laughs> I might have to. It needed pruning. <laughs> but no, Stefan's got it, so that's good. Oh, good. Yeah, and now the thing is having so, bronchitis. So the bush, the bush can live because of Stefan. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now that makes sense. Okay. Let's have a look. <sighs> Yeah, my sun sets at exactly seven. Yeah, you know, seven fifty-five ish, depending on. All right, I'm gonna go through and scope out some locations just in case, or that location just in case, and get the app right. out and look and see, make sure I have, and I'll, I'll plan coming back on here in about two and a half hours. Okay, and, sounds and, good. All right, thanks. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to start uploading things, and um, if I can get the scope connected again, um, I will try dumbbell. Oh, that's uh, great. That's okay. That's great. Um, and I'll, uh, load, load, I'll start loading the stuff up right now. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get some to eat as well, so I'm going to sign that up. That sounds right good. Now. Okay. Welcome, welcome, Jonathan. Hey there. Just stop on in real quick just to say hi and to everybody on. How's your uh, forecast? Um, looking pretty good. good. Um, you know, I'm going to have some pretty clear skies. Unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, it's my daughter's birthday, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be on early enough to try to catch those those early, you know, right after sunset ones, uh, something like 77 and 74. So, um, I wish I could. I just, but I, you know. Uh, can you please remind me how to upload my images to Notion? Yes. Did you log out of Notion? Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm looking at the Notion site and I'm looking at the spreadsheet. Yeah. Good. And and if you click in the middle of the column called Images on the row that you want to upload, does it give you the choice to choose a file? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, let me have a look. Let's just try that. Uh, let's find one with my name against it. So, row of images. Uh, double clicking on it, and it just doesn't do anything. Uh, that means you're probably looking at the view only. So, you need to find that original. Uh, I don't know if I can re re invite you, but you need to find a way to get invited. Uh, here's your invitation. Let me see if I can. Um, look, 
I've got the email. Oh, good. If you got the email, then just follow. And you've been invited. Click here to view it. It says. Yeah. So, uh, you have to click on the link rather than the click here to view it. Then. I bet that's the case. Right. Let me just try that. Uh, continue to the external site. I continue to the external site and. Now, well, there's not many with my name against it, but right. Okay, M81. No, it's still not letting me do it. All right, let me remove you and then add you, and maybe that'll send you a new email. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm going to kick you out, Phil. Sorry, but our, our friendship has been short-lived. No problem. I think my battery on the scope's just about gone. <laughs> Now I'm going to invite you again and give you full edit privileges. Okay, so hopefully you got another email just now. In a, in a moment, you'll get another email. Okay. Uh, the, the people from PeerTech are saying, this is awesome. Awesome. The, the PeerTech people, they don't know of any They're other asking group. for ushers for three musketeers. <laughs> they don't know of any other group that's doing this live. No. Yeah, they love this. Well, just mad. No. I haven't got an email, Doug. Oh, hang on. Yes, I have. Good. Jonathan, so you're going to be out with your anniversary dinner. Well, my, my daughter's birthday. Your birthday dinner, but you'll be back later. Yeah, I'll be back later, but I won't, okay. unfortunately, won't be able to, not that I have a great Western exposure anyway, um, okay. but I'm really not going to be able to, unfortunately, be able to help you guys on well, some of those tough early targets. So hopefully some of the others can grab them. We don't know what my uh, Western is going to be like, but we're hoping that it'll work, but, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think who else is, I think, is it Mike that's set up for. Yes. In, in uh, Death Valley there. That's, that's. It, Mike he's is, got a pretty good shot. Mike so, is our fall. Our fall. But he's our team. he's our last hope, right? <laughs> if if well, if nobody else gets uh, it. If if we if we need him, uh, Brian is saying that he can set up with a Western view, but it's just that he can't see much of the rest of the sky if he does that. So he's he's kind of become like a one trick pony if he does that for us. <laughs> but but if that's the only thing we can do, then really if that's the only thing we got left to get, then maybe it yep. makes sense. So then we do would, have a bit of a backup for Mike. Good. That's right. Then he would drive to an observatory where he's going to help them at the observatory do it with a public viewing. And that sounds interesting. Well, that's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I will be on when I as soon as as soon as we get back from dinner and, okay. and stuff like that. So uh, well, thank you. It looks like we've made a lot of progress, and oh, somebody snagged M thirty. It looks like woohoo! I I mean uh, those Australians were they were clutch with M thirty. The the New Zealander man, Michael, he just grabbed M thirty with it forty degrees up in the sky. It was easy. I may have to just because I couldn't get that one last time. I may yeah. just have to go out and try to get it in the morning. I don't, I don't know. We'll you. see. And move, do do a tell your wife you have to go to Australia for an astronomy <laughs> trip. <laughs> hey, she wants to go down there, so maybe oh, that'll be a good go. excuse. Now there we go. I'm sure you can deduct it from your taxes some way. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to do some work on that. All right. Maybe. All right. I'll see y'all later. Okay. Thanks. See you. Thanks. Okay. Here's here's Michael the Kiwi back. I think. Or he was back. And then Brian from Linden. What's your sky looking like, Brian? Is it still clear? Any clouds in yours, Doug? I don't have any clouds here. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Looks real pretty so far. Just waiting for the sun to go down. Good. Michael, we were just bragging on your work. I don't know if you heard us. Yeah, we were just bragging about you. Grab an M30. Yeah. Jonathan was our M30 designated hitter last year. And at the place where he we went, it was impossible to grab it. So uh, not last year, last month. So we ended up in March with our first try at this marathon with 109 out of 110 objects because we couldn't get 110. So couldn't get M30. Yep. So now it's not the and that's the issue. It's the, it's the now start this, of the this year it's every, M74. Every yeah. yeah. Every, so, at least you at least you don't uh, I, at least i suppose the stresses will be over quickly for everybody <laughs> that's right it's, 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 if you don't get it yeah, okay next person next person that's exactly right it says it's yeah. going to be um 
something like an altitude of uh, 16 degrees from me when the sun goes down. So we'll, we'll just follow it and see how quickly we can find it. Yeah, well, we, we were about from M30. I imaged it and it was at 17 degrees, which okay. was, uh, it was clearing uh, most of the horizon. I had to move, move my scope to get it. I've got an EV, EV scope, so that's literally as simply as picking it up by hand and moving it because there's no that's cables. so funny. It just finds its orientation again straight away. That's so hilarious. Um, and I, I actually got it at about 4.15 a.m. And local wow. astronomical dark would finish at 6.15. So I, I had about a 19-minute, possibly two-hour window, and I could have got it. But at the time, there was clouds, some clouds on the horizon. So I just I took my first opportunity to get it because um, I didn't know if those clouds were going to come in or not. That's great. Cool. So, yeah, Stefan, um, so I, put, I, I put the links to my um, Google Photos drive, which has all my images from last night. So, I don't know if that's still floating around in the chat, but if anyone wants to have a look, that's there. Um, I've only uploaded one image so far. I intend to get them organized and upload them okay. this morning. That will be so nice. Um, did you get some sleep, Michael? Um, yeah, my wife said I as soon as I had the time, I went to sleep. So, I had about maybe three hours. Oh, <laughs> Maybe, maybe three and a half. Oh, I got my cup of tea. That's, that's not very many. I'll probably have a snooze this afternoon and then catch up on, on some sleep this afternoon. Good. But sometimes, I find sometimes if you, you I suppose, get too much sleep after a late night, it just kind of disrupts your whole day. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Three is better than none or one. So. Yeah. Doug, I'm afraid this upload's not working. So. Shall I email you the images? Oh, that, that's just that's a nightmare. But yes, if you have to. So what happens when you click on the on the column? What happens? Well, if I left click on it, nothing. If I right click on it, it takes me to another page of like just data. Oh no! Like if I left click on it, there's a little drop down and it says choose a file. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if I wonder if you're not logged into to. Uh, the notion sheet properly yet did you get that me. little did you get that little email yeah i got the email i'm trying to again let me try it again as we speak because it doesn't show that you gave a name yet it 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 still just got your email address. i mean all it offers me is continue to the external site and i continue to the external site and then when I get to, for example, Bode's Galaxy, External I'm site. clicking on it, and all, all, all the box does is turn blue. Yeah, that's not right. We need to get you logged into the sheet somehow. Yeah. Um, but I say, the, uh, I've tried two options. One is clicking on the bit that says, you've invited to hashtag 2EAA Messier Marathon April the 1st by Doug Lucas. Mm -hmm. And I've got another option, click here to view it. And if I click here to view it, it takes me to a page that says, continue to the external site by following the link below. And I follow the link below. Let's don't do that. Let's, let's don't go the, to the external site. Let's, let's make the first one work. Tell me again what it says. Well, the, the first one says you've invited to it. Well, well, click here to view it. And all that does is, oh, now, it, oh, that's different. It's now come up, continue with Google, continue with Apple. Oh, now you're at the right place now. Or I'd enter say, your email address. Yeah, I would say enter your email address. Yeah. And what you're doing is creating a credential so that you have a log on for this page. And it's, yeah. a log, it's a log on just for you. You have your own log on. You see what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't offer me this before. Well, so I put the email in, continue with email. We've just sent you a temporary logging code. Yeah, that's what you want. So where the hell's that? It'll come. I think half the problem is that, yeah, I've got a temporary logging code. Oh, good. Oh, blimey, I'll never remember that. <laughs> but, but you won't need to. Uh, I think half the, the, the problem with it is that um, 
by because I'm using remote desktop for for the scope. Oh. I've got effectively two uh, desktops open on the same screen. Oh, I see. And the email is operating on the one. And I'm tr I've, I'm in difficulties, in fact, in pulling over I see. stuff that's been saved on on uh, internet one at got the it. scope. Got it. Yeah. I've got. I'll probably have to do this tomorrow now. Actually. Oh no. But okay. uh, in fact, I've lost where the damn no. Uh, what they call it? Things gone. Where the hell's that gone? All right, I've got the code. You're a little oh, I'll work it out, Doug. You okay. carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Well, one thing I have to do is I have to clean my glasses. I know that much. You should see the state of my phone after using it to operate the telescope <laughs> yeah. for eight hours. Right. I think I'm going to have to give it a bath. Nothing there. Uh, Michael, okay. did you succeed in getting into the Notion page? You uploaded one, so I think you must have. Uh, yeah, I did. I uploaded one. Uh, yes. I think I'm still in there. I'll just, okay, just good. refresh. Good. Yeah, just, I've just got to now um, good. Download, my, download my photos and upload it to Google so I can then rename them so then I can load them up. So it's sort of gone from EV Skype to phone then to Google Drive, then to my laptop, and then back up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but at least it made it to um, Google Drive um, all by itself. It's maybe, it might be something worthwhile for um, people who are imaging using a tablet or yes. a, you can do it for the laptop also, um, but Google, Google Drive, sorry, Google Photos and Google Drive. Google Photos app on iOS will monitor your photos on your phone and then oh. upload them automatically to Google Photos. That is a great idea. And Google Drive, you can have it on a laptop and have it monitor a drive. I'm not sure if, if the Google Photos one will do it as well. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a way of getting it right, because otherwise um, I would have to do a one-by-one one send or whatever. That's a great idea. Yeah, so it certainly helped my workflow. It would just be nice if I could have renamed them in Google Photos, photo album, but I, I don't think I'm going to rename them. So my task now is to go through 75 photos and rename them according to the naming convention. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if I'd had, if it's using um, ASI Live or something, I'd be able to uh, apply the naming convention as, as we went to give it a target name. But so we don't have that option with the UV scope. Gotcha. Yeah. So a lot of you guys will have them all set up. The names will just be spent out with all the data you need. <laughs> and I'm doing it old school. Okay, I've got a, just got a question for the guys. Um, sure. walking, walking noise, how often does that crop up as an issue? Uh, working noise? W walking. Walking noise. I don't even know what it is. Um, so what that is, it's, it's a pattern of noise. Um, so it ends up being like streaks at running at an angle uh, through your photos. I'm not sure if we've got it. I haven't example. seen it. Have you guys seen anything like that? I haven't. I bet uh, yeah. Frank. Did you call it? Go ahead, Stephen. What did you call it? He called it walking noise. Oh. No, I've never heard of it. So it's a pattern of noise that emerges. Um, I think it occurs when, when your dark isn't quite perfect and oh. then you've got a mount that's not tracking absolutely, which obviously I'm running um, all the times were unguided, so it's never quite tracking perfectly. And then you get um, streaks running at whatever, whatever angle corresponding to the, 
the way that your field rotation is moving. I've never seen that. Uh, but I had to... I'll see if I can. I'm not sure if, if I've got an example of it. Uh, it's a real pain. It tends to disappear if your stack is long enough. But um, obviously, I'm doing EAA with short. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Someone on Saturday nights has post posted it. Oh, good. Phil, while he's looking for that, did you get into Notion okay? Yeah, I've got into Notion. Uh, I've still got difficulties, though, because of remote desktop. So what I'm oh. about to say okay. is I'm going to say bye and thanks for the company for the last, well, I've been here nearly, what, 10 hours? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I will uh, say I'll vanish now and yes. I will upload them through without the complication of remote desktop. And, Got uh, it. Got it. Maybe log in in the morning if I get a chance. Sounds good. We'll look okay. forward to seeing you. Thanks look all. To see you. Thank see you, guys. Me. See you later. Cheers. Bye. So, Stefan, are you able to upload? Yeah, I think so. Right. Oh, good. I'm just going to upload my uh, last image to Google Drive. Good. We are at 102, 102, 102 out of the 110, which is great. It's fantastic. You haven't even given uh, Brian and me a chance to try to, uh, you know, grab a one yet right brian i mean and then we still have our guys on the west coast so this is great brian i think what i'm going to do uh, i don't know about you brian, but I think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through every object as if i was starting from scratch and just see how far i can get what do you think brian are you there brian might have stepped away Randy, are you still there? Randy might have stepped away. Hole, are you still there? <laughs> oh, there's Randy. I think Frank stepped away. But I, I can't start until uh, another probably two hours and 20 minutes. There's Randy. Yeah, we're, we're assuming here that by the time it gets to us, there won't be much left that's possible for us to get. So um, we're but, just gonna start on the list and see how yeah, far we can get. That's good. Ourselves. Because, you know, last time, Randy, Bill got, I think, 103, maybe. He got 103 of the objects, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, and I think we can do pretty well. Uh, one problem with the observatory, it has a roll-off roof. Yes. And we can't get down really low to the horizon. So, okay. So that, that'll limit us somewhat. Got it. We're going we're gonna to see how this does. This is my first time, really, to be honest, my first time to use this observatory on something low to the horizon. So we'll see how it does. I guess I could, I could go over there right now, but I'd want to make sure I didn't cross the path of the sun during the slew, right? That wouldn't be good, would it? Eight, at 8.15, this M74 is still going to be at um, position in the sky, 13 degrees. It just depends on how long it takes the sun to, um, to give way to, see, M74 is a galaxy, right? Yes, it's a spiral galaxy. 
but it has low surface brightness. Oh, that's bad. An M77 is right there beside it. And it should be at 16 degrees. At least it has a bright nucleus, M77. So maybe if we just can see the nucleus of it. Ten million solar masses. Imagine. Ten million objects the size of the sun combined together into one blob. Uh, M76 is. Can you hear me? What's that? Uh, I said uh, I just uploaded M76. Oh, I'm going to go look. I continue with the uh, M45. Good. It's probably still um, 76. Yeah, I'm sure it'll show up for me in a minute if it shows it uploaded for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, it's beautiful. That's awesome. That's beautiful. You know, uh, Michael, uh, Stefan has, I think, exactly the same telescope that you have. Stefan is in Sweden. The, the AV scope. He has, uh, didn't you have a 110 millimeter refractor? Oh, no, I was running. No, I was running an EV scope this time. But the EV scope is a 110 millimeter refractor built into it, right? Uh, no, it's a 114 millimeter reflector. 114. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's yeah, not the same, Stefan. No, and the and the Stellina is an 80 millimeter APO refractor. Ah, that's right. Mine is a TS Optics uh, photo line something ED. I wonder if Kim had a 110 millimeter refractor, Michael. Do you remember? Um, I think someone who was coming on after us, I think, was using a. Uh, they were deciding what what to use, and, I, was, see. and I think we we're going to use a 120 millimeter refractor. Oh, okay. Um, it was a guy from Tennessee, I think. Ah, oh, yeah, Brian is, but is I'm, on. I'm relying on my now very tired. Yeah, yeah. memory. <laughs> Brian is on right now, but uh, he. Um, he might be maybe stepped away. Yeah. Hey, Doug, could you just point me to the naming convention? Oh, yes. Um, let me see if I can grab it for you somehow. I'll, uh, I'll go to the chat here and I'll just put um, something like name and then um, after the name, if you could put um, the time and in whichever you want, um, if if it's, you could put 
M-I-N for men or S-E-C for seconds, whatever you want. And then the um, subframes, uh, how many subs there are. And then the, um, the date is nice, but if you don't want to do that, I usually go four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, and then the um, uh, name of the observer, something like um, something like okay. that. Is it a strict requirement? Because we've already got the date and time and year, year, month, month, day, day, hour, hour, minimum, second already in the file name. It's uh, not a strict requirement. No, the, the things yep. that are probably uh, essential would be to start with the name of the object like M1 and then yep. to make sure your name is at the end. That would be the only other thing that would be really yep. ideal. Yeah, okay. The, the EV scope, the, it's usually got the exposure time um, on in the, in the image. Okay, in the fits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and circle. it doesn't show the number of subs. It's always four second exposures. Okay. Um, but then like, it'll say like two minutes, three minutes. So it won't, it won't be precise. That's great. You won't, you won't have a precise exposure make count it, for it. Make it easy for yourself, Michael. Yep. Okay. I will. That way there'll be less errors and <laughs> less messing, messing you around to fix it up later. Yeah. Bob, I see you made it. Um, I yeah sorry I was, I'm muted myself. Um, I can see some holes in the cloud. Um, where where are we? Well, you know, the good news is we have, um, thanks to some great Australian and New Zealanders, and also a couple of your peers in Europe, we've made great progress. Uh, what we don't have yet are. Um, let me just finish this window resizing. We don't have um, we don't have coming up later in the night for you. We don't have M twenty nine or M twenty seven, and then we've also missed altogether M seventy four and M seventy seven at the beginning of the night, and then we also missed Andromeda M thirty one with its satellites M thirty two and M one ten. So those are the objects we're missing. But when you stop and think. That's really just eight objects out of 110. So it's really gone real well. Now, granted, some of these are very, um, you know, they're very, very plagued with clouds. So I'm just going to start through and see and just add images as if I'm just going through the whole list, Bob. So that's up to you if you want to make it a night to try to do that. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I've got M29, M27, M31. Correct. M31 and its companions, 32 and 110. Okay, yeah. And what was the other one? So it's just those. 74 and 77, but I'm guessing those have already set for you. Well, I'm just going to have a quick look. Okay. Um, yeah, just all the hard ones, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got the we got the easy job. We, we just picked off all the easy ones, left all the hard <laughs> ones for you guys. Um. M27, um, I could probably start getting about 3 a.m. local okay. time. Okay. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, M29. 2 a.m. Uh, um, M29, probably about the same yes. um, between 2 and 3 local time, uh, provided it um, clears the houses. Right. Um, 74. Uh, yeah, no chance of 74. Already set. Yep. Um, and I'm guessing that's going to be the same for 77. Yes. Yep, um, that's disappeared for me. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, 31 is just too low for me. Okay. 
Where well, else we got? So it's up to you, Bob. If you would want to, um, you could you could go to sleep now and get up at that odd hour if you'd rather, or it's really up to you, brother. No, no, I'm quite happy. Um, okay. See, see, um, a dip in and out. Um, I'll leave this running. Okay. Um, yeah, no, all, all good, I think. Okay. Well, well done to um, our Antipodean friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's awesome. I'm looking... Looking up the um, um, that um, sheet, it looks like um, um, they've um, they've had the most fun and the weather. Yes, that's right. They they fought a few clouds early had, on. Had a but... few battles. Yeah. Yeah, I was fighting humidity the whole night, so it got to ninety seven percent humidity pretty quick and stayed there yeah. most of the night with no yeah. breeze for most of the night as well. So. I had to, I had to retreat to the entrance of my garage and uh, put a fan on the on it. Fortunately, it was, that was shooting north, so it was unobstructed. Yeah, but um, usually in those uh. conditions, I, I would have I would uh, usually I'd, I'd have given up on those conditions rather than pushed on through. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't say that say the humidity didn't the quality of my image is any favor any favors either. Right. Uh, with the wind chill, it's um, probably close to zero. Um, Oh wow! Um, here, uh, yeah, so we've had a really sort of uh, cold um, uh, uh, spell, um, and I think that's just the the, the air, a uh, cold mass of air. That's a shame because I've got a nice picture of M M one, but um, or oh, is it? Well, well, show it, show M1. it to us, show it to us, brother. Yeah, hang on a moment. I'm just going to zoom. Um, I'm just that was just a thirty second one. Um, and let's see how I share on this. Um, Meanwhile, I'm going to slew over to something in the east sky and see how my scope does with this object is at eight degrees, I believe it was. Eight position in the sky. Yeah, here's one at eight degrees above the horizon. So I'm just going to slew over there and see how it does over that wall. Do you need a periscope? <laughs> yeah, probably. Let's get someone out there to hold a mirror in front of them. Yes. Uh, right, Bets, um, can you see that? Yes. Uh, Bets um, zoomed in a little bit, um, but that's only a 30 second uh, shot. Um, let's go from. Two well, let's go for 60 seconds. Um, yeah, so I'm using the um ASI air uh, setup because um I'm completely um uh, lazy. Um, <laughs> other people use the ASI air that are, <laughs> it's just easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Um, especially uh, the new upgrades um, for polar aligning. Um, I don't even have to sort of get it sort of, I just have to roughly um, face it north. Um, and I um, hook it up via Ethernet into um, my little shed at the bottom of the garden. Um, so I'm screening, um, or it's coming in via Ethernet um, into the shed. So I'm in a nice and warm. Um, and um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's all good. Good. All is all is good in the world of astronomy from ASIA. None, none of us been out in the cold and shivering. <laughs> I ended up with my ski jacket on last night. Oh my goodness! It wasn't that cold. It's just you know when you're out in the in like thirteen or fourteen degrees all night, but the chill yes. does kind of see. It. That's right. Well, that's um, a minute. Um. It's oh, not. Yeah. It's not guided. It's beautiful. Um, that's beautiful. And uh, yeah, that's a Rasa um, eight, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that's there. So, um, but that's already ticked off the list. So that doesn't count, does it? Well, you could upload that file and add yours to the mix. Now I'll leave it to the professionals. 
They, they were imaging through a lot of clouds sometimes, brother. I, and then besides, there's nothing uploaded yet for one. Okay, I'm just... Um, I'll no, just I don't have M1. I'll stop my guide. I'll stop my I'm guiding. Uh, I'm just um, doing um, um, calibration and guiding. Um, I'll come back to you then. This, um, how do I? Uh, do you still have your little boards that are nailed together in a T, and you can? No, I've um, no, I um, put some um, concrete. Um, oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Um, so um, it's it does that, you know. So I can just uh, put the tripod out. Much better. Yeah. Uh, right. Just going to try and work out where this screen how to cancel the screen. Uh, so I'm sure you don't want to see me calibrating. Uh, I don't use Zoom um, a lot, as you can probably tell. You're doing great. Well, here it is. It doesn't say where I can. Uh... Share screen? No, you're yeah, already no. sharing. Yeah, I'm just trying to see where it um, to stop it. Uh... Oh, you can hit escape. Escape. And that, that lowers it to the size of a window so you can see what you're doing. And then uh, if you, I can just stop it for you if you'd rather stop it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, just a, rather than um, everyone okay. sort of watching. Um, yeah, there you um, go. Hi, Frank. I'm um, long for another year since uh, we last um, he uh, might spoke. Have stepped, he might have stepped away, Bob. I think he left his uh, his computer on, but I think he had to step away. Uh, you've got blue skies still, Doug. I do have blue skies. How about that? <laughs> Makes a change. Um, um, a nice <laughs> observatory uh, build. I, oh, I was watching. Thank uh, you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to move the scope. And yep, there it's moving. You can see him. Hmm. I can remember um, way back last year when um, uh, we had to cut trees down um, yes. to get M sure M one ten. We sure uh, did. managed it. You managed it. Yeah. Uh, to where we are now, I mean, uh, you was um, in your truck. I was or in your the truck. SUV, um, using the Wi-Fi, That's and right. now you now you're all wired up. <laughs> it's it's a big difference, honestly. When I went out to turn on the when I went out to turn on the gear in the observatory, my mind flashed back to what a difference a year can make. You're right, Bob. Uh. Okay, so that's eight degrees. We're very, we're very spoiled with the technologies. We are, aren't we? That's the beauty of a lockdown. It's amazing what, what you can do now with a few hunt. Yeah. yeah. And it all started as a lockdown hobby. <laughs> I guess so. For some, it did. I, I had started long before that, just uh, visual, but I, I wasn't doing EAA. Well, that should be the same uh, height. So I don't think the wall is going to be a trouble. Uh, it's just, are there more trees in the West? That's going to be the question. But you can see it's, it's. I think it's looking over the wall, okay. That's just eight degrees. Try something even lower. This is, uh, oh, that's also eight degrees. Well, oh, that was a typo. That's not M9, it's M8. I must say, even the task of looking at the picture to get the M number and then remember yeah. it by the time I go to relay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle this morning. Yeah. 
So go easy on yourselves, guys. Don't offer any machinery today. <laughs> now there I can see a telephone pole. So that is at see, position in the sky is so at seven degrees, I'm still not seeing the wall. So that's pretty good, huh? So yeah, we can do this as long as I don't have trees in the way. So there's seven degrees. You can see a telephone pole toward the east there. <laughs> uh, do you still have the uh, chainsaw? <laughs> I think I might get in trouble with a public utility if I did that, Bob. Hey, Doug. Mike. Hey, um, just going through my stuff. Yes. Uh, one more to do. M52 was not M52. <laughs> oh boy what well, what was your m52 what actually was it hang on i just lost the volume sorry i just lost the sound there no problem okay again sorry sorry so your 152 what did it what had you actually taken a picture of uh some kind of large uh cluster like thing all right but it wasn't it should be a galaxy um that was Stephane. one of the first to discover something new. Stefan, yeah, really. would you check and see if uh, if uh, M52 has set for you? M52. M52? I think, I think it has set by now. Because it was one of the first I did. Was it? Yeah, it was just going down, I think. It was... But the US can get it. That should be easy. Okay. Um, so I'm just going through double checking everything with Australia. All right. We're glad. Okay, so that was. It's a cluster. Uh, it is an it, open cluster. Yeah. I'm, I'm, hang on. They may, I'm going crazy here. Let me just see. Let's do OM. Maybe I was looking at order number. For open cluster. And maybe what I have a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. Of, the Scorpion is what I have it as, M52. Right. And it says open cluster, but if you look up M52 in the sheet That's sheet, M52, you're right, it is. So maybe I was right. Huh. <laughs> I'll put it back, hang on. Let's have a look. I'm just doing, I'm on astromedia.net. Oh. And let's see how it's, it's queued still. Good. I've taken it off for the moment because it's, it's, it's not as cluster-like as it should be. I see. But if it, if it comes up positive on um, astrometry.net. Okay. Fair I'll enough. put it back up. That's, that's, a, that's a, a good safe default thing. Fair so, enough. Um, and there's no problem. So I would invite other people, Stefan or whatever, or in the States rather, to go for it. Because my one, even if it is, doesn't look much. It looks like a lot of stars, but it doesn't look like a cluster of stars. Got it. Got it. You know, so to get a, at least just to get a better picture would be good. All right. I'm just um, double checking everything. Doug, how do we yes. upload? Uh, did you get an invitation for um, Notion? Notion. Yeah, yeah, I'm in it now. And did you did you log on so you have edit yep. privileges? Good. Um, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we, I can we, see everyone, and I've just added myself to M1. Oh, good. When you go to M1, and in that row, there's a column called Images. And when you click on the white box, there's a drop-down that uh, appears, and you can click Add Image. Yep, Okay. Um, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So can I reorder that 
um, Notion spreadsheet without messing everybody else up. Yes, I, yes. I believe that when you reorder it, it doesn't bother our sort. It's yeah, I did. A, I've done it several times. Not a problem. Yeah, it's just a personal right. view reorder. So this will be a huge help in actually uploading the images to the I right bet. place. I bet. <laughs> Struggling to walk and chew gum at the same time at the moment. <laughs> okay, I'm about to, well, if I find the right one, I'm about to upload my tagged image of M30 because if nice. that's the only thing I, only thing I do today. <laughs> yeah, that's very valuable. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm sure yeah. that um, you, you're going to have images for pretty much everything else. Um, um, did, did Kim manage to get M30 in the end? That's fantastic. Mike, uh, I don't know if you can see. Um, why don't I share this real quick? Um, right, uh, that's that, there. Good. That uh, is is what M52 should look like. Um, let's see, I'm gonna just do the. It might kind of look similar to that. Let me see. Okay. All right. But um, which is a, a large collect? Can you put it on the big screen? Yes. So see it? Yes. Yeah, I don't see that big. Well, I've got a smaller field of view, so that might be why it's. It could be then, it could be. I mean, it's, there's one, two, I'm looking at that line of a one, two, three, four slide. Right Oops. here. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. I mean, so I'm on, I'm doing it on astrometry and not net. It's a little bit slow at the moment. So let's uh -huh. see what they come up with. You had a color camera, right? Yeah. This has so many blue stars. Uh, I'm seeing the yellow ones a lot of. Oh, okay. Okay, it's it's in it's still queuing. Okay, but let's see. Would you guys rather um, like? I bet as soon as you get your files uploaded, Mike, you're probably gonna hit the sack, right? Um. Yeah, I'd like to get M twenty seven at about three o'clock as well. So, oh, really? Uh, so you're gonna go take a nap and then get back up? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Stefan, what about you? Do you want to go take a nap and then get back up? Or what do you want to do, Stefan? Well, at the moment, I'm uploading. Uh, anyway, so. I'm ready to call it tonight. Yes. Ready. Yes. I have a bad flu this week. I'm okay. A little, little bit. <laughs> and Stefan, uh, you've already uploaded all of your pictures, I think, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank so you're good. Hey, Stefan, thank you very much. You did a great job. Yeah, it was a pleasure to <laughs> to join. It 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 was great having you. You did great. And uh, yeah, maybe next time I will join again. Okay, we would we would love that, and we'll also be in touch with you about uh, turning this into SEDS, uh, because hopefully, if all goes well, you'll see your name there as uh, you know completing at least uh, a good number of objects. We'll see how many we can get tonight, but we'll see if we can get all 110 and you'll see your name there. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> yep. Okay. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. M82 came out pretty nice. Oh, good. Do you want them cropped to make it bigger or... I mean, you don't have to. I no, mean, it's, it's, a, it's up to it's you. It's a pretty cool wide-field picture. Yes. Actually, so that's cool. Okay, M82. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite little galaxies. That. Oh. Sure. Okay, M82. No, so I was pretty chuffed that I got the uh, triangle. Um, I've, I've loaded that up. We can take a look at it. 
Not super, Good. super clear, but it's it's unmistakable, the triangle and the... Good. Yeah, I was surprised I could get so low on the horizon. I was thinking I could get that Fox I M94. So is that, is that the true color or is the uh, horizon changing the color a bit on that one? Oh, you can see the gradient, can't you? Yeah, it must have been quite low. Yeah, there was, was a lot of clouds here. It was, um, I was lucky there was a huge cloud right in the way at about 7.30 while it was still light. And it was like blowing and blowing, trying to push the thing out of the way. And it finally moved. <laughs> <laughs> you pull the cloud, clouds away, right? Yeah. What's that game you play where you focus on a cloud and make it melt away? Uh -huh. I haven't done that. I did so well. That's kind of what I did. Kind of willed it. That was... Uh... I think it was in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance or something like that. Oh, uh, nice. See if you remember. Yeah, I love this, uh, the, the labeling capability in SharpCap. Yes. That was, that's saved so much time. It's so nice. Okay, it's M94. Maybe I should write a script to plate solve all of my images and annotate them. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Actually, that's a, I've got a draft of that. I haven't tried it out yet because I had a, I wrote a script to do about 30 or so of the Messiah objects. And I just tried adding that same little tag script that Doug sent out to the name thing. But I don't know if the, if it will interpret it correctly yet. I haven't tried it yet. It'd be cool. Yeah, well, my image is saved as PNG, so I doubt that any plate solving is going to work on it from SharpCap. <laughs> Seems to look like that's files. Where was it? M94. No, I've been having a lot of fun with that, the, uh, the SharpCap sequencer. Kind of. The way he's done uh, it is, is really good because you don't actually have to write script. It's got all these little template right. things you slide in. It reminds you of object-oriented code, doesn't it? I was never involved in that, but okay. um, it, 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 it's beautiful because it's, I mean, I played around with Nina and that has, at least in the basic sequence, uh, some sequencing capability. But yes. the nice thing about the sharp cap thing is you can customize it yeah. much more easily. Yes. Yeah, that's that was the goal of object-oriented code. You should be able to, you should be able to grab an object that that is like a a Lego block, and you should plug the object in the code. And that was the goal. I don't know if they always succeeded. But... Okay. Okay. Well, that's kind of what the sharp cap thing is exactly. like, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just put the Crocs eye up there. That was a nice one. Nice. M94. You know, these are the rest. And now pinwheel. 101. If you have joined us on YouTube, you probably are wondering, well, what's going on? <laughs> We're kind of in a lull between what Europe was able to see and now what North America will be able to see. So uh, I guess you could say uh, nightfall is sort of over the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> and we have no observers over the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, as soon as nightfall hits North America, we'll kind of start back up again with imaging and observing. And that's gonna be somewhere around, oh, 8.05 p.m and on. So once we get to 8.05 p.m., then I think we'll have a push until, I don't know what, 2 a.m. or something, 1 a.m. And then there might be a, a West Coast observer that'll be starting up then, you see. So right now there's like a lull. And so what our European observers are doing, as you can hear, they're uploading all their images into the tracking sheet that we use to track. And in case you're interested, 
I'll put a read-only version of the tracking sheet in the YouTube uh, queue. And that way you'll be able to, um, yeah, you'll be able to um, kind of see what they're working on as they're, as they're working on it. So I'm gonna stick that in the YouTube link right now, the YouTube queue. When you click on that uh, link, you'll be able to see the very same sheet that we're looking at with the sole exception that uh, you're reading it as a view only. And these guys are uploading images into it. So it allows you to see the very images that they've been uh, looking at through their scopes throughout the night. Okay, just put one a very faint 101 up there. 101. Very faint, but it's definitely. All right. Okay. Still renaming. It takes a lot of time. The uploading? Uh, no, I'm still renaming. I'm only about halfway oh, renaming. through renaming. Mm -hmm. Renaming, well, I see. Yeah. yeah. Using the EV scope, and it doesn't. Yes. It, um, uh, it labels the photo and the image itself, but it doesn't actually put the object name. Um, into the uh, file, into the file name, and I don't think okay. I can. There's 102. Uh, 103 was a nice cluster. I'm just kind of um, changing them down to JPEG. It's a little bit All smaller. Right. Sounds for good. For purposes. I think my wife might be here with my supper, so I'm going to mute here for a second, guys. I'll put some music on or something. <laughs> you got supper delivered. That's good. <laughs> they do takeouts. Really? Delivery. Tra transcontinental. I'm sure you could order an Uber in another country. Okay, that's one of six. I think that's everything. Not from fifty two, but I'm still trying to. Oh, no. Why did I seventy four? I didn't do, did I? I did it forty. Forty. Edit. Uh, say that.
Well, I'm going to step out and make my morning coffee. And then continue with naming and uploading. Um, do you know if we can um, upload, uh, so different people can upload different images, or is it only just one? It, it, you can do uh, different. You can upload you multiple. multiple. Yeah. Okay. And forty, and then M thirty nine. I didn't do M thirty nine. Why do I have it ticked? Uh, somehow M thirty nine. I had a start and my name by it, but I don't think I completed it. Uh oh. So that's to be done. I'm going to right. delete my name. Oops. But then 39 needs to be done as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 33. Okay. So let's check 52 again. Let's see what astronomy says. Job status processing. Slow. Oh, there we are. Let's have a look. Are you guys hearing any music? You're not, are you? No. No. Just trying to do a simple thing here, play music, and why I can't do it. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what? Maybe I'll uh, change the output over to... I have an idea. What if I change this output? No, that won't help because it's the input that's got to change. I just want to play silly music. In Maybe it's too silly. Maybe that's why it isn't playing. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike, why don't you take charge of the mic for a while? Mike on Mike. You can play some music, Mike. You play music all the time. Um, right now, the only thing I'd play for you is me chomping my dinner. Oh, rats. Okay. I'm just trying to play some music because that's what I have to do is go eat my dinner. So. I'm going to try this. Let's see. I'm going to change this over to this and you won't hear my voice, which is probably not a bad idea. Um, I'm going to try to change that to, I just want to play crazy music.
but looks like we have um, filled in quite a few gaps. I think that's playing music. And then I'll set this on. And I'll set this on. Um, Mike, you got uh, triangulum. Well done. Yeah, a bit faint, but it was there. Thanks. Um, did you see my picture on? <laughs> Uh, no. Just before, before dusk on, um, on cloudy nights, there was a big cloud exactly where <laughs> 31 where Triangulum was. It, um, it moved just in time. Oh, yes. Actually, I did see that picture on the thread. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guys, I, I just happen to think, what if that's copyrighted and that'll block our, block our recording? So I'm not going to play it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Given the simultaneous on YouTube, yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah. So you guys just keep the conversation going for a minute while I go eat, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go eat. Yeah, no worries, Doug. You're not responsible. Frank, I've seen you there most all the day, but I haven't heard much from you. Are you uh, are you there? Hopefully that means that uh, the weather in New York is good enough that you're out setting up or out there at least. Mike, are you the only person who's currently imaging? I'm not imaging. I'm uh, just uploading at the moment. I, uh, I'm waiting for M27. Well, not waiting, but my, I will try imaging M27 at about 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's a two and a half hours time. Um, okay, so we're on just kind of a hiatus right now? Yeah. I'm just, uh, I did take a picture of what I thought was M52, but I took it down. Because uh, it's at best maybe it's the top of the cluster, so and it's not too difficult to get. It's at you know, fifteen twenty degrees. Just be just um, after dusk. I'm trying to figure out exactly where it is on the worldwide telescope, and astrometry not astrometry dot net. Maybe to annotate. Randy, where are you at? You look like you have as much daylight as me. You must be Pacific. Yep. 
I'm over in California. What part? Uh, Sierra Foothills, east of Sacramento. Old town called Placerville. Okay. That's where right. the Cal California gold rush started. You're not too far from Brian. Nope. Matter of fact, Brian and I will be working together tonight. I'm down just southeast of Death Valley National Park, about 80 miles due west of Las Vegas. Love, love uh, Death Valley. We get down there once in a while. We were at Anza Borrego after the New Year's. Anza Borrego is beautiful. Very nice dark skies. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we'll get some rest and uh, so we can get the dumbbell later. Okay, good luck to you guys tomorrow. See you later on, Mike. Thank okay. you. Sure. Bye. I was actually looking at the satellite imagery and it looked like um, you guys up in NorCal are getting some clouds up there. Perfectly clear air. Good. That's what my satellite imagery is showing. So you are just south of that. So that's. Yep. We're in that yep, little clear space. That little clear spot. I hope it stays there for you. Yeah, so do we. So I'm down right about there. Right about there, just west of the bend of the Colorado. So hopefully I should be in clear for pretty much the night. Although at this point, I think it's just a matter of 74, 77 and 31, 32 and 110 yep, are the critical bad. ones. Are you guys going to have low enough Western horizons to get those? I'm not for sure. Okay. Maybe Brian. Uh, Brian Brian's looking for a spot right now where he can get that horizon. But I'm I'm at the Placerville Observatory and we've got walls, got a roll off roof with some pretty high walls around it. Gotcha.
Doug, is that a live view? Doug went off for dinner. Yeah, his view just changed now. We're looking at his all skies cam. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's his view because it looks like there's a fair amount of clear sky there. He does have some yeah, cloud, I, but I think he's he's thinking he can get those low western targets. Wonder if Doug shouldn't have restarted the stream. Looks like we're going to have at least an hour until the East Coast folks can get started.
Well, that's my dinner break done. Now I got to get back to work for a little bit, but I'll be see you probably in another three hours or so. Okay, take care. Yep. Um, can I ask um, uh, you, gentlemen, if you can have a look? Um, I'm just trying to image M40. Um, and when I've asked it to annotate, um, it's just come up NGC4290 and uh, Maygrez. Um, am I in the right area? Let me share my screen with you, if that's okay. Yep. Um, it's supposed to be centered. Um, I'm just, so just to plate solve. Um, it says it's M40, and I'm guessing it should be in the center somewhere around here. Um, would it be this here? It's only a two uh, two minute exposure. Uh, no darks or anything like that. I haven't got a, um, a sky chart to uh, to just check. Um, I'm just going to try uh, searching for an, uh, a different designation. Didn't like that.
Well, guys, I think I'm going to move on and catch you later. Yeah, take care.
Bob, are you still here? Yep, I'm. I'm just um, just uploading some images. Okay. Um, not as good as uh, everyone else. But. Well, you, you say that, but I'm sure they're great. <laughs> <laughs> it's my 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 attempt. So I wasn't able to play last year. That's right. So it uh, looks like most everybody else, like um, Mike Huerto yeah, and, and Mike from New Zealand and everybody else uh, dropped off, huh? Yeah. Um, all right. Let's just do a screenshot of this. Um, I'm just doing screenshot. I'm not using um, Sharp Cap. Um, oh, that's fine. <clears throat> so I've just uh, uploaded um, M40. Um, I'm just doing um, M44 at the moment, just uploading that. Oh, 40 is that double star deal. Yeah. Didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> it never does. But we do it because Charles chose it as a <laughs> he listed it in his catalog, didn't he? Yeah, one of his mistakes. Right. How is life with you, sir? You know. Life is good, <clears throat> Bob. I um, our organization's in a good place, and I'm enjoying uh, astronomy. I usually try to do one uh, one live stream a week. Yeah, yeah. and uh, of course, enjoying this new observatory. And what I, made you what made you go for the um, the shed, the roll on, roll off? It's just easiest, um, I guess. You know, I. I originally went with a dome and they were taking forever to deliver. And then I found out they hadn't even started manufacturing it. And I was just a little bit frustrated with them. So I finally just said, okay, let's just cancel that order. and I'll find something else. And yeah. in the meantime, I had been on a couple of um, uh, live streams with people who had domes and they complained to be honest on these live streams that I saw, they were complaining that they couldn't see the sky. They said, all I can all see right. is just that one little narrow slit. And I thought, boy, yeah. if I ever do have people that come and I, I take them out to show them, you know, something from the observatory, it's like, it's going to feel, I thought perhaps a little bit more closed in than what it had. And so all of a sudden I just started liking these pure tech observatories a lot. I, I started looking at pictures of them and I, started realizing my goodness you can open up that top and then you can still see the whole sky basically so it was just i guess a dawn of dime i just decided i'm not going to do a dome and then the um the um kind of add-on benefit is you don't have to try to learn how to synchronize the dome with your mount you know it's yeah. just roll off the roof and you're done so yeah i, I was really glad after making the decision and it took probably two months for Pure Tech to finish, but but man, uh, they predicted the whole time exactly when they would, and they delivered exactly on time, according yeah. to when I first ordered. So they were really on the ball. Um, so did they do the peer for you as well? Uh, they did. did they, so they settled everything because I, I take um, well if if I if I know I'm going to have a good spell of weather, I'll, I'd leave the tripod out um uh -huh. but e even then um I mean, i'm i'm guessing that you your setup you don't have to polar align right um, yeah I, I constantly have to polar align I know. Um, which is but um yeah i mean it looks i mean i'm looking at um the slideshow um or, or your uh, various cameras now yeah yeah very impressive sir it's so fun it's so fun i i know that there are zillions and zillions of people who don't have an observatory and you know bob because we've just lived this way for 
a year and three months. So, I mean, all of us, we, we really start setting yeah. up every time, but I was every week, I was spending an hour and 40 minutes to set up and arrange everything. And I thought it shouldn't take me this long in the first place. So I started trying to rush. And even when I rushed, I got it down to one hour and then it would still take a half an hour to tear everything down. And I just thought, oh my goodness, I never come just for two hours because I always feel like it's such a waste of time. I spend two hours for set up and tear down so I can observe for two hours. And I always feel like I have to stay for six hours or seven hours to make it worth it. Well, now yeah. I just come for two hours because it's literally four minutes, you know, to roll the roof back and turn everything on. Um, so now I feel like I can stay for two hours and it's worth it. Yeah. Um, and the VCAA um, is fantastic. The outreach that yeah. you can do. I, I remember um, last year um, <laughs> you were um, in the car and then you, um, then you bought the, um, uh, USB cable and you were yes. plugging it into the, uh, uh, your, um, I was going to say canteen, if that's the right thing. And yeah. you had, um, your, um, um, colleagues and, um, students, um, that's right. Uh, all gathered around yeah. the big sort of thing. And, and now look at you. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, um, <coughs> excuse me. It's a lot of fun. I think, I think, uh, I did a survey recently for somebody and it asked, what's the downside? And I honestly thought, I can't think of any downside of this. It's just so much fun. And another, another question was, if you could have your dream rig, what would it be? And I thought, Oh, my goodness, this is horrible, because I feel guilty about the fact this is my dream rig. I don't want to switch. So, so I really do. Uh, I really am. Is, thankful. This, is this still the Rasa 8? Or did you go to the 11? In the end? It's the 11. This is the 11. Wow. One day when I grow up, mine wants to be 11 as well. <laughs> I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's that much difference. Honest. I think an eight is a lot more uh, portable to move in and out of the house. Um, yeah. This observatory was supposed to be done sooner uh, when I ordered the original dome. And so I went on and got the 11, but as it turned out, as we, as I was telling you, I had to cancel that order. So yeah, I had to move the 11 for probably three or four months in and out every time. And every time I just thought, I am going to strain my back. I am going to have some kind of a, you know, hernia or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'd stick with an aid if I still had to move it in and out of the house. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yes. Uh, sorry. I've been a stranger. Um, I have been, um, I have been, um, what's the phrase? Um, lurking in the background. Oh, that's nice of you. Um, stalking, stalking. Well, I knew you'd show up for this. I mean, you're just a regular, we couldn't do this without you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so nice. Um, how have you been? Has your health been okay? And yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, you know, the usual, um, uh, things, everyone around me seems to be catching that thing at the moment. Um, I'm mm -hmm. trying to dodge it. Yeah. Um, um yeah no i've been good work has been busy which is another thing and um i i think i got a little bit demotivated um mm -hmm. by the weather um uh -huh. it, it, months and months and months of yeah just cloud yeah <laughs> phil, and phil you, said the same thing he said you know it's literally been months and not able to observe he said the same thing yeah but here we are. Um, yeah, no, and um, I'm slowly getting back into uh, the habit of um, um, dark, cold nights, um, um, not seeing friends and family. Um, but when you when you get to see some of the images that we do, just for myself, I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm never going to be. Um, um a social media you know sort of a yeah. guru um i will never be um a hubble telescope um <laughs> but i i like what i do mm -hmm. um i'm you know um i made a little book you know one of these little hardbound books of uh, some of the images um just for me nice. uh, last last year uh yeah but it's fun yeah yeah Cool. Um, right, that's um, 
What did I just do? Uh, 49, I just uploaded a, okay. a picture for. I'm just, I'm just going through um, my um, history just to see what's um, available. Oh, Walpole well, I can do. Uh, but, you know, I mean, but most of them have been um, done already. Mm. Yeah. Our image of the whirlpool wasn't the best. Did you just image the whirlpool tonight? No, um, I'm just I'm just um, um, going there now. Um, hang on, this. Uh, yeah, share, because share our screen. image of the whirlpool was not that great. I don't think, brother. Okay, well, this is just it's just going to be now. Okay, it was severe clouds, if I remember right. Let's have a quick look. It's centered. Uh, this is only going to be a five second sort of um, a preview. Well, it's there. Uh, let me just confirm it. Hang on a moment. Yeah. So I'm looking at these. Both of them are, are decent images, but both of them are plagued with clouds. Okay, let's see what 120 second image looks like um hello to everyone in youtube well um, before i forget uh let's see we do have a question the people at peer tech which by the way i think it's a real honor that the people at peer tech stopped by they're asking how many cameras do we have in the observatory and i think this is probably a deceptive uh, screen that I have here because the camera on the left showing the telescope that is real time. It's it's actually um, it's actually a picture of the telescope exactly as it's there right now, and then the the picture of the camera on top of the scope that shows uh, uh, that view of those clouds that that is a real time picture. It's a real time camera. And but the pictures on the right are that's a slide program of of like some stills that we took. So the truth of the matter is we only have one camera that's aimed at the scope and one camera on top of the scope and then one camera that's looking through the scope. So I guess a total of three cameras, Vito. Oh, you, you sport the magic. What's that? You sport the magic. The magic of um, uh, <laughs> YouTube and uh, yeah. um, right. I'm just going to share the, the screen. Okay, it's a, it's still um, twenty what twenty seconds to go, um, and that's in the middle. It's just a single two minute exposure, or 120 seconds. And it's straight up, which is also the uh, a good thing. It is. Right, it's just uh, uploading now. Um, oh yeah, you'll be able to get a lot better image, won't you? Um. Yeah. I mean, that's a two minute. Do you want me to? Um... No, that's that one's fine. That's better than what we have. You'll see when you upload it. Look at look at the ones we have. It's serious clouds. Okay. We weren't getting any spirals at all, <clears throat> so. Those spiral right. arms in, in the main. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, that's just a single. Um, does that count? Can I uh, yes. upload that? Oh, my goodness. Of course that counts. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I seem to recall being for judge last year, um, the arbiter of um, what could go up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, and we did it. Um, we got it all. We did. Let's hope we can do the same this year. Vito, yeah, right. thank you. Thank you for stopping by, Vito Honest. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to remember how to, I can't seem to do it at the moment. Uh, can you uh, stop my... Oh, sure. No problem. Yeah. Done. So you don't want to see um, uh, me... Oh, no, that's that's no problem. If you've just joined us or if you've uh, skipped to this point in the recording, 
uh, we are in a little bit of, um, in a way, like a slowdown. And the reason why is because we have, we have basically captured at least one image of 101, I think it is. Let's look at the exact count. 101. Yes, we've captured at least one image of 101 of the Messier objects. There are 110 of them all together in the catalog. So now we're waiting on darkness to descend on North America, and we will try to catch those last nine. Now, what I'm going to do with this Rasa 11 that you see here in, uh, in my part of the screen, I'm going to just start through the list again, as if uh, from the beginning and just see how far I can go. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll only get a few, but we'll see how this Rasa 11 does. And that gives me practice. And then if we can get those nine, especially that we're missing, then that'll, uh, as a team, we will have, uh, you know, been able to bag all of the items on the list, so to speak. And this will be the second year in a row for that, if we can do that. So that's going to be the challenge is getting in M74 and M77, along with Andromeda 31 and its companions 32 and 110, and then the Scorpion M52. Once we get those, I'm just going to keep going through the night, though, and we'll see uh, how many I can get. So that'll all start around 8.05 p.m. Eastern here in North America. And Bob has just captured M51 because our image of M51 was really uh, cloudy. And I'm looking at your image. Robert, and it is really good. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have a go at M52 for you. Okay. M52, um, it, we, we don't have a single image. Not one single person has managed to grab M52. Right. Let me have a look. See, has it's it, quite... has, has it risen? Um, it it's still quite low in the okay. northern, um, but um, I'm hoping that um, it may be clear of some trees um, that I have uh, facing to the north. Um, and also got the um, a bit of a light bloom from um, uh, London. Yes. Um, I'm I'm south of London, so I'm look, looking looking up. Um, I will let you know. Okay. Oh, it's a pretty little cluster, isn't it? Um, it's just, um, it's only found 28 stars. Um, it's trying to solve, so I'm guessing it's quite low down. Uh, no, it, it couldn't solve it. Um, it's just recentering. We found a few more stars. Uh huh. It's a pretty little cluster. It's. Um, it looks like I've observed it five times, and I, the first time I lost it in the trees before I really got to really admire it. The second time I said beautiful open cluster. Uh, third, a uh, pretty little open cluster, but we moved past it quickly. Fourth, nice little cluster with indeed lots of faint member stars. And the fifth showing up nicely at nine degrees above the horizon. That was the, the ninth time I observed it. So I'm eager to see what this uh, does in your scope, Robert. Yeah, yep. Um, I'm just say so just waiting to see what happens. Okay. Um, I'm just taking another um, two minute exposure. It, I, it wouldn't plate solve. Mm. Um, it's too few stars, but I'm just going to see. Um, Got it. If I can um, just get something. <clears throat> Has a lot of those little blue, little blue stars, doesn't it? Yeah. Not that I can tell um, mm. from uh, my from my back garden, but um, yeah, I've 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 seen I've got serious gas issues, um, gear acquisition syndrome um, with your setup. <laughs> you're you're nice to encourage somebody. <laughs> I tell you, uh, it really is fun. And I'm just now getting to the point that, excuse me, I have the, the setup uh, arranged the way I want it, uh, mostly inside the observatory. I have a, a large, you know, 32 inch uh, 
you know, what is that called? The the monitor? Um, 4K, you know, a 4K yeah, monitor yeah. that's in there with 32 inch. And then it has a little keyboard shelf. Uh, in that in this picture, you can see it's over to the left. Uh, yeah, you yeah. see something that's kind of kind of covered up. It, that's that 32 inch 4K monitor has a keyboard shelf and then those move up and down depending on whether you're seated or whether you're standing. And they also swivel so you can kind of work with the scope and then immediately turn to the laptop and work with the work with the laptop. Like if you're doing what I need to do, uh, continuing to fine tune my uh, back focus and uh, continuing to work on tilt, you know, those kinds of things you can work on it and be right there beside your laptop. Or if you have I don't know, five or six people in the observatory with you and you're showing them things, yeah. you can you can do that with the 32 inch 4K monitor. I'm just now getting that set and there's a, um, there's a, there's, there's some conduit in the, in the floor of the observatory that'll let me uh, pass that wire through the conduit. So it's not like the wire's not laying on top of the floor. So I'm looking yeah. forward to getting that. But the conduit's already in the floor, so uh, I really like that part. And I, and the there's a transformer for my laptop there, so I can plug it right in. I don't have to even set up a separate AC adapter. And there's a um, uh, the, the HDMI is already there. The USB that connects to the hub at the scope. So with one USB, it connects to everything. So I really like that idea that I can just with basically one. Uh, with one motion, I can plug into everything right there, four feet from the scope. And then I just unplug that, fold up my laptop, step out of the observatory, lock the door and walk in here. And I have the same exact setup in here, 200 feet away, plug in and I see the same thing. So I love that part, being able to go back and yeah. forth. That's, that's what I was going to ask uh, you. So I was just wondering whether um bear in mind more people will be able to see from inside um uh, rather than um, um you trying to get 20 people um, yes. all inside yeah um it, yeah it because really as is. i said um and it's um um uh, depending on the, um the weather um uh the temperature in particular right. um it, it's nice to be comfortable exactly um, yeah, I, I I don't I don't see your microwave and your um, uh, coffee maker in there. So I'm guessing uh, you do. <laughs> no, you, no, you keep it is it clean? That's uh, right. A little, I, little heater. I'm just trying to keep the floor clean. There's no heater because I'm never out there. You can see here's the monitor, the yeah. the 4K monitor and the keyboard stand. I'm just going to try to keep the floor just completely clear of things. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, um, my image um, is just of uh, tree branches. Oh, for uh, fifty-two. Okay. So too, um, too low. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I, I don't know necessarily. This is quite a tall tree. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Got it. Um, yeah, M fifty-two is out for me for Got the it. moment. For the okay. moment. All right. Well, we'll uh, we should be able to catch um, that over here. Uh, da, 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 53 that's quite high yep i'm just going through the, um my list and i'm just um going through and seeing if i just add to um the images that um that everyone else is have put into it well you've already done enough brother honest no, as I said, I'm 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 catching up on last year's <laughs> failure. <laughs> what, what, as I, as I said, I think I said to you last year and some of the others. Um, why does it have to be April? Why can't it be August? No, exactly. <laughs> why is that? It's crazy. Well, Robert, it's yeah. uh, it's after one. It's after one a.m. for you, brother um not quite um it's um 20 past midnight local time oh that's right just five hours that's right yeah uh to eastern um uh, standard time I mean, we, we've just gone through our daylight savings sure. um i think you 
Um, you still got daylight savings? I heard you something do. about you you um, getting rid of it. There is a bill that I think uh, seems like a bill that, that already passed one of the houses, but I really don't uh, see how they'll pass both. And I don't see how people will sign into law because it it is um, supposedly a, an educational issue with school children and the school buses. Now, I guess they just have to change the time that the school starts and that would just change all the time of the classes. So basically you're trading one problem for another, you know? Yeah. And I just, I just can't see why that would ever happen. But then again, I'm not politically motivated and not politically oriented, even though both my sons have become political scientists, and both have gotten their PhDs in poly poli sci. I'm not very politically uh, activated, so I'm going to let them decide and I'll just go with whatever they decide. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, it was sold. I, I, I think it was um, uh, World War One era, and they decided to bring it in for the is farmers. That, is that uh, right? Well, that's maybe that's urban myth. Oh. Uh, maybe I got it uh, completely wrong. Um, but um, I believe it was intended for farmers. I see. So um, they didn't have to uh, um, get up. Or, uh, in, the, in, in in too much in the dark, but they do that? anyway. They do anyway. Yeah, that's right. But we do strange things uh, over here on this side of the pond. <laughs> well, we um, do we do strange things here, as you know as well. Yeah, I mean, um, I've never got the um, hang of um, um, getting into getting into a car and the uh, steering wheels on the uh, wrong side. <laughs> it, it should be where I'm sitting, but it's yeah. not. I know what you mean there. All right, I've got, um, what have I got? M53, I think it is. Oh, good. Um, um, let's have a look, see what it looks like. Yeah, M53. So I'm just going to do a two minute um, exposure for you. Great. Just adding that to the list. Um, am I do, um, I'm the comment section, um, are you happy with the annotation that um, I'm doing? Should I put my name next to it? Do you by chance have your name in the file name? E, no, it's just screenshot. So okay. do you want me? I'll change it. I'll change it all now. Oh, no, no. I mean, I would say don't go back and change anything because I'll just know the one that doesn't have a name in it is yours. That's, that's no uh, problem because... You know, we're not uh, we're not doing this for some kind of uh, analytical science project, you know. So I'll just remember the one that's not got a, a name it, it, is, is Bob's. Um, yeah, it have screenshot um, as the um, prefix. Okay. Okay. I think uh, that, that'll yeah. work. That'll work fine. Um, and and you you'll be able to tell it's mine because um, yeah. um, it's just the um, the ASI. Okay. Um, sort of um, format, but what I'll do is from now on, I'll um, I'll change the naming convention to uh, uh, name and um, target. Yeah, if you could put the target first, like M. Okay. M fifty two dash Bob. That's all you'd have to do. But okay. I, I didn't read the instructions. That's okay. We aren't. Uh, we are, we are thankful for anybody that's able to jump in. I'm, you know, I'm really impressed um, um, from um, um, Australia and New Zealand. I yes. mean, they have blitzed it. They have. They have. And it's a, if you recall last year, this is what we dreamed of. Remember how many times we yeah. would say, surely we can recruit somebody from somewhere down south. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, right. M50. Uh, just coming through m53 uh, yeah i'm going to take a couple of pictures um and um, um enlarge them all right um let's just get rid of uh, some of this 
Um, are you happy if I also, if I just um, do an annotation so you can oh, see? Yes. yes, by all means. Okay. Looks like the sun sets at 8.05 p.m. So we're, in case you're just now tuning in, it is, uh, we're about 30, 38 minutes away from sunset here in Eastern time. By the way, um, the folks at PureTech have said hi, and I can't tell you how much this means, uh, Vito, for you guys to check in. Uh, it really means a lot because, you know, uh, I think a lot of you guys and what, what you've built, it's just amazing craftsmanship. It's pointed exactly at the pole star. So that is north right there. So I hope, I hope Vito, that that was okay. I'm looking over the roll off section as north and, and that kind of gives you an idea of the orientation of the rest. He was asking what direction is the telescope aiming in that picture right now? So with an 805 sunset, Robert, in your experience, how long after sunset will it be dark enough to start seeing something? Um, I, I think that I'm not an expert, but I think it, a lot of it is on the um uh, is it latitude where how oh, uh, where I you see. are. I mean, um it once the sun goes down is um I'm, I'm normally within 30 minutes to oh, okay. an hour. Okay. Um, I'm, I've got uh, enough to see. 30 um, minutes. Yeah. That's not good uh, because if it goes down at 8.05 p.m. And now I'm going to stop time. Let's see. I'm going to stop time. Stop. And um, and then I'm gonna go find M seventy four again, and it is right in the direction of the sun. That's why people have been having trouble with this, isn't it, Bob? Yeah. So if the sun, you, is... you you look you're looking like you're having a really nice day there. Well, what the end of the day? It has really cleared off well, and the the forecast now is just brilliant. I'm so, I just am am so thankful to God, really, because uh, I can't imagine this. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's clear sky. It's it's yeah. all 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 zeros basically the whole night long. Uh, I've I've had a lot of ambers um, uh, to start my day. You've had a lot of what? Oh, ambers. Okay, ambers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bet. So if we can keep those zeros, uh, then the next question will be, how long will it take? You're imaging what right now? By the way. Um, M, uh, what was I imaging? M53. Okay. Tell me, tell me if you start uh, needing, but I'll just put in my screen here. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and since I'm here, I might as well just share that. Uh, let's see, which one is it? Not that, not that. Where is that screen? Here it is, here it is, here it is. Um, is that right? Yeah. So I've got this set at eight. Oh, see, go back here again. Let's go backwards in time. Yeah, there's a. Where did the sun go? Hmm, there's 750. Am I on the right day? Let me see. Where, where, where are you looking? Well, first, uh, I'm just trying to get it. Let's go back to like 730. And 
I don't see the sun. Maybe. Oh, it's right behind there, isn't it? Let's go to like 715. There's the sun. And this is April 1st, 2022. So I guess it's because of these trees. Uh, we're not seeing the exact sunset where it should be. But now if we change this to 730, the sun is over the horizon. And that's still M74 there. Hmm. Let's center on that. And so there's M74. It looks like it's not terrible, isn't it? I mean, let's look at the info and see how high that is at. Well, we're at 7.30 right now. So this can't be right because this, so there's 8.30 for instance. At 8.30, it's supposed to be at 11 degrees. I bet I will be losing it in the trees. So I'm gonna have to image it before 8.30 because that is, this is my photorealistic horizon. So I bet I gotta image it before 8.30 to get it. So that's the bottom line. Yeah, yep. John, welcome back. How's your, uh, How's your darkness coming along? No, I noticed uh, some thin clouds outside right now, but I uh, still looks uh, fairly favorable. But your your darkness, how long till you get darkness there? Oh, it's going to be around the same thing, 8.30 local time. Okay, okay. And same situation, like I mentioned this morning, it's going to be about five degrees above the horizon for me, so it's going to be right. Oh, wow. Right near the hills, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get it uh, during the period between nautical and astronomical twilights. Got it. <laughs> I'm just going to take my earbuds out for a second and walk over there and look out the window and just look at where the sun is. Excuse me for a moment. Well, I do have trees, as you can see in the in the crazy uh, photorealistic horizon. I do have I do have these trees here, and they are about uh, ten degrees up on the horizon. So. I'm going to be like you. I've got to catch it before 8.30, John, or else I'm, yeah, I'm out of luck. Anybody else having? Uh, uh, Brian's going to try it, but I haven't heard uh, what Brian's clouds are like. And then out west, we're supposed to have uh, another Brian, uh, as well as uh, Randy. But I think they're going to be at the same observatory. Oh yeah, boy! I think that's it. I think that's it. I think if uh, it just we're down to three, three astronomers now, so three team well, members. Our European group was uh, unable. Out. They they well they were unable to get M seventy four and M seventy seven, and they were unable to get uh, Andromeda as well as those two companions thirty two and one ten, and then just by some fluke they missed. 29 and 39 and 27. And I think that was just a, an oversight or something. So, you know, you would think we ought to be able to get 29 and 39 and 27, but they don't rise till late, do they? 29 yeah. rises at uh, 130 ish, no, 215 ish. And 39 rises at 143. And 27 rises at 3 a.m. So 
you know, knowing those Europeans, uh, those guys are good guys. They might come back at that time and try to catch them in because they're just dedicated people. Well, we're wide awake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like in 39. It's... Well, let me. I can tell the sun's. Uh... The sun's on its last legs. I don't know if you can see behind me. Back there on that wall, that's the that's the sun shining in a window over there. So it's it's on its last hour for sure. Half hour maybe. Okay. I've got a little camera I want to go outside and set up uh, by oh, my good. rig. So good. Let me uh, run out and do that real quick. Good, good. I'll go ahead. Sounds good. Do you remember, uh, Bob, last last year, uh, it took me the first two hours to get focused. Yes. Um, I, I, I felt your pain. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 right from the beginning, when you first started doing the um, test streams. Yeah. Um, and everything seemed to be going out to the time when you um, pulled the cable out. Um, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I felt your oh, pain that last yeah. year. Terrible. But, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I could, I just imagine you the following day with calipers and um, <laughs> um, <laughs> getting that, was it 110 millimeter back focus? Um, yes. 135, whatever it is. Whatever it is, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Um, yep. And um, yeah, I, it, it seems strange. I mean, I, I was um, using sharp cap then as well. Yeah, um, I remember because you you were um, 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 uh, you, you were giving me some uh, advice on well, how to use it because it didn't work for me. It was just. <laughs> It was very complicated, wasn't it, to learn? Yeah. And then now that we look back, it's not so bad. But then you've made the jump to the ASI Air system. Yeah, haven't you? Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I, I love the idea of um, 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 setting everything up. So I'm out in the cold for yeah. maybe five minutes. Yes. Um, well, once I'm set up, I'm, I'm just out in the cold for about five minutes. Um, usually it's less. I mean, I can do a um a polar line in about two to three minutes now and where it used to take me forever um, that's great um you know um the, the guys um uh, asi air um and their other products similar um which we're not allowed to endorse um <laughs> don't want don't want to get you a copyright strike oh, or whatever you're allowed strike. to endorse anything you want <laughs> um yeah, no, I, I'm um, a lazy um, astrophotographer. Um, I love the simplicity of it. Um, I just want to get out there, take pictures. Um, and as I said to earlier on, I'm, I'm never going to sort of um, um, uh, storm the social media with my images. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 I like what I take. Yeah. Um, and and it's just sure. meant for me, me and my yeah. uh, friends and family. It's a good way to look at it. Right. Um, yeah. M fifty eight is um, uh, now image. It's a tiny little dot. So I'm just going to um, upload it and then I'll um, uh, send it to you. Okay. Brian, uh, everything looking okay there? You got clear skies. Looks <clears throat> looks just like your uh, one there from your observatory. Just I'm so glad. Clear. I'm so glad. Your is your all sky camera? Is that is that like an old picture or is it live? Because it looks like you got uh, clouds in that one. You're right. Let's go uh, update that. Uh, I don't know why that stopped. Um, hmm. I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect and see. 
Should be a nice clear blue pitcher. You're right. <laughs> Oh, you're right. It's odd, isn't it? Something's gone haywire with that. It's like it's, uh, it's like it's lost connection or something, isn't it? You know, um, I think I have the capability now to, as it were, unplug the USB cable and replug it, so to speak. Um, let's see, that would be, here's the pocket power box micro. I'm looking for the pocket power box USB, I think this is it. USB control hub, I think. Yes. So let's see. Hmm. Very odd. Oh, there we are. And I've got these labeled now. So I think I can just turn off that ASI 178. What's that? Reboot the power box or? <laughs> I, I can, I can just, first thing I've done is I've Unplug the USB cable for, from it, so to speak. Right. And uh, now let me come back to Sharp Cap and. Oh, okay. And I'm going to close that instance of Sharp Cap and reopen that instance of Sharp Cap again, too, just to. There we go. That's what it looks like here. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. In 78. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Now, let me go back and make sure that in my um, in my broadcasting software that it's made a good connection to that again. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? So the sky cam, right. So let's change that to about, what, three milliseconds again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you picked up on that because I, wasn't paying close enough attention. <laughs> well, that's your one glitch for tonight, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so there, Got it out of the way early. <laughs> a little better, uh, a little better tuning now. Well done. Thanks for catching that. Good that's work. really, uh, that's really an advantage of the Pegasus Astro uh, USB control hub. <laughs> if you just take a moment in advance and configure, uh, I literally was able to see the exact USB connector by software where that camera was plugged in and I could essentially unplug it. Now in the old days, I would have still been able to do it. I would have just had to walk out there and do it. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new observatory looks really nice though, by the way. Oh, I watched nice. a little bit of the build, build but- uh, You're nice to say that. It, it's a lot of fun, it really is. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a culmination of a lot of, a lot of time and effort. Yeah, the thread, uh, I don't know how long the thread is on cloudy nights, but it's pretty long where people yeah. gave me input. I think it's probably, um, oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I can see it here very quickly. Um, oh, you're in for a long while. I remember following you for yeah. on and off. See, here it is. It's um, nine nine pages um of oh. 210 210 posts in the wow. thread just to plan that <laughs> so, wow <laughs> well, it looks like it worked out good <laughs> well it's nice of you to say you're very kind i am enjoying it that's for sure
it's still new enough that I'm still, I'm still working on things. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see kind of over toward the left. Uh, let me see if I can get on that. Let's see. Where is that? Oh, I don't even see how to get to that screen, but over there on the left, uh, you can see a, um, of, the, of the picture of the scope, that's mm -hmm. a 4K monitor on that wall now. Oh, okay. Wow. So I, I can fold down a little keyboard stand right there on the wall. And it's, it's one of those kinds that moves up and down with you. Right. And I can just set the laptop there and plug it in. And all the plugs are already available. I just love that. And that 4K monitor is, is basically the same thing I'm looking at right now, except at the telescope side. So it's, oh. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Yep. Back just, just to the left of the scope. Exactly. Yeah, there's there's in that picture too. It's kind of right, catty, that, kind of yep. in the corner. Yep. Yep, that's it. And that that little white thing behind is a dehumidifier, and that's been keeping it nice and dry too. So that's working. Yeah, I keep all my stuff in my garage, and I run a dehumidifier in I, here, and, it, and it works really good. Good. I didn't get the sizing right uh, when I sent the measurements for the pier, uh, and it was my fault. I just I just had never designed a um a pier before obviously you know it's it's a first time for all of us to do this kind of thing isn't it and right, yeah. fortunately about halfway through uh the people at pier tech talked me into this adjustable height pier and and it's a lucky thing because uh, the height that it would have been is the is the lower position of of if you can see in the observatory view it's, it's down there at the base. So in other words, I, I would have had like a 30 degree image, 30 degrees altitude and up, you know, but they oh, talked wow. me into this adjustable height. And uh, by the time it elevators up, uh, it is exactly, exactly the right height at its very top elevation. So oh, that, <laughs> that really worked out well. And that's a, that's a RASA 11, right? It is. <clears throat> that's been highly fine-tuned <laughs> well i wouldn't say highly but i'd say probably um i know you put a good a bit of effort into the i, uh, I did put i did the put camera a, of, i did uh, squareness and stuff i forth. did put a couple of nights but i didn't i didn't get it finished unfortunately <laughs> it's still <laughs> it's still not uh, perfect but i'm close the images obviously was. look pretty good though <laughs> oh you're nice yeah i think i'm like down to like 30 percent uh still a 30% error in back focus and still a 23% error in tilt. So I've been saying to people, once it gets warm, I'm going to use that new workstation out there beside it. And I'm going to, I'm going to spend another few nights until I get it a little more perfect than it is. It's, it's been a lot of fun though, so far. But how fast can you blink? <laughs> well, that's, not i can't i can't tune it up that quickly that's for sure <laughs> uh, as, a, as, um, as i said it's an amazing setup that you got um well done to um, um oh. to people that um, um that helped you uh, design yes. it and uh, uh, install it yeah i i i gotta say the people at pure tech were really nice and they weren't uh, the people at PureTech were not, they didn't seem to be profit motivated. Uh, obviously, they want to sell things because that's how they live. But they also uh, told me the truth, you know, whether whether it was going to produce profit for them or not. Like, I asked them about crating. And they said, well, you could pack it up yourself. But boy, it's a hassle, you know, but they still, they still worked with me. And when I got there, they even helped helped pack it up. They shouldn't have because they told me in advance that they're busy working on things and they can't go out and help customers package up things, but yeah. they, they still were nice and did that. It was really kind of them. Oh, wow. Um, sounds a, a, um, a one-stop shop for everything. It, it, they were, they were very nice. Now tell me how, uh, you know, you always hear these warnings about not pointing your telescope at the sun. How, how, how close do you have to get before you go blind? 
I've not tried. Um, I don't think I want to. Um, I'd be more worried um, uh, with Verassa. Um, you haven't got an eyepiece, but um, what damage you would do to I the uh, camera sensor. I know. But the, the sun now is down in the trees. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's close enough since it's in the trees. What do you guys think? Go for it. Yeah, what, what? yeah as long as it doesn't form an image. Why don't I... Um, um, you you might just do a quick um, sort of thing. You might get some flare. Oh, it I depends. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it depends on how you've um, set your cables um, going across the um, um, the front screen. Oh, I'm not not so worried about that. You know, a flare to that that doesn't cause me a problem. Now, here's something at uh, this is at uh, 20 degrees, and the sun is uh, in the trees so surely it won't hurt to be at 20 degrees what do you think do you have a sense <laughs> go for it go for it go, go for, for it, it. okay um, yeah um, as long as you're um, not pointing it directly at with, with a disclaimer okay. yeah okay we're, with it, with with a disclaimer, um, that, okay, um, here we go. We, um, we we really told you not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you work for the government. <laughs> okay, so there it goes, and uh, now I should open up the sharp cap instance of the. Oh, I'm gonna God. start rolling my stuff out, Doug. So I'm gonna okay. get out a bit. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Is that um, a, a solid dew shield you've got on there, or it is, is it a, one of the flexible it ones? It is a solid dew shield. How did you know that, Robert? No, I'm just looking at it. Um, so I've got the flexible one um, uh -huh. with the with the heater yeah. um, strap combined. Yeah, that's what I had as well, and um, I got this when I got the 11. It really was my only option because I wanted to be able to shoot, um, uh, you know. Um, calibration frames. Yeah. It's like I kind of needed it to um, just rest something on top. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to set this at um, maybe 500 milliseconds and bring the gain down to zero so we can get this white image down because it's very white now. It's still very white. Oh, good. I was afraid I might have burned up my camera or something. <laughs> you guys had me scared. Yeah. Okay. So the good news is Okay, so that's at 20 degrees. I'm I'm feeling good about this. I think I'm gonna go down I head down to M74 now. Uh slew to M74. So we're going closer to the sun. Yeah, you can see that top left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nothing happened. We did. We didn't burn up. <laughs> All right. So now let's. Let's. Um, I guess decrease the exposure here, right? Is that what I have to do? Doug, are you sharing your screen? I think it's real blurry on my side. No, I didn't want to hog it if you guys were doing something. Who else is doing it? Is anybody else doing anything? Okay. I, I mean, I'm not. I don't want to speak okay. for anybody else. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll no. share it. But just tell me when you're ready to do something because I, I didn't want to. I'll just share the, um, let's see. What am I going to share? I guess I can just share this, this screen. Yeah, let's go to five milliseconds. 
So that's the location where one would think M74 would be. Let me make sure, um, have a look at our mount and make sure, I'm just gonna open up the panel and it is still tracking okay. So one would think that that would be the place where M74 would be. Now, obviously we don't have any um, stars yet. So that's a bummer, isn't it? Yeah, you'll need the stars for the uh, plate uh, solve. Mm -hmm. Although you've got a polar lemon, right? And did your sister it, remember the pointing should, angles? It should be. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. So you probably should be close uh, to begin with. <clears throat> how dark is it, uh, Doug? Yes, how what? How dark is it? It's not, it's not dark at all. As is evidenced by the fact that these are seven, seven millisecond pictures <laughs> at zero gain. But in the next 25 minutes. John, are you doing the same thing? I'll stop sharing for a minute so you can. Oh, well, I just set up a camera. I'm trying to Okay. remember how to. All right. How to do this here. All right. There's my sky, Doug. <clears throat> let me see. Let me see. Let me get back over there. It's about the same, huh, Brian? Yeah, looks good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. We're getting close, guys. Uh, now, at this point, uh, Brian T., I made a new column just because since our European brothers and our Australian and New Zealand brothers had done so well, I made a couple of new columns for us, but I could also make more columns. I mean, columns are cheap, but it, currently I just have an Eastern Standard Time and a Pacific Standard Time. But if you want to, we could put a column for each of us. <laughs> I'm probably the only Central Standard guy here, so I can't. Oh, I'm okay. Fine. Well, what about John? What, what time zone are you, John? Eastern? I'm on Pacific. Oh, that's right. So UT minus seven. Okay, so let's just do this. So I'm going to make a central standard time. Where are you at, John? I'm uh, near Mount Shasta in California. Oh, you're, you're, you're the Shasta guy. Hey. Yeah. So how are things looking down there? Um. I, in a, in a pinch, I scoped out an alternate site and it's not really good. I mean, when you look down in the Sacramento Valley, which is where I'd be looking across, it's really icky and I'd have all the lights. And I'm not hopeful. I'd have to go, let's just say I'd have to go somewhere where I should ask for permission. <laughs> um, so uh, my neighbor has given me permission and I, I have a shot depending on exactly where it is because I don't trust the apps exactly. Um, to see which tree it might be going in between. And so, and that's mainly for 74, 77 is a little better. Um, I, I feel confident that, that, you know, Andromeda and stuff I could probably get. Um, the only problem is I broke a cardinal rule yesterday when we tried to get the camera working. I'm going, okay, what spacers did I use on the shoot? You know, and so I, I, I kind of lost track of my spacing and I'm kind of looking at the spacers going, that doesn't look right. <laughs> huh. 
that's, so, kind of, you know, that's making, just unsettling, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, and, and I, and I, I, I don't have a metric set of calipers and I left my metric stainless steel, you know, ruler up here. And so I'm going, okay, uh, 25.4 millimeters per in. I was going, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we just had that discussion um, a few moments ago um, um, last year when Doug had all the um, yes. issues with focusing. Yeah, that was terrible. I mean, my, my concern is, is, is that I wouldn't even be able to get polar lined, you know, because I'm moving the yeah. thing around. Right. And if I was hoping with no polar alignment, because I don't have any time to do that, I probably would need to throw the hyperstar back on because uh, under that limited field of view mm. and those lighting conditions, trying to get uh, plate solving would be unrealistic. And so I'm going, come on, Doug, you know, or wh whoever else, uh, Robert, <laughs> whoever else can get M77 and M74. I mean, the uh, 29 and, and, and 52 and 39, I think are, are, are piece of cake. So I say, yeah. Looks like people have been uploading images. Oh yeah, Bob has been uh, killing it. No, I've just been going through and um, adding um, to uh, what you guys have already done. Uh, I'm, I'm just starting. I'm, I'm on M3 again, so um, I'm starting. Um, I'm working my way down the list. uh yeah i'm doing um, i'm doing um 180 second exposures now wow wow so you must be guiding yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's not particularly brilliant um 1.18 uh total but um it works for messy uh, uh, <laughs> yep <laughs> Um, if it's pointing straight up, generally, um, I it's a lot better. I'm under half uh, half a second. But I think my greatest issue is um, I um, I rushed to set up, and um, I perhaps I could balance um, a little bit better. John, if I recall, you said you didn't have a clear view to the west. I've got a clear view. I just got hills there. Hills, okay. They're about five degrees. Five. In fact, yeah, I, I'm trying to set up my OBS studio. I'm trying to remember how this thing works. It's like, well, with five, that's really not bad. No. I think I could. Uh... Get it if it's dark enough. I'm sorry, I was, I was talking on mute. That's my West. So got a lot of tree, maybe a little slot there, but not much. Uh, I got you. <laughs> Brian, um, based on last year's experience, um, Doug can lend you the uh, chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, maybe it was only a few low branches, or maybe not. Yeah, I, I, I prefer to stay married mm. to my current wife. I'll start cutting trees. I don't know if that'll <laughs> last. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. Well, too happy. As they say in this um, hobby, um, uh, they should put a government health warning, um, or sorry, a government wealth warning. <laughs> That's for sure. I wonder if I went to a brighter star over in that part of the sky, if we could at least check to make sure that I am aligned well, right? Sure. If you got a star, point to it. Yeah. Let's let's try something like. What, are um, you are you what kind of filter are you running, Doug? Are you running just the Celestron uh, light pollution filter for the Rasa Eleven? Are 
Be right back. Let's try this star. I think we got a little bit of good luck. I walked by my thermostat and um, it says 74. So go 74. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. Okay, let me see if I can get a star to show up here. Boy, nothing, nothing yet. Trying all kinds of different. You've even thrown in the um, wildlife sound effects. <laughs> yeah, I think that must be um, Brian T, I think. Yeah, I've got a, could you hear the owl? Yes. Yeah, there's a, a barred owl down in the woods down below me. Yeah. <clears throat> we have quite a few of them around here. I didn't think the mic would pick that up. <laughs> yeah, I did. It did. Boy, we're just right on the cusp of it now, guys. Just right on the cusp of it. They're, they're cutting up now. Oh, no, that was a... A dirty spot on my on my screen, I think. <laughs> I don't have anything yet here. Uh -huh. You're a little bit further east of me, though, I think, Doug. Maybe just a little, yeah, because if you're central time, I have to be just a little bit. Yeah. Man, can you imagine the old days, though? Uh, I, I just I was still trying to figure out how to focus about two hours in. Bob is a witness <laughs> <laughs> last year. That reminds me, I gotta get my bat mask <laughs> so I can focus mine. I don't have the fancy, fancy automatic stuff yet. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart. Um, but sometimes I think that um, the old fashioned ways, um, the tried and trusted ways, uh, produce better results. It's I just know. I'm lazy. <laughs> I used to eyeball it at one time um, when I was using a DSLR, um, uh, doing Milky Way things. Um, yay. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I used to sort of uh, zoom in on the back screen and try and sort of uh, focus um, um, just using my eyesight. And then I realised my eyesight was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just adding a few more images. I'm on M13 now. Nice. That's come out in a five second, um, you know, exposure after the um, go to. Um, it, it looks quite nice. So oh, free yeah. 180 second. Hopefully, it will show quite a lot of uh, detail. Robert, where are you located? Um, just south of London, UK. Oh, so it must be pretty, um, let's see, 1720, is it midnight? Um, midnight. Um, oh, no, um, um, we've just gone through our daylight saving times. We're 0111 now. Okay. Hey, Doug, so, if I can show my screen for a second, I can show you what the sky yeah. looks like here. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, let me... Uh... I, I'm not uh, showing it. I, I didn't want to hog the screen of a of a sunlit sundown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
Uh, and I got to find that. There's it. Oh, beautiful. You see it? Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't see it on mine. I, hmm. I'm still showing. So that's, that's what it looks like right now. As soon as the sun starts getting down a bit, I'll swing it around and show the Western uh, exposure. Yeah. Nice. Can I, I, do you want to see M13 yeah. just come out? Oh, always. Uh, does that come out? Hercules! Yes, it's beautiful. I think that's the very first Messier object I looked at when I was a, probably eight years old with my first TASCO telescope. Nice. And a planisphere. Nice. Always loved it ever since. Oh, it's two two for the price of one. In there's a NGC six two oh seven. Oh yeah, to the right. Uh, look, I think that's... Okay, um, I'll, I'll I'll stop sharing. If you can stop sharing now for me. I think that might be Rigel there in the middle, an out of focus Rigel. No, that was dust on my screen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's Rigel. No, that's dust again. I'm going to get that dust off. <laughs> oh, there's Rigel. Okay, so that's almost spot on. So let's go back to M74 again now. You want to stop sharing my screen again? Quite a bit closer to the sun. Wonder if we should go to M77 first because of the sun. So M77 is another spiral galaxy. And it is, according to an elongated glow with a much brighter central region. And in my, I have three observations of it. And I just said a faint glow of the arms, but not a ton of spiral structure. Not a lot there. Sadly.
Uh, Dark, I've got M39. Go for it. It's just uh, catching the roof um, oh, yeah. of our, of our um, neighbor's no, house. You, you've got it perfectly aligned in front of the roof, though. That's nice. I'm just uh, doing 180 second. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just leave it like that, <laughs> sort of enlarge yeah, it so you don't see right. the roof. That's right. So um, are you pleased uh, with your conducting, um, your orchestrating this all? <laughs> you're talking to me yeah i feel like it was again uh, just a team planning so we this event as we've been planning this for about three months and i feel like everybody pitched in so yes i'm pleased yeah i'm i'm, I'm always late to the party sorry oh, um no <coughs> I, I don't get to uh, cloudy nights as much as i used to well it's okay you know we i look for, i just see your emails and say yeah let's go for it Oh, that's that's really nice of you, Bob, for doing that. Well, I'm, I, I I figure you still owe me a pizza from last year. I think you're right with peanut butter on it, right? Yep, that's right. We had that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Tell me if you guys tell me if you guys think I should be doing something I'm not doing. I mean. It's, I'm not down in the trees yet. It's just that the sun is in that west, so it's just obliterating anything that. Should be a kind of a globular spiral without many arms. Based on what I've written before. I'm just constantly trying to change the link the exposure, hoping somehow to catch it. You got any stars, Doug? Not here. When I went to Rigel, I had Rigel right in the middle. Okay. That's a good was, sign. Yeah, I didn't even need to, I mean, I, I didn't even need to plate solve to recenter it. It was right smack in the middle. So so here, here's my question. Sometimes yep. stacking brings out things you don't necessarily see. Yes. So if you put it on, are you on in 77 or 74? 77. You put it on 77 and just maybe bump the gain up a little bit more than you normally would and start stacking. What is it? Have you tried that? No, but don't I need stars to stack? Uh, my point is, 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 what, what's your, are you doing live view right now? Yes. How long is your exposure? five milliseconds and right now i've got on a gain 300 and what's your histogram looking like um you mean the display histogram yeah, no 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 can you share uh yeah uh let's see bob are you are you done yeah yeah yep yeah. you uh, sure okay yeah 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 So coming up, don't see it yet. Uh, I can try to live stack, but I think you have to have. Well, yeah, to align. Well, you you, you to turn align, off alignment. You can you can turn it off, but that's yeah. that's not. Um, 
I mean, that's an optional feature that's usually. Look at this. It, All right. So in your upper right hand corner, it says top, next to auto. So undo your display uh, on the right hand side, display histogram stretch, put it back to reset that. Are you still seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay. Because it said Zoom had, uh, had messed up. So I don't huh. know how you're still seeing it. Okay. Yes. Still visible. So yeah, okay. reset that right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not doing anything when I okay. So if you go up next to auto up top, you see that little histogram on you know, to the right, almost all the way to the right, next to the eyeglass between auto. Oh, you mean that? Up, 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 up on the top toolbar. There? To the left and up, almost towards the center of your screen. Up, 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 and to the left. Right? Oh, too far. See where it says auto? Go to the right of that, that green yes. histogram. Yes. Click on that. Not not right there oh, on the histogram. That? Yep. Show the image histogram. Yep. Oh, okay. I see. So that that shows you what you're getting, which you know, okay. And so my thought, and you could probably go three milliseconds. Man, oh man. <laughs> um, yeah. Is it visually dark outside? I mean, as your screen's getting no, darker. No, the the sky is because uh, it's in the west. The sky is definitely a glowing red. Still civil twilight here. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it's getting you close. See that histogram that moves it over when you raise the exposure up. What's so that's that? what you're getting. That's what you're getting yeah. on each exposure. I see. And so, maybe you put it at five milliseconds and see if it'll see if it'll stack. I'm I am not save anything. There, but. There's ten milliseconds. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, hey, it doesn't hurt. So that's pretty. Maybe uh, auto stretch it and see. I think I think ten's too much. I was thinking five because that's going to blow things out. Yeah, I'd put it maybe to five milliseconds and see or something like that. It's still pretty, pretty light. Boy, that's that's not a bad um, color balance. Yeah, I, I'd still I'd put it down to five milliseconds, Doug. That's that's pushing way too far. I mean, it's not yeah. dire, but okay. You think it's too bright? It, it, it could be, or take the gain down a little bit. Take the uh, gain deck it, down it to says, 200 and see what it, it does. It says could not align. So you're right, saying- Right, well, I know. It doesn't find any stars. Unclick align frames. Well, no, I don't like, put, it, take, uh, put your gain to 200. Drop the gain down because you're getting a lot of noise in the game. I see. <laughs> then clear the stack. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got an alignment. Look at that. That's interesting. Uh, didn't get that one. I see. No, definitely not. Um, no. I think you need shorter exposures. I drop it down to five milliseconds. Really? Yeah, because it's still. And clear it and try it again. I mean, what do you got to lose, right? This is like it's not, not going to cost. Doesn't they don't charge you for exposure, right? Clear it. It's aligning on something, Doug. Well, I took a line frame off. Oh, you took it off. That's why. Sorry. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Missed that. That's right. Boy. I just don't think it's dark enough. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, five, 10 milliseconds, G, many. Yeah. I 
I mean, your best bet's to play with that histogram and see if you can get a histogram, not anything more than 50%. And, um, you know, keep on raising the exposure until it histogram. And you can see it. I mean, it may start aligning. You know, it, it's, it's amazing what it can pick out when you increase the exposure. As uh, we had witnesses, what it'll do through clouds sometimes. Right. That's true, huh? Just I'd leave so that guys, Instagram. I'd just leave so that you guys Instagram. know the uh, the lens cap is off, so I, <laughs> <laughs> now, I maybe could, leave. Yeah, maybe leave I that could, Instagram up, Doug. Really? Yeah, and it's yeah. interesting to see what it's doing. It gives you a better clue that. Uh, okay. See, that's lower, even at you. I know you lowered the gain to a hundred, but yeah. you know if you can get that up in the forty percent range uh, with a hundred gain, you know, um, you know, with a with a half second exposure yeah i would think it's gonna to start to find something i bet you were right on the cusp and we better be it's 8 28 yeah we're gonna fool around and miss it go to, go to two yeah 200 there you go, or 20 weren't you at 100 go to 200 milliseconds yeah i meant to do that i must have missed a zero that finger well, i actually left uh okay boy it seems like we should pick up something because they're about six medium stars including one star down here this is the first thing we'll see there should be a star down here that we'll see first I'd leave a lot, go, go um, hey Doug, go mm -hmm. into your alignment tab down below. Mm -hmm. And check um, optimize for faint stars. That, that may help and then clear it and see if uh, mm -hmm. uh, frame rate's too fast. That's interesting. Huh. Golly gee. Um, yeah, I'm assuming you're going to have a lot of noise just because you don't have much uh, exposure. Um, boy, this is this is off the this is this is off the reservation here quite a bit. It's not dark out there yet. <laughs> That's scary though. When is um, when are you projecting? Uh, M77 or M74 is lower. When are you projecting it's going to go down below the point you can reach it? Um, I don't. I don't think my trees are probably. Uh, they're probably about ten degrees. Let's see. It looks like it's at fourteen right now. Okay. Not much left. Yeah. I would say I'd leave the histogram up if you're not stacking, just to see if we can see what it's doing. That'll give us an idea of what the cameras. That's not bad. That's good. It'll go for me. What's happening on your end, Brian? I still don't have anything yet. <clears throat> still you looking for Polaris. You got to polar polar line, don't you? Yeah, I have to pull her line because I have to roll away when I'm done. <laughs> right, right, right. Someday. That's right. So I'm waiting on Polaris to pop up. Well, if you don't have Polaris, it's going to be way too low for me. If you don't have Polaris in the north star, north side of your sky, then you know you're not fighting the sun. It's no wonder I still don't have stars in the west side. Um. Other, other Brian, do you have Nina? Which Brian? The T? <laughs> well, Brian asking the other Brian. Brian, other Brian, Brian T. Well, <laughs> um, no, I do. I, I, I don't have it. No, not to where I could try to 
run yeah. it. Because the one thing I like about the Nina Polar alignment is it doesn't require it to be facing north at Polaris. You can just point it anywhere. Ah, okay. And that, that's one positive. I, I used that a little bit during the last um, Messier Marathon because it was cloudy up north. And so I just, I got it roughly polar aligned by pointing it down south. Yeah, I get pretty close. I, when I roll my uh, my uh, T card out here, I've got it marked off and I, I yeah. set it. And I'm usually, when I run sharp cap, I'm usually fair. And then I just tweak it a little bit, you know, so it doesn't take yeah. a minute. Nice. Uh, I've actually got, I'm using a, a Burrowback uh, Uni 18 and I've got the pointy. So what I've done is I, I've also drilled some holes on the, in the, the tarmac here, the asphalt. <laughs> and, uh, but if I really want to go right back to it, I can put those pointy feet in those holes. It is almost, it's usually better than good. Almost excellent. Um, so pretty repeatable. It's nice, but you still got to carry it. <laughs> yeah. Got, uh, a no I'm going to leave. I'll be back soon. Okay, Bob. Thanks for your work. No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm coming back. Okay. Well, it's certainly a lot darker than it was. We're at 400 milliseconds now. Try, try a half second. You can put it in LX mode. I think you're... Uh... Let's see. Yeah, hey. It's right at four. Yeah. See if, see if it finds anything. See if you can stack it. I mean, what the heck? Rats. Rats. Rats, yeah. Can you go to the alignment tab and just see when it does that? See if it's I see if it's finding any stars. Sure. It's so dark yet. Well, that's a lot of glow on your bottom left screen. That's interesting. <clears throat> none none yeah hmm. that's not good because you only have a couple more minutes huh right yeah it's sinking fast <clears throat> yep I don't have any stars yet now, now it's starting to look a little bit darker out there yeah, I can see Sirius now. That's it, though. That's the only thing I can see right now. But it's minutes away. Right. And then it just gets better from there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what mine looks like. <laughs> well, it's what I used to call when I was in the Air Force hurry up and wait. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All stand by to stand by. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I just remember going someplace in a big, big hurry, and you get there, and you just had to wait <laughs> every single time. <clears throat> There's Rigel, just spot on, right in the center. Nice.
So it's not a question of alignment. It's just a question of being able to dig out the stars. Man, there's M74. In my photorealistic trees, it shows it already in the trees. Yeah, I can see trees here. Mm -hmm. That's right, guys, it's now or never. Pointing at M74. Yeah, it's now or never. Man, that's two seconds. That's how bright it is there. I mean, two seconds. Uh, two seconds to blow it out. I usually image at, you know, no fewer than 10 seconds. And most stuff I'm imaging at 20 seconds. So that shows you how bright that sky still is. I'd say your best bet's probably a half second. Otherwise, you're just going to blow everything out. There's one second. That's a half second. In my planetarium software, I'm in the trees. So that shows that my, you know, the, the horizon I shot, I'm off by a couple of degrees, but that also shows how quickly we're going to be in the trees. Is that a star right between the branches and the trees, Doug? Oh, on the left hand is. side? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of my um, horizon and my view hide horizon. Yeah, I see that star. My binoculars. <laughs> That's uh, 101 PSC. Yeah, I remember seeing that, and that was pretty close to the same level as um, M74. I can't remember if M74 is to the left or right of that. Look at that thing drop. I, I, I'd personally put it to a half second and stack that sucker, or no more than a second. I think it'll get blown out with more. I mean, it's now or never. I just... Uh, Clear it and see what happens. Wow. Oh, wow. That's not good. Look at them trees. I think I'm going to be in the same ball, um, same same situation, Doug. Unless you're just up further north, it's just that's tough. Oh, oh, I see it. <laughs> now, if I can just image it. Boy, live stacking is not working very well. I don't think it's stacking those anyway. No, it's not, because it's trying to align. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have no stars to align. Right. Boy, I thought I saw it. I mean, you, you have pretty good guidance on this, or pretty good tracking. Boy, at the risk of sounding like I like the scope, it's great tracking. Um, I turn off, uh, turn off alignment and just stack it without it. See what it does. Okay. I mean... If you're not getting enough stars, uh, it's it's just just a handicap. Okay.
man. Look at the gradient on this thing. Wow. Not holding my breath, Doug. No. See that one star through the cloud, through the trees still. Right. But it, right. Oh, there are two more stars right in the middle. Okay, so it should be, that should be it right there. All right, let's go. Because that is, I see that star in my planetarium software. Man, so close. Now that star is showing, that star is showing. Yeah. It should be right here. I bet that's the I bet that's the core right there, but right there. Well, there you go, guys. What you got down there, Brian? Uh, I haven't got anything yet. I'm starting to wonder what's going on. Maybe my glitch is happening now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even there yet. So I'm really surprised. Visually see players, but I can't see anything on the screen. There we go. All right. Over line now. Oh, hey, Brian, that the Brian T that that still seems pretty bright sky. Actually, it's uh, just the camera. The gain on the camera is adjusting. Uh, I've got Polaris on my screen now, fixing to do the plate saw for it. Just got to get my mount flipped around. <clears throat> what kind of, um, uh, John Rogers, what kind of um, uh, setup do you have? Yeah, I've got a William Optics uh, Xenostar 80, 81. 81, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's around 15 years old. It's, but I've got the uh, 0.8 focal reducer flattener on it. So, Wow. So you're sitting probably mm -hmm. at um, around F4? Uh, uh, I think about 5.2. 
Let me. Oh, with the reducer, it's still that high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you exactly here in a second. Let me. I know the 60, I have one of the 61s. I know with the focal reducer, it puts it down to like 288, which is what, um, under F5, yeah, four points on, but I, the, 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 large, the 71 could be different, obviously. Yeah. Not bad, two minutes yeah. off. Good enough to plate solve, uh, Brian. Oh, yeah. oh, we got three Brian's on the call. Wow. <laughs> McClanahan. Yeah, just to keep it interesting. So, but before I jumped on, I, I took a shot at 74 and 77, and I was not able to get anything good. Good? Well, we're not looking for good. We're looking. I, I, I have something that might be 77, but I it's going to be hard to confirm it because it was in the trees and there was a cloud bank rolling in. Where are I can you put at, it on. Uh... I'm in Connecticut. Oh. So yeah, that was a while ago then, because you got a little time between there and Kentucky, right? Yeah, it was probably 30, 45 minutes ago when I was trying. So who's sharing right now? Is that Doug? Doug. Okay. Hey, I'm starting to see stars. Right. On the great, it's, it's great. a happy day, isn't it? Well, you know, every day is a happy day that you can think <laughs> of it being a happy day. Yeah. I, I'm just, I, I you know, I, my, my, Family and I, we went to Europe about five, six, seven, I can't remember a while ago. And we, oh, we should have, oh, we should have. I said, okay, let's make ourselves a promise. No, no more, we should have, could have. We just did, and that's it. Let's move on. And I just think, hmm, the dark side would have been interesting, but uh, that's fine. It's all good. And I want to go up to the uh, observatory because I, I think a lot of them aren't used to doing this, and I, I have been doing it. So I, I think it'd, it'd be, It'd be, it'd be fun to offer up some of my painfully learned experience, my joyfully learned experience, sorry. Tomorrow night, I may go up to Blue Canyon for a star party, we'll see. Okay, so some clarification on my setup, it's a William Optics, a Xenostar 82 ED. The native uh, focal ratio is f 6.8. Then with the uh, focal reducer flattener, it gets down to f 5.6 with oh, okay. a five millimeter back focus. Yeah, back focus. That is so crazy that it's that short of a back focus. How are you? I, yeah, I just, I don't know how you're supposed to put any type of camera with it's a five millimeter back, five millimeter back focus from the reducer. Five millimeter? No, you said five millimeter, right? No, no, 50, 55 millimeter. 55. Okay, that makes more sense. That's pretty standard. Okay, I thought you said no. five. I was like, whoa. No, no. That... Yeah, 55 is pretty normal. Yeah. And I've for, reducer, nice... it's, for a reducer, it's pretty short, but yeah. And I've got a Nikon D600. So you pretty uh, much okay. just go with one of their adapters for the Nikon because Williams Optic has one of their own adapters yep. that screws onto the back of the flattener reducer and exactly. it gets you the proper yeah. back focus right there because that'll give 10 millimeters to your 45 on your DLSR, DSLR. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, but but I lucked out. It's uh, I can only achieve focus with it racked all the way in. I mean, it's I just barely made it. Wow. Like I say, it's an older one of their earlier uh, the V1s. telescopes. Yeah. yeah. But it's convenient because when I'm setting up, all I got to do is rack it all the way in. And I'm at perfect focus. <laughs> it's indexed for you. There you go. Yeah. As long as the uh, temperature doesn't affect it. And as far as I can tell, it hasn't, hasn't yet. But I've only been using it for a couple of months in the winter. So we'll see what the summer brings. I, I seriously thought about, I don't have a reducer. I just have the flattener. I, I seriously thought about just throwing the camera on that thing because it's a lot more portable. Yeah. I, just, no, I my, haven't used it yet. Yeah, my setup's uh, pretty nice. I mean, let me go grab it real quick. I'll set it up. And... Yeah, it's a nice setup. Yeah. 
who's who's next up for a shot at M74? It'd be um, Brian T, right? Yeah, I got to I'm still working away here, getting set up. <clears throat> so this is the, the setup right here. And it's just on a dovetail that comes off, and I just put it on. Yep. And it's balanced. It's got the uh, guide camera mounted already with the camera, and the, here, here's a Nikon down here. So everything's uh, you know quick setup. I can literally flap it on and be imaging you know in a few minutes. Yeah, very nice. So the guide camera, a guide uh, scope looks familiar. Yeah, it's one of the uh, SV Bonnie. So uh, it, it works pretty good. As a matter of fact, if I can share my screen again, I can show you the uh, picture of the Andromeda galaxy I got with it. It's all yours. Okay. Yeah. Are you seeing it? Nice. So the combination of the shorter focal length and the um, the sensor size on your um, Canon really, really yeah. gives you a yeah. Nikon, it's a it's a full frame full sensor. sensor. Yeah, full frame. Yeah, wow. Can you guys see the image of Andromeda? Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Okay. Yeah, because I'm mine. Nice. I'm just showing uh, my camera. That's weird. So, I think. So John, what do you what do you um, like? I, I'm I'm not confident that I can get 74 or 77, even at my the the, the illegal site. I'll call it an illegal site because that's what it is that I scoped out. It, it's possibly doable. Maybe it's 50-50 at at home. I, I give it maybe a 25 percent chance if I had to if I had to you know bet, which I'm not a betting person. Well. Um, what do you think on yours based on your earlier answer? today it was looking good but uh am i still sharing the screen so if you yeah. look at you know it's looking right now well let me bring the somebody's guiding's going by by <laughs> no that's a another app i've got running that monitors the nearest object uh, confirmation page whenever a new object shows up on it it, it lets me know okay got it uh, um, okay, so that's the uh, my yeah. western horizon right now. So I've got clouds out there, and the program that I use, Astrospheric is forecasting clouds until, or partial clouds until about 11 midnight for me. And then it, I got about a three or four hour window. And then uh, yeah, the clouds start coming yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna poke, I'm gonna poke my head out my front doors here, it looks like. It looks okay, I'm back, back, but I'll be right back. So. Oh, that's like salt in the wounds. I, I was uh, looking at those clouds that John was showing, and those clouds are north northwest of me, mostly north. And um, yeah, and that's the, that's the direction that I need to point my telescope at. They've been clearing up, even for high cirrus clouds, they've been clearing up after after dark, or at least you can't see them <laughs> as well because they're pretty thin. Um, yeah. 
You know, so if they it say is what it is. I might might be able to punch through them a little bit to get something, but uh, we'll we'll see. That's all we can yep. say at this point. Oh, I was off 1.75 degrees here. Let's just hope in the new spot, it'll show up fast. You're saying on the, oh, the plate solving and uh, resync, it showed at 1.75 uh -huh. degrees? Yeah. Well, that's enough to put you completely, complete, uh, put 74 or 77 completely out of your field of view. At least, at least off quite a bit. It's a yeah. pretty wide. I mean, depending on where it was at, yeah. Stop. But if it was center, that would be off. I mean, I would, right off the side. Huh. Well, maybe. I don't know what you're, you're running a 6,200, Doug, or 26? 26. 2,600. Yeah, well, that okay. gives you a wider field of view than, than my 533. I don't know. That's. Uh... Well, do you think the trees are interfering with the, the plate solve? No, the plate solve worked. It solved. Okay. But it's not the deep sky image annotation is not showing M seventy seven. All right, well. Note to self, next time you play with sharp cap, remember to take it out of simulation mode for the mount and put it back on the mount. <laughs> Makes a big difference, I'm thinking. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. All right, let's try this again. I was like, why well, won't it play solve? It's because it doesn't know who's it talking to, I think. Let's try it now. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it's just a double check, make sure I didn't mess up the plate solve setting too. Plate solving. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, okay, boom, it did it. Okay, all right, that's one. Let's do a couple more just to get lined up. Still showing 1073. What is 1073? Oh, that's bad news. It's it's higher.
Well, guys, it's not looking good, is it? Well, I'm still cautiously hopeful here. Okay. I don't know why it's fine in 1073 when That's not right. See that thing right there? Take a look at that thing right there. You're not sharing your screen. Um, oh, am I not? No. Let's see what I have to do to share my screen. Let's see. Look right there in the middle. Oh. Look right there in the middle. Can't see that. Did Zoom restart? Or did I just blink? I don't know what it did. It's weird. Anyway, see that little shape right there? It looks exactly like my planetarium software. Huh. I bet that's it right there. And what are you, you looking for? 74? Uh, 77. Oh, 77. Yeah, it looks like you're viewing it through a bright aurora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, tree branches, but I can still see nebulosity around it. And if you look at a picture, go look at a picture of M77. That, that's the same smudge that I had in mind, but yours looks even a little bit better. Because <laughs> I had that same little trio of stars right next to it, above yours, too. Is that right? Well, in, in my frame, that's where M77 should be. right smack in the middle, right there. But when I do a deep sky image annotation, it it's like drunk, it won't find it. 
Um, try taking the PNG or whatever you've saved this as yeah. and upload it to. I'll do that. And, and do see that. what it does. Because sometimes it seems to work much yeah. better. I'll do that. Uh, it's still live stacking, okay? Believe it or not. Oh, Jeff Horn's setting up. I'm going to say, can you plan for a low Western horizon? He's texted me. M74 and M77. Jeff Horn out in Billings, Montana. <clears throat> Now we're going to lose it. But if that shows up in astrom astrometry. <laughs> astrometry. Astrometry. Dot, yeah. Yeah. Because that, I can see nebulosity around that. I'm not making that up. No, it, it's definitely. Yeah, I think that's favorable. Yeah. I, I would just say that, you know, if you can't readily identify the shape you know just like in your face obviously that's the right one that getting yeah. uh, a, 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 a a blind plate solve on it on all the stars that are showing up is 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 a good thing to do jeff says unlikely from his latitude bummer wow it's still stacking faithfully with with See the fact that it's aligning the stars. Yeah. Um, you're on 25 second. Um, and can you right. go to the alignment? Can you go to the alignment tab? Yeah. And then have it display the far right checkbox. Have it display detected um, highlight detected stars. I'm just curious what it's picking out. And probably remove part of the zoom. Got a frame coming up. Look at that. I, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to guarantee you'll plate solve, but that's that's a good sign. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Now, is that representing just star detections, or is that actually comparing it to a catalog? That's detection. That's just detection. It's using okay. that for alignment. But at least it can find the stars. I mean, because it'll yeah. use those same stars. Sure. Extensively different algorithm, but for the for the for the plate solving. Poor. Yeah, I think it's set where a sharp cap wants ten stars, and so that may not be enough for plate solving. Um, you know, I, I, I yeah. And so M seventy four is that already too far set for you? Yes, M74 disappeared. Yeah. So Doug, I'd save a I'd be saving copies of these PNGs yeah, before it I, goes behind and I did. <laughs> and then because it starts stacking. Yeah. Uh, it's getting ignore frames now. It sure is. Okay. So we're gonna call it, right? <laughs> well, I'm a little more confident about M77, but I think we lost uh, M74. Yeah. Yeah. M thirty four is history.
Well, that's disappointing about M74. I so wanted to get it. Yeah, I'm, that, that's... Hmm. Yeah, I hear you, Doug. I hear you. Hey Doug. Yes. Um, you want if you want to email me that um, the the PNG, I'll try and upload it. Okay. You mean to to uh, astrometry? Oh, to ask. Okay, I will do.
I think I got a file that's good enough, Doug, from there. Just downloaded it. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. We'll see. So you downloaded it from Notion? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I didn't even think about it being, um, you know, that big of a file when you do download, but it is. Okay. Okay. I didn't even know you uploaded it, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did that first. It's uh, it's crunching it. Good. It says. It's amazing the way it can uh, keep on plate solving, even though there are all those trees in the way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a good night. Uh, we got Andromeda at least. Remember how I said I took apart my camera uh, optical train and I couldn't remember? Yeah. Nice having a picture of it. <laughs> Good. By the way, if anybody ever has any questions about the uh, Buckeye Stargazer, oh, those yeah, are some... dovetail mounts that are made for the ASI um, Air Plus that I'm hooking to the bottom of my rings for my guide scope and put it right to the Vixen mount. They are 100% 3D printed. There's no metal on them whatsoever, yeah. including all the, the screws and everything. He's a, he's a really nice guy. I've, yeah. I've got some stuff from him. Joel, I think, yeah. I can't I can't say enough yeah you know. very well yeah. very well uh made. yeah I think I got some of his focusing masks they work really well yeah I've got a, he made a he made made one for me for my 12 inch dog it works really good I've been laser cutting my own they work pretty well I just I figure I got a laser cutter that I built might as well use it shipping nowadays he does I think his shipping prices are included I wonder how long that's gonna last Oh, that looks good, Doug. You know, we didn't have this yet. It's not really a good image, but there's it definitely looks like the yeah, a success there. Yeah.
just annotation on something? Yeah, that's uh, M31. Nice. M31, 32, and 110? I mean, you would have to assume that M32 is there, but. Oh, I, I see it. Not... Because it says M74 oh, down on the yeah, lower look, left. Look, look, there's M32 right there. M30, really? Yeah, M32 is plate solved there, and M110 is plate solved here. It's because uh, it's a Rasa 11 with a 2600. Oh, I forgot yours was a Rasa 11. I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> why, why does it say M74 spiral galaxy down at the lower left? I this thought says, this oh. says M, M32, and that says M31, and this says M110. That's Doug for whatever reason. That's, he, 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 yeah, did you change your name, Doug? What do you mean? When, on your screen, it's showing up in the bottom left where everybody else's screen. Well, no, it's like it's behind your name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On your share, yeah, on your screen, it says M71 Spiral Galaxy. I don't know. Oh, M74. I bet that's, that's that's just my title that I do. Uh, um, right. Okay. Hey, Randy. Hey, guys. How you doing? <laughs> we're, we're doing. We're, uh, we're, yeah, we're doing. all trying to figure that out. How to get M74. And if uh, Randy got he's in, uh, he got N seventy seven potentially, I'm doing a online oh, sure. blind plate solve to see if it if the the algorithm concurs. And we're looking for quantity, not quality. <laughs> well, a, a certain minimal quality. Yes. Good. So Doug, did Doug get going? Should yes. be dark there now. Yes. Is, are you the one that got 77? I I believe I did. Good for you. So Randy, I'm I'm doing a um, astrometry.net plate solve, blind plate solve on it just to see what it thinks. Okay. Because it's not a we're not gonna publish the picture, right, Doug? <laughs> we're not gonna publish the picture ever. <laughs> I think it I think it has more trees than uh, stars. I yeah. think so too. Interesting trees. I've never had, even though I've been off target on one I did a couple like a week ago on, on my uh, F6.3 reduced um, uh, eight inch SCT, I've never had astrometry.net fail the plate solve. I've been off, but I've never had it fail. So it's still chugging away at this. Well, it sure seemed like I could see that blob right in the middle. Oh, guys, this is fun.
This is fun, but I would have loved to have gotten in 74 for us. I feel like I let the team down. Oh, it's fine, Doug. I mean, we, I, I, <laughs> if somebody gets it, the team gets it. And that's if right. Nobody can get it. It's just, it's just a hard target. Like I'm 30 last time. That's right. And there are things on this that are beyond our control. Right. If it was just set a little later, farther behind the sun, you know. Yeah, exactly. Does it save uh, the deep sky image annotation? I don't, I've never, on, on um, Shark Tap, I've never been able to do that. Uh, okay. You can, so, uh, the, the little, the little pop-up box has a button to save it when it's annotating. I bet that's what I need to. There's M52. Yeah, if anybody figures out how to do that, I'd like to know. Yeah, if you pull up the annotation box and uh -huh. again saw when you pull up the annotation box, there's a little dialog box that pops up. Right on the yeah on the, on save, the, little, the look. save image save, with annotation. Save image with annotation. Okay, I'll have to look at that. You know, hey, if all else fails, read the instructions. Right, that's another mm -hmm. military uh, idiom. RTFM. <laughs> I won't. I won't elaborate. <laughs> Yeah, those tech orders, I thought those were knee pads. That's not much of a push button though. What is that? It, it didn't change colors or anything. You got the little green bar up at the top. Oh, okay. But the save image with annotations didn't change colors. All right. Yeah, it's not the most obvious when it happens. Got it. This is another open cluster. You know, you know, Doug, I'm looking at your M77 picture. Yes. And there are quite a few stars in there. If you, uh, if you really look at the faint ones that it should be able to identify. Uh -huh. and I want to qualify, I want to uh, uh, compliment you. There's very few hot pixels in this thing. Are you using uh, uh, a um, dark? Fl flats, flats and darks. Okay, well, there's a few on there, not bad. This thing is still saying waiting for process to start. I don't know if they're That's, busy right now because people I are... I guess maybe they, they had to call in the tree department. We need a, spe we need a special astro arborist. <laughs> That's right. Does, uh, do the trees bend to the light to some degree? <laughs> is, there, is there a lensing effect from the trees? Oh, I bet that's true, Rob. The fact I can see some like right where the main main part of the tree should be is uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's true. Christmas lights. Oh, oh, okay. Process. It's uh, started. Oh, please be M seventy seven. Field two hundred and sixty four stars. Oh wow! Like I said, you can see a lot of stars in there. Surely with that many, if it's over a hundred, it should solve, right? 
I bet it'll find it. Yeah, I've never had it fail. You know, if I can see stars, I've, I've. Yeah, it it failed on mine, but I only have about five decent stars. Go to results page. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Want me to share it? Only if it's good news. Oh. Uh, oh, where, where is that at? Um, That doesn't sound like good news. Everybody see that? Yep. No. Yep. 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 You got it. What? Bingo. Yep. Center of mass. Right in the middle. You're kidding me. No, nope, you got it. It's right where you said it was. Uh, Wow. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I doubted you, man. No. <laughs> let me show you our group database. They've been doing this since starting in New Zealand and on New Zealand. So, you, you um, want me to. Don't go let me go. Wow. Yeah, if you could upload that in the same, um, just just upload that one also. I, I'm just trying to see if how I get the picture of this download. Let's just. Uh, oh, you could just I'm gonna try save image you as. Could, you could try that. Yeah, I was gonna say you could screenshot uh, it. So anyway, there's a guy right now. They they bought the image in '77, uh, and uh, this is the picture. Uh, so this is that must be the observatory sounds like it yeah yeah i i just i just uploaded mine to the notion sheet as well i i'm pretty sure it's the same thing but i couldn't get it solved Oh, I can actually demonstrate the problem okay. without even going through the telescope. Yeah. So, Doug, yes. I uploaded that. It's now up there. So it's your image with the annotations, and I, I, I titled it M77. Um, Doug, uh, uh, astrometry.net plate solve. Thanks for doing that, Brian. Oh, I, I, you know, I just I did that on some of mine that were questionable because I had such yeah. a small uh, field of view. Yeah. It, it's just worth doing. And it's, sure. it's very educational. It is. Yeah. It's it's also encouraging. Because <laughs> yeah. it was, it was, you know, a blob. But on the other hand, it was a blob among the treetops. <laughs> uh, is this something you're really at work in the morning with the training? Because it's constantly, I mean, I did this. Many times before someone told me, and Charlie Coburn had told me over the phone what the problem was. Yeah. That didn't really work that well. <laughs> he was right, but I didn't understand what he was talking about. This you can understand. I can um uh, I can mute that. Hey Randy, I know where you're at. <laughs> is he is he um talking to us or just left the mic on? 
he left the mic on. He's talking to people in the observatory. He's at the observatory. I'm like, yeah. I, I recognize that that that, that twelve inch daub and then that uh, big refractor in the background on the um, Los Mandy Mount. Right. Well, woohoo! That's a hey. It's a it's a it's a success. We'll take the success, Doug. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like we said before. It's not the most beautiful, but. Wow, I hate that I missed 74. I just let everybody down. <laughs> hey, Doug, can I share my screen real quick? Sure, I don't think I'm, there. I'm not sharing. Go ahead. So that's uh, the way it's looking for me right now. Your sky, Still, you mean? Uh, hour and a half away, I think, for be dark enough but oh really yeah but you can see the, the clouds are are there on the western horizon so i'll just kind of keep an eye on it great well watch those clouds man we yeah. don't want those to come yeah see doug i'm going through the I, I'm do if I if I go and try and do this, do I use my light pollution filter or I just stick with the, the the IR UV cut filter, which will let through some more light, but it'll also let through garbage. Are you do gonna I, go to are you gonna go to your place where you can see the valley? I I, I I do not you know what on such short notice dragging it out there, setting yeah. it up on on what it what effectively is there's a they, they've been parking temporary parking for some construction equipment for a subdivision. Yeah. And I'm kind of, you know, and I, I think my gut tells me, eh, you know, it'd probably be okay, but um, you know, drag it out there. It's a site that I've never been at. I don't have permission. Um, I, I'm thinking I may just, I'm going to have the same dilemma you're going to have. And that is I'm, I may end up shooting through trees. Yeah. Um, the biggest debate I have is, is I, I'm not aligned. And yeah. so I, I, I just think if I can't get aligned very quickly and or get, get over near it and do a plate solve, I'm, uh, it, it's, it's useless. Right. Um, I can get plate solving quicker if I, if I slap the Hyperstar back on there. Um, but, you know, trying to pick out the, the, the proverbial, you know, needle in a haystack because, you know, like, like I mean, you're yeah. just, Yours is yours is aligned and on a pier. Yes. And so um, you know, spot on. You know, it, it was dead center on there. It was. So, By God's grace, it was, but yeah. I'm just I, I guess if nobody else has a chance to get it, or you know, not trying to put all the pressure on John up there or anything, or, but uh, or Brian or Brian. You know. Yeah, you're all, you're our only hope. You're the last person. <laughs> I just don't think my chances are very good to be able to get it. I really okay. don't. Okay. That's why I was thinking about going up to the Mendocino Forest area out there um, and um, snap, you know, at the dark side. Right. For all the crazy people that's out between yes willows and oh it's it's near a place called alder springs mm -hmm. um, yeah don't don't put yourself at risk man Because if I go out to the observatory, it's uh, it's uh, I will not be getting that at the observatory. Got it. The if you look at the walls and the and, and Randy's picture there, the telescopes on the pier come up about as high as that daub does compared to the walls. So you just oh, can't get that low on the horizon. Right. I know, and it makes me kind of go, why'd they do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the way I would have miscalculated, except at the last minute, uh, you know, PeerTech talked me into this height adjustable pier. And at, at the top 
of the height of the height adjustability, it's perfect to get the horizon. It's just perfect. And it's only because they talked me into this height adjustable one. Right. And, and boy, that has to be pretty, um, pretty sturdy, I'm sure. But I know some people have told me that I, I've seen a local guy who has a, a sliding roof observatory mm -hmm. and he doesn't want his telescope in the normal upright position to um, have the roof hit it. He doesn't want to right. have it parked to the side. Right. And, you know, on yours, if something goes wrong, theoretically, the roof can close and hit the thing, you know, no. theoretically. No, he can't right now. I don't, I'm not going to automate it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, his automate. isn't automated either, but yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't even have a motor on it yet. I've, I've, I've ordered a motor, but when it comes, I'm going to have to jury rig the mount for it. And when I do, I'm just going to make push button on, push button off kind of thing. Like a, an elbow. Well, you have like to a, hold it. Yep. Okay. So right now I'm still pushing it open with a two before. Okay. So see McClanahan, Brian McClanahan's in Connecticut. John's up in north of by Shasta. You're gonna have that now. The positive you're gonna have, John, is that you're a couple hundred miles further north. And so it's gonna be a little higher on your horizon. I don't know how much, but a little bit be, higher. That would be great. What's your and what's your wasn't, latitude? Wasn't, 39 uh, something. 42. 42. So I'm 38. 38 and change. Wasn't Mike Jerry setting up so he could view those two? He, he was. May, may God help him. <laughs> may, uh, may your telescope penetrate whatever clouds are there, John. Yeah. Don't discount the ability of the telescope to do that doing the EAA. Oh, I know. Just from general observing, I'm surprised yeah. at what it cut through. I had a club member out the other uh, last last weekend or weekend before. I can't remember. And I was helping him set up his Super 8 and make sure it was collimated and gave him a, a, a normal batten off and a, and a try batten off mask so they can go ahead and play with it. And he was like, it's not collimated. It's not collimated. We put it together and I go, donut looks good. Let's do a try mask on it. And I go, you know, it's off a little bit, but frankly, my hyperstar is off more. Um, you know, play with it, get it set up for visual observation, because I've never tried to do polar alignment and he has a wedge. And I'm like, dude, you know, pardon me, get it working where you can get it and work with a low power eyepiece and where you can keep a star center field, you know, where your alignment's good and then run a higher, you know, a shorter focal length eyepiece, keep it where the object can stay center of focus and then worry about the camera. Um, uh, you know, because he has a, a, a digital SLR and so you don't get live view, you have to snap off pictures. And I said, you know, you're going to, you're going to be better off getting used to the mechanics of getting that thing set up in a line and, and then switch over to your, your digital SLR. And I said, you know, if you get a dedicated astro camera, it's, it's a huge, huge, big deal improvement. I mean, it's, it's. Digital SLRs are great, great field of view. You can do that stuff, but to try to do your initial stuff on a on a, a wedge on a Super Eight, unreduced, unreduced. Yeah. So he's, you know, wow, an F10. That's just that's a, that's I don't know anybody. I'd I'd love to hear other people's opinion. That's a big ask for for EAA. For yeah, it is. That up. I, no. I I I would struggle. I remember fifty years ago, go out shoot your images and. Come back home, develop the film, you know, spend hours in the dark room, develop the film, and then find out you weren't at focus. You know? <laughs> yeah. And the process of switching out the eyepiece and putting the camera in. And I guess yeah. that's why those beta flips, you know, come in handy. Yeah. You know, because at least you're not removing the camera and putting stuff back in. But boy, yeah. but back what do you mark them with? Couldn't afford with anything tape? like that. Oh, it's night and day. It, it's yeah, yeah. Not one day do I regret not getting. I, 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 I not one day do I regret getting that uh, the SA five thirty three. I mean, it's a it's a great, you know, EAA camera. They're not working on the mount at the observatory. That either means they gave up or they have it, they have it fixed. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, is Randy on? Randy Hodges? He's on in the center. He's talking to somebody in the background. He's I see. See how he's annotated line number 11 under the name? Uh, which one? What now? On um, See how under the name of line on the spreadsheet? 11, yeah, on line 11 M45, he's like annotated it under the name. So we probably will want to ask him to if he wants to put things, put it under the comments, but He's put his row exposure. eleven, meaning M forty five. Yes, he's put his exposure oh. right. So oh, I see. He put it under the name. Yeah, name. it's not a big deal, but if he did that in the whole sheet, it would stick out. Yeah. yeah. My three thirty. Huh. He was practicing. I bet. Interesting. Yeah. Did we decide when I, if I, you know, assuming everything's going to work out okay and I go up to the observatory, was there an agreement uh, or an understanding? I know the conversation came up and pardon me for not remembering whether we're just going to use the observatory name or, or put our individual names I, on the files. I think uh, it was Randy who, who asked, can yeah. we just do OBS something, something OBS? Um, Plaque OBS, which is Placerville yes. Observatory. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't care. But we'll know that it's you guys, you know. The only thing that will, yeah, see, I don't know if we still want the name on the actual file, though. That's what I'm talking about. The observer, that's fine. The EAR, uh -huh. Yeah. Because uh, we're, we're theoretically going to be at the same objects. Yes. If I if I'm on one and he's on the other, yes. Thoughts. Um, I think it's up to you guys because, um, I mean, you stand a chance if you could if you could get M seventy four, you could improve on your last time. How many did you have? One hundred three. One hundred four. One hundred four. That's so good. I don't I don't think I'm gonna do better than last time, even up there. I see. And it's, it's, um, even if I was here, I don't know that I would uh, do better. Here, I'm going to mute for a second. Gentlemen, it's meal time for me. I'm going to step away okay. for a bit. Uh, anybody, good. you guys staying here for a while? I'm staying. I'm just going to mute and turn the video off, but I'm going to stay connected. All right. So what's the latest, Brian McClanahan? Well, I've gotten clouded out at the moment, so. Oh no, is that right? Well, I mean, the clouds have been in and out. I mean, it, it was raining an hour before I set up the telescope. No so, way. So they kind of cleared for a little bit and then it's cloudy again. It's supposed to clear up again in another hour or so. I had no idea, man.
Yeah. If it hadn't been for the rain, I would have had a chance to set up a little earlier and could have had a better shot at 74 and yes. 77. Mm -hmm. Jeff, are you on? Looks like his his Zoom is activated, doesn't it? Has he said anything yet? Jeff Horn? You guys haven't heard from him, have you? No, he's muted. Yeah. Well, that's M79. Next is M42, and we should be able to get 43 at the same time, shouldn't we? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen real quick to show you guys the go for it present horizon. Unfortunately, the clouds are coming from the west, so oh, rats. Although, according to atmosphere, you know, there's going to be some breaks in it, so let's go. Going to attempt it, but just want to kind of manage uh, expectations for you. Right. <laughs> well, we're glad you're attempting it. You know, uh, I don't work for Celestron, but if I did, I would sure want to do commercials for Rasta 11. Just, it's just an amazing telescope. Of course, this is an amazing nebula anyway, isn't it? 
42 and 43. Just look at that after 80 seconds. Beautiful. Just, I mean. Yeah, you can see the running, man. Yeah, this, this telescope is just, it's just a Messier Marathon beast. You know, it just, that's 80 seconds. It's crazy, but that's an amazing nebula. Well, the Orion Nebula is always a crowd pleaser, that's for sure. It sure is. I'm going to step away from it. I'm going to go set okay. my uh, OTA up. Sounds good. Good luck. Let's see um, this takes us past M42 and M43 and takes us to M78. And M78 is a um, dark nebula. Triangulum, huh? Yeah. Um, okay, so here's what I need to find out. What are the options? What's left of the options? Because uh, M74 is the is the linchpin here, correct? Uh, so far, it is. I mean, it okay. looks like everything else is doable, right? So my chances, I, I probably put my chances at under 25%, under. It all depends on you know, many series of events. I've got to get my telescope moved over to the neighbor's driveway where I have a little better angle. I still need to be able to get, um, preferably because it's quicker, I think, I need to be able to get uh, polar aligned uh, using sharp cap and um, at least get it close, get a single star alignment is my best thing is, you know, maybe multi-star because heck with it. I, I'm probably not going to be able to get uh, M74 very early. It needs to, it's like going to be at the last minute. It's that, it's that edge between it's too far down and it's not dark enough. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to find out, maybe figure out from uh, the gang here. Um, does anybody, I know John is cloudy. Um, I need to look outside again and see how cloudy, who else has a shot at it? I mean, who has remotely a shot? Mike Jerry just popped on. Let's ask Mike. Yeah. He, he would be our salvation. I missed M74, Mike. I got 77, but I missed M74. Uh, yep. I It's all looking great here. I have a completely clear, completely calm, warm night. So, so far, good so horizon. good. I mean, you're pretty far. You're down Death Valley, right? Yeah. I have a so horizon you're... down to about three degrees, four degrees. Oh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You're, you're like probably have a 10 times more likely to get it than I do. Did you drive your camper to someplace special, Mike? Uh, no, this I'm in my driveway. This oh, is I my uh, my lot mate's uh, RV sitting behind me. Oh, I, I see. I thought it was an episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> it could be. We'll see if I get M74 or not. Okay. Um, so that sounds promising because you know again i got city light from sacramento <clears throat> i got clouds in that direction i got trees i got to move in my neighbor's yard and juggle polar alignment and, and star alignment with all of those in the above um and then i mentioned clouds so okay <laughs> um and then i got it set up i'm not trying to i'm just kind of going for being pragmatic here and then tear back down and go down to the observatory because i yeah i promised them i i've texted randy to see if they fixed the mount or yeah. got it working uh um, did they i haven't heard back i just texted him two okay. minutes ago because gotcha. he's not there gotcha. um that um is there anybody else besides john and mike who has a chance no okay no one else and and I, I'm I'm I, I like to think I'm good at juggling stuff, but I, I really don't like that quick setup and yeah. 
So it looks like you got about three pictures here, Doug. Uh, yeah, I I went. I realized that a lot of these were were very low. There's Astro Nate. He's saying M74 is too low for me now to shoot. Um, I I realize a lot of them were low on the horizon, so I I pressed through to capture them, but I haven't uploaded them yet. Well, I'm seeing three pictures from you here, or three three pictures from somebody. Uh, you know, I did the first three maybe, but look, look at the check mark that's in the column labeled EST. Can you see that? Yep. That's my column. Oh, Mike, take a look at the third picture. Okay. Let me... uh, what I did is I grabbed his, downloaded it, ran it into astrometry.net and entered right. it. Right. The, the third picture in M77, you mean? That's kind of our, pre yes, for three, yeah. for M77. I thought that's what he was looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the annotated one. I could see that it was, uh, you know, a glob, but, you know, you would hate to be the docent of the observatory showing them that picture to try to hook them on astronomy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So my inclination is to not try to set up and let John, especially Mike, who has a much better chance of doing this. Anybody want to say, no, Brian, you need to do it and you know, no, I, th I think you're right. If Mike's got a three degree horizon toward the West and if it's a clear night, then he is yeah. going to get this. I'm like 10 at best. If I, if depending on where it comes to the trees between 10 and 14, which is like the sun's still up. Yeah, it should. I should, you know, I should, uh, all, it should work out, but you know, what is Doug, Doug's motto? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, guys. What I'm going to do then is, and, and Mike, your, your ETA on that's probably the same as mine. It's probably between 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Eight wow. So, yeah. So I'm, it's going to be at least half an hour before it's going to be dark enough to do much of anything from Stellarium's point of view. It looks like about 845 to 850, uh, excuse me, 745 to 750, which is 1045 wow. to 1050 Eastern. Uh, will be about the perfect time. Yeah, you're further further east than I am, aren't you? By enough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's cool. All right. Um, I'm gonna bop out for a little bit and then try to come back up. I'm gonna decide when I'm gonna head up to the um, observatory. Bop, I'd like bop, to bop out. Okay, but I want to, I want to, I may come back on my phone. I may, depends on what's going to go on here. I'll let you guys, I'm going to leave it muted. Okay. Yep. Dash. Do so we Doug, call? you're, are oh, you ahead. shooting stuff? Are you shooting I am. stuff right now? I'm just, I'm just trying to go through the whole list. Oh, really? You're going to do the whole list, I'm huh? just trying to go through the list, but M74 I don't have, but I right. think... I think, uh, you know, the rest of them were going fast. Now, you wouldn't call M7, M1, you wouldn't call that a planetary nebula, would you? No, no, why is, no, no. Why does that no, that's, say, a, that's a, M1 is a supernova remnant. Right. Why does it say planetary nebula in our, in our notes? Uh, I see. Wrote, so supernova wrote remnant. The notes? Well, it was an import from some online screen, but we're going to add this supernova remnant. Just going to add that. Yeah, I don't believe any of the original, you know, any of the astronomers a few hundred years ago ever called it a planetary. It's, I suppose it's possible they could have miscategorized it. I guess. But it's definitely a supernova remnant. Well, Mike... If you've got a three degree. Yeah, my horizon gets down that low. Um, you know, the contrast is going to be absolutely crap down that low. And I do have a couple of trees and a telephone pole and a couple of wires. But, it, you know, I think I think we should be OK. Well, if so. you've got that, then, brother, you might as well try to do all 110. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have a CPR recertification class tomorrow morning. Oh, is that right? 
really unfortunate timing on this. It happens like once a year and it just happens to be tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, so I doubt I'm going to try doing it all, but Hey, you know, if I get a wild hair, maybe, but I doubt I'm going to try doing it all. Gotcha. Boy, mine hit well this, this time. I mean, I have to speak as I might've told you guys in the thread, if we would have had to done it Saturday night, I have to speak Sunday morning, but if it weren't for M74. <laughs> yeah, see, actually for me, tomorrow night is, is going to be not so good. It's supposed to be quite a few clouds around tomorrow oh, night really? and windier. So okay. tonight is like the perfect night. Oh, that's so great. Absolutely crystal clear and dead calm. In that's fact, so the no CMs are bugging the heck out of me because there's no breeze. So, oh no. But that's a good problem to have tonight. Oh, bless your heart. You're risking it all for us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I guess at this point, I'm just kind of killing time until I can start to see some stars, yeah. which is probably going to be about 20, 20 minutes or so. Well, that's not that long. Nope. But I'm pretty well set up. You know, I had long. I had a clear view of M74 down to about maybe eight degrees. It's just that the sun was yeah. so bright on it. Yep. The sun is only about 17 degrees off it right now. <sighs> Uh, which is just and which what's the problem with m30 last last time last time m30 right. was less than 10 degrees away from the sun oh, man. No so wonder. no wonder we just, have trouble you know so this this we stand a much better chance this month yeah. 17 degrees is workable when the sun gets about 10 degrees below the horizon you can usually start seeing some pretty good start seeing some stuff so with seven mm -hmm. degrees above the horizon i should have a good three degrees or so of room to play with Good. to uh to get it so we'll see well what else could i be doing right now to avoid future issues oh make <laughs> sure you can make sure you can slew or do you have to pull her line first i had to do none of the above I mean, oh, nice. I couldn't, I, I can't take the time to polar align and star align tonight and get 74. No way. Which is that's why true. I came out last night oh, and did right. all of that. That's right. <laughs> so my mount has been sitting out here parked in the middle of the driveway all day. That's awesome. Um, so, because all I should need to do is open CPWI and it'll ask me, do you want to unpark? And I say yes. And it's, I, I should be able so to just great. slew to everything. That's so, so great. Like a good Boy Scout, I'm trying to. I, the biggest thing is probably going to be focus because oh. it's the scope is much warmer right now than it I was see. last night. Oh, I see. So yeah. I, I'm probably, but I'm suspecting even before it gets dark enough to shoot that, I should be able to find a pretty bright star yeah. um, that I should be able to hopefully focus on. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. I mean, I didn't adjust the focus from last night, but the scope is going to be quite a bit warmer. So yeah. that will be the one thing that may, that I may have to monkey with, but right. everything else provided all works as planned. Everything else should be set up and ready to go. Just imagine Mike being the star receiver that catches the football for the winning goal. <laughs> yep. It's either Mr. Clutch or Mr. Choke. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll know in about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. I'm getting up above the horizon now, so kind of caught up on things and now i'm in a uh, just a whole batch of open clusters so i'll make really super good time now too for whatever that's worth since i didn't get m74 <laughs> but everything else has been i mean every, everything but 74 77 31 32 blah 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 those few things is there yeah. anything else that's been missed so far no. 
everything else been gotten. Okay. Everything so else. Just these. Mm -hmm. So I, I should have about 20 minutes of work and I'll be done. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So going, I'm going through my traditional alignment process, set up an alignment process. And it's going, okay, done, 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 done. <laughs> Polar line done. <clears throat> well, I guess I can connect that stuff. <clears throat> trying to remember what time we started this live stream well it should tell us shouldn't it on the youtube wasn't it i thought brian started at 3 a.m Pacific, but we reset 6 a.m. your time. We reset. Shouldn't it? Oh, you mean this us. particular segment? Right. I know where it'll tell us. It'll tell us in the YouTube um, connection to Zoom, I think, because you get, we, we've got to jump off so it it ends the recording at the twelve hour mark. Oh, well, Let's now see. would be the time to check if we need I, to do I that. I remember it was 315. <laughs> it was 315 Eastern. So 10 hours would be 115 Eastern. So we're good. Connect camera. Mount. I'm making myself an abbreviated setup list tonight because obviously my normal one is not going to. No, you don't need all that stuff. <clears throat> Mount. Start CPWI. No, no, no. You did tell me you used to be an engineer, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, my, my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, this, this is so Mike Jerry ish. <laughs> Park, yeah, I mean, it's so easy for me to get flustered if I don't have a recipe right. in front of me, then everything that's, just that's awesome. Okay, and... hey, it looks like Brian's imaging. Are you imaging Brian threat by Brian T? Brian yeah, T. He's been oh, yeah. imaging for a while. Oh, that's great. He had on the tack up earlier. Tell us, first got tell, on. tell us how it's going, Brian T. Oh, I'm looking at M101 right now. Nice. Um, I can't open the uh, that that spreadsheet for some reason. So I don't, I mean, if there's a target you want me to image, I can do it. But I'm just kind of watching along and just, you know, <laughs> having me, fun. Let me see. Um, 101. Well, let me see your Brian T entry. Um, when did you register on Zoom? Oh, there you um, are. I got into it before, but the last time I tried a few minutes ago, it's asking me to create an account. You want to use your Gmail address, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's definitely registered and you have editing power. So my best bet is if you want, I could like uninvite you and then reinvite you back. It'll send you a new email. Do you still have the original email? I do. Okay. What a lot of people are doing is they're clicking on the button that says external and you don't want to click on the external one. Okay. You want to, you want to click on the other button, whatever that is. Let's see here. 
So I have click here to view, and I have you have been invited to, and it gives the the item. You've so been, which one? You've been invited to the item. Okay. When I click let's try that. that. Let's let's try that. When I click that. It brings me to a welcome the PTF on Notion, and you continue with you know different options of logging in. But I don't. Yeah, that's it. So in other words, you you want to create a new account. See. Okay. And to do that, you'll want to use the choice called email, I think. Got it. I think I'm in now. Looks like it. Yep. Good. Okay. I guess click, sort it by done, huh? What's that? Sort by done, right? You could. It doesn't affect other users when you sort. So you can sort it whatever you want. Because there's only a few left. Well, which done will you use, though? Because look at EST. See, I'm going to go ahead and click the done for Andromeda because EST observers got it. Uh, oh, so we're, we're doing them for each time zone, huh? Or well, just... I just, did I, was... that I just did that because I'm going to try to do them all. It's just like oh, okay. M74. Yeah, yeah. But... But now, see, look, the only one you're missing is M74 and then and then three random ones that they just missed by accident. So you could look at those three random ones. So 27 is missing, right? Dumbbell? Um, yeah. Cooling tower? Yes, 29 and 27. I guess it's just too random. So besides two random, M74 is all we need now. And the rest you can just image, like you said, for fun. Right, right. I'm just doing them all for fun just because you like when, a, when you do a gymnastics team competition, you know how the team competes as a team. But then if you want, Mary Lou Retton can compete as an individual too. If she wants. Right. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going through as an individual while I'm at it. I can't hear you guys. Who is that, Mike Huerto? Let's see. Hi, Mike. There we are. Hi, guys. Hello, Mike. I uh, just got M27. Mike, we we are so sorry. We didn't get M74 yet, but we hope and hope and hope. We're pinning all of our hopes on Mike Jerry. Okay. <laughs> well, did you? I just got M27. As oh, saying. good. Did you hear yeah. that, Brian T? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Mike, here's Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. Hey, Mike. hey let me uh, share my screen. Uh... Yeah, we were chatting earlier during his first session. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's right. Here we go. There's M27 for you. There you go. And let's even do, I, I love this uh, annotation thing. Yeah, <laughs> just to prove it. <laughs> Hey, that came in really handy a while ago because Brian um, Brian H didn't believe me that I was seeing M77 and he went to astrometry to verify it and it sure enough verified it. Uh, what yeah. about what about M27 and 29? Well, that's that's what Mike is just telling us. Mike, I've got M27. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. You just you just haven't put your name in it yet. No. I just a second. Uh, but 29, we still don't have 29, or are you getting good. that now? Let me just see. Let me I just turn it down. Is it my skies? I'll get it. Okay. So yeah, so it's probably you'll you'll probably get that next. Uh, I didn't realize that was missing. Save this one again as well. Okay, and let's see. I've been having a lot of technical problems. 
still haven't figured out exactly what was going on. Part software, part something else. But let's have a look. M29. Gremlins. Gremlins. I was just amazed. Oh, cooling power. That's a little kind of collection of stars. Here we go. Yep. M29. That takes me up to an even dozen, I think, then, of objects. Uh, so, in a couple of sec. Uh, we go. Uh, why is it not seeing anything? Plus 30, that should be visible. It's still moving. Let's just go to a game. Yeah. So, the question is, where is that pointing? I might have obstructed view. Let's have a look. What is that? It's northeast 30. That should be okay. Let me just go check. Let's see where our view is. Sirius just popped out. Yes. Starlight, star bright. Say anything. Well, I'll let someone else take the screen while I figure out this gremlin. You know, um, you can say whatever you want to about Messier Marathon, but it really does develop, it helps you develop muscle memory, doesn't it? It helps me develop gremlins is the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of, you're kind of like, forcing yourself to do over 100 targets in one night. It's helping you develop muscle memory. Let's go back M27. M74, there you are, you little sucker. Did you find it already? No, 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 no. I'm, oh. it's, yes, yes, it's right here in Stellarium. It's nice and bright. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 12 degrees above the horizon for me right now. So, well, degrees is not very much, Mike. Oh, well, I still got, got a good, good eight, I still got a good eight, nine degrees to play with. Oh, my goodness, Mike. You know what? We're gonna want to see your screen. <clears throat> you are, yes. Okay, this oh. is a big deal. This is the 110th. Yeah, item. What's coming on? Something. <clears throat> Okay, so there's the sun about five degrees below the horizon, and there's M74 selected and up here. So, like 11 and three quarters degrees up and sinking. I'm not sure how exactly accurate Stellarium is. Yes. But I think it's, I've got my location and altitude in here pretty accurately. So I think it's about right. And I just check outside here. We're pretty much completely clouded over right now. Oh, that stream finally dropped in on you. Dang. Yep. Mm. 
Well, still beautiful here. We needed to be beautiful there. Hmm. It's still shot, cat. Oh, regardless, I'm going to attempt it. Good. Yeah, so this is this is what's going on in California right now. And John is up here with this stream just closing. It's just closed the roof on him right up here. No, I'm closer to, the or, closer to the Oregon border. Oh, you're even further north. Oh, okay. Yeah, just south of the Oregon border. Oh, yeah. So right about there. He's up in this stuff here. Yep. And I'm down about here. So... I should be in the clear for pretty much the whole night. Not that I'm expecting to be up the whole night, but. Hey guys, uh, we're getting ready to get started up here at the Flashville Observatory. Nice. And these are two of my assistants. This is Rye, hello, here on the right, Rye in the middle. Rye. And uh, they're going to be uploading things once we've we've taken the photos. So uh, they'll be interacting with it, with us all night. Fantastic. So Rye and who else? Kai. Kai. Rye and Kai. Easy enough. I, wow. Never, How about that? I thought I thought I had just misunderstood, and they were the same person. <laughs> but they definitely are not. Okay. Uh, so, and, and, and Kai is a uh, 17? No, 16. 16. And Rai is 18. Yeah, I'm, I'm 18. And I eventually want to uh, uh, go and um, get a degree in astrophysics. So, wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and, and, starting here. And, and Rai is in our docent training program, and Kai is in our junior docent training program. That's awesome. And two years from now, he'll be a regular docent, but uh, not yet. That's okay, awesome. so anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to some of the group. At some point, I will switch you to my phone on Zoom and walk you around and show you our equipment and stuff. That's great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, Kai, nice to meet you. I'm Doug. Nice to meet you. You too. Tom, it's good to have your board. I just wanted to check in and see if we had gotten uh, those uh, pesky low ones. We're down to one, one target, and Mike is about 15 minutes away from trying it. Great. Okay. So Fantastic. So I should be able to just click this unpark button, and that should just have me done and ready to go. May it be so. Yep, and you can see up here all of my alignment points from my model that I did last night. I went around the whole sky and did oh my goodness, the whole great. model last night and saved it. So it's fantastic. Looks like it's looks like it's good to go. Fantastic. Okay, so so far so good. Now let's open up sharp here. This, this is a long way from video astronomy using a CCD camera on an Altair's mount in the nineties, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a very long way. Very impressive. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? I was just saying, Mike, how this night helps you develop so much muscle memory. I mean, you, you know how we talk about workflow. This does so much for a person's workflow. Okay, there's a nice bright image of my still not dark sky. <laughs> Oh, we can even hear your dog. Oh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of dogs out here. Oh, let's see. So next target, 533. Let's see. Now, I still don't. I can't see any stars by, by the naked eye right now up in that, that sky. Was, that was my problem. So I could go, I could go up and uh, image Rigel 
and it would be right in the center of the frame. And then I'd go down to M M74 and it would just be blank. So let me see. So I want to go. Out here. In fact, I can probably start. Uh, I wonder if Hamal will be bright enough. Let's see. Sounds like somebody that works down at the Somali restaurant. Now, let's see if I can. Yeah, Doug, could we just check it on the Notion page? I've uploaded all my images. You're kidding, that's awesome. Yep, so there's now not many completely blank spaces. That's fantastic. Um, but there's, yep, there are a couple of things I thought I had, but when I reviewed the images, they weren't there, but they're covered by other people. Oh, um, could you take a look at uh, M29 Cooling Tower? Sure. I didn't image that. That was one where, uh, very early this morning, when things were getting, when the clouds were coming in, I, I made a judgment call that I really didn't think I was going to get it. Yes. And I didn't actually realize that it was likely to be a difficult object for some other people. Um, I think uh, people in the USA and, or West Coast of the USA should have a pretty easy shot at it. We'll definitely give it, sure we'll definitely give it our best, you bet. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty easy from the West Coast, um, mm -hmm. but that's that's one of the holes that we have. Got it. And then, of course, Andromeda on those kinds of ones that we were. We, we, we already know. got Andromeda. Yeah, we, we got that. Oh, awesome. In, yeah. Okay, so we see started and done. So it's calling tower. And, no one's and, started and no one's done. And 77. Uh, we got that. It's just now we're looking for M74. Okay. Yeah, I saw those images of. Uh, in 77. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. on some really, really crummy images. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'd like to see the backstory on that. I mean, what was the elevation and conditions and stuff? It, 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 it was about very, eight, very dodgy. Eight, eight, eight degrees and 10 degrees of tree treetops. Tree <laughs> yep. And were you actually shooting through the trees at that point? Yes, we were. <sighs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, so if you kind of hold it up to the light the right way and squint, you can convince yourself it's right. M77. Right, exactly. If we didn't have the plate solving, I don't think anybody would believe you. I know. that. In fact, these guys were sitting there watching me look at it, and they still didn't believe me. <laughs> oh, I believed you. It looked like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. That's science. If you have two independent <laughs> observations, and you've got the same thing. That's <laughs> <clears throat> What's the score, so, Mike? Well, I'm having to drop to eight milliseconds just to get stars to show up in the camera. Yeah, that's what so, I had to do too. So I, I'm going to try a plate solve, but I don't think I, I don't no, hold a high I, high level of uh, likelihood that it's I, going to work. I went to the nearest bright star. It happened to be Rigel for me. Just to check. And Rigel hit right in the center of the frame. I think for plate solving, you probably do better to, to do lower gain and longer exposure. Yeah, you're going to be picking up a lot of read noise like that. What's the camera? Five three, five it's three. It's a five three three. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty low read noise already. Just take a look at its specs. Oh no, you know I've got a. What is, oh, that's Capella. Let me go to Capella. I can actually see Capella. Good. If, if Capella's in the middle of your frame, then I wouldn't even worry about, you know, plate solving. I just go right to where M74 is supposed to be. No, it is not there. You know, in the scope, in fact, <laughs> yeah, Mike, if you uh, 
want to adjust your gain, try a gain of 100, because that will increase your read noise a bit, but you'll have exposures probably several times longer, so you should get a better balance of read noise. It should give, it should give a less noisy image, and that might help your plate solve. It should be close. Let's try four seconds. Um, so everyone's going to check in the everyone's got, going to check I've, in the PC power supplies now. I've got M twenty nine now. I just put it oh, up. Good. Saved good. it. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. I was wondering why I was getting a Windows error on my iPad, but <laughs> see, see. Let's try an eight second exposure. <clears throat> Looks like it should be pretty close. I'm not sure why it's not in the view. Yes, that's a lot less noisy, isn't it? Let's see if we can get a plate solve on this. Yeah, I, I can see at least 20 stars on there, so. Okay. It, it, says it's a, it says it's a degree off. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. I think it, liked, I think it found it. Good. Okay, that should be Capella. All right. Okay, so I should now be able to sync Stellarium. <clears throat> All right. And now. Let's drop down to Hamal. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, looks like we got close. There, it should be a pretty short jump. Let right, me play solve on that. <laughs> I think it's too bright. I think I need to drop the gain. Yeah, there's them all. It's there, but let me try dropping the gain again. Um, I suggest you leave, leave it at 100 and reduce your exposure because on that camera, you're getting going below 100, you get uh, you turn off the high gain conversion. So you read noise uh, more than doubles. Okay. Yep. I still don't think I'm getting enough stars that low. So I may just I may just manually slew this to the yes, middle sink I, and then the heck with plate solving and then just go to I think that's a wise idea. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna man now. Haha, <laughs> we gotta guess which way to go here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that guesses pressing the buttons. <laughs> Oh, I guessed right. Oh, good. 50-50. You know what? That's going to be close enough. Okay. I need to put my headlamp on because I can't see the keyboard. All right. So now I need to go back to Stellarium and sync on that. 
Good. All right. Now, M77. Okay. I think that's just going to give me more light. No, that's too bright. someone already had m27 no this is 77 no no it was, someone i was told that we didn't have m27 but an image is loaded um we're that's probably um i bet that was bob's from england he just did that i think that's not from tonight that's just yeah just right now he did it uh like oh, okay. Okay. an hour so, so an hour ago or whatever okay Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry, had a power outage. Uh, oh, back no. with you now. We're glad you're back. Yeah, um, very rare, but um, it's always in most inconvenient time. <laughs> Um, right, I'm just going back to see if I can get your form. Um, hopefully, you didn't damage it. Uh, I'm still showing it is okay. How's everyone anyway? You know, if Mike gets uh, M74, we'll all be a lot better. We'll know in the next what <laughs> ten minutes, Mike. Yeah. Yep. So far, I'm not having a lot of luck with 77. Well, skip the skip 77. Yeah. Although, just, yeah. Just so I think what I might do is go back to back to Hamal and resync if necessary, and go just go down to 74 and see if we can squeeze it out. Yeah. Um, I'm just going back to 57 uh, myself. Um, that's still uh, quite high up in the sky here. Right. And then I'll, I'll go through and uh, recheck, see what we got. Good. Yeah, I've loaded uh, one of the worst images ever of M57. <laughs> I, I chose this, believe it or not, as the best one. <laughs> <laughs> I had another image that shows more color. That was, uh, I think, a two-second exposure. But it was like that sort of noisy color patterns. This is that one smoothed it out. Yeah, so yeah. Feel, free to, feel free to replace <laughs> that one. I will not be in them. <laughs> um, well, I'm we, just, won't, we won't replace it. We're just putting more beside it. I'm just doing a five-minute exposure. Um, and I forgot to turn the guiding back on, so uh, God knows what it's going to be like. I've had to reset everything. Um, um, so um, who's on now? Um, is it West Coasters? That's yeah. me. Mike. That's me trying yeah. to get M74. So I yeah. should be on 74 right now. Oh, show us your screen. Share screen. I am. Oh, okay, good. You're seeing my sharp cap. All right. <clears throat> I'm at a thousand. I'm at a one second and a hundred gain. Okay, everybody, look really close. <sighs> yeah. So I just need some more exposure just to yep, going up and get more signal. Signals. Make sure you adjust your black point to cut off the noise too. It's kind of like a, a dozen people looking over your shoulder, right? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. It all hinges on you. 
Is there an option in sharp cap to flip it to mono? Oh, I think there is actually. Some um, I don't think it gains you that much sensitivity, if that's what you mean. Um, it will be combining channels that so will effectively reduce noise, it will improve the signal to noise ratio. And we're basically looking at noise at the moment. So, where would that control be, guys, if it existed? Well, I'll well, look, see if I can find it. Uh, if I start a live stack, um, I can definitely do it in here because you can just drop the oh. saturation to zero. Okay. And that essentially does it. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, uh -huh. as I thought uh, for guiding. <laughs> <laughs> um, my my image, um, which I'm not going to share or post, is a, definitely a lot worse. How how high psychedelic? Is M, how high is M74 above the horizon for you, Mike? Me? Yes. Um, probably about six seven degrees, five okay. six seven degrees, something like All that. Right. Yeah, showing about seven and a half degrees right now on a display. Yeah, I think in sharp cap, it's under the FX drop down, which is on the toolbar. I think there's an option there to change the Bayer pattern and put it to mono. Toolbar. So under the, under the um, menus, I think oh. it's in there. RGB select red, red. I'm not seeing. I'd say just whatever you need to do, Mike, and you're in, because you only have five more minutes, I bet. Yeah. And what focal length are you running? 600 at F4. Yeah, um, you could. Can you can you bin? Bin two? They're going to screw up your darks and stuff. Boy, that would, yeah, that would be different for you, wouldn't it, Mike? Yeah. I don't know that it would gain me much. Uh, it'll, it would um, double your signal to noise ratio. Still just a bright, a brightly lit sunset, isn't it? It looks like a flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got a really nice flat there. <laughs> it does. No vignetti, nothing. It's awesome. Yeah, and that's with no flats taken. <laughs> hmm. Well, more exposure just makes it brighter and noisier uh, i would say yeah keep playing with your exposure hum your longer exposure won't make it noisier it'll just make it brighter you'll actually get less noise because it's going to be less shot noise because you're sampling more electrons so as long as you're not uh, pushing the histogram um, past the white point
That's what mine look like, Mike, if it makes any difference. <laughs> that's that's the same kind of It looks like there. right here I've got a I think that's a star right there. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Uh, um let's try going up to the higher exposure again. Yeah, and the and the live spec histogram stretch is an option to adjust the uh, individual channels, which might help. Yep. Yeah, so there's a button down there which automatically tries to balance the channels. Right. Yep, and that way. You've got more ability to set a black point that's not cutting off signal from one of the channels. Oh boy. <laughs> Sky glow. Yeah, there's a hint of something in there. Yeah, see, there's this looks like a star, a star there and a star there. Yep. Yeah, are you running darks and, and bias on this? Um, yeah, yes, I do have a dark running. Um, uh, not flats, just dark. Yeah, because at this point, the only thing you could do to improve your signal to noise noise ratio is, is bin, bin two times or bin three times, uh, but your your darks won't work with that. I'm not sure where the, where that control is in sharp cap. You're doing a post processing, but we're not allowed to post process. So. Binning is right here. I have no idea what this will select a dark frame. Yeah, okay. No, yes, I that's can't. the issue. You'd have, you'd have to remove the dark frame. Are you running a cool camera? Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll just remove the dark frame. I mean, we're not, yep. not seeing any, anything on this one, yep. nothing to lose. Your dark frame's probably already pretty f flat anyway, so all it's going to do is, is move the histogram a bit to the right. More stars. Yeah, do, um, the binning will double the signal-to-noise ratio, roughly. So what if you plate solve now and then... I doubt I'll, I can try it, but I doubt I'll be able to see enough stars to do it. I see. I'll try. Nope. Played so failed. Just unspecified error. Well, I'll just stay on. Are, are, I think. Are you, I, are you, li are you are live you, stacking? Are you able to plate solve while you're live stacking, Mike? Um. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, you can. Yeah, I, I just tried. It failed. As long and of as course, you're... the live stacking is just failing because it doesn't have enough alignment stars. Right. right. As long as you don't do the plate solve and sync, huh? So I'm just going to go to individual frames. Well, uh, but no, that that no, I can't do that because that means the histogram doesn't isn't. Yeah. So all I can do actually is just keep clearing. Why do you have your black point all the way down the bottom? I didn't catch that. Why do you Why do you have your black point all the way to, all the way to the left? Black light. What black light? Black black, uh, black point adjuster. Oh, this out here. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, according to SharpCap, is. Fully aggressively stretched. Well, I can see stars. <laughs> yeah. There uh, are does, stars does, sharp, there. does sharp cap have a gradient removal? I think it does in the live stack somewhere. Under one of the controls. I don't know. Never I've never used it if there is one. Um, there's a under the pre-processing, there's a background subtra uh, subtraction option which I think attempts to remove 
uh, gradients automatically. It may or may not help. But um, I think we're all getting a bit desperate. Who knew that astronomy could we're be so, so exciting? Close. So close, because we're seeing stars now, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. So, so on that right-hand panel somewhere, there's a pre-processing one if you scroll down. So not that bottom panel, on the right-hand uh, set of panels or controls where your scope controls are, capture format. So there's a slider there on the right-hand side for all the boxes. It's right hard up against the edge of your screen. Uh, I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're trying to point me to. I don't uh, it's just about 10, 10 pixels to the right. There's a slider which will slide all these controls up and down because there's another set of controls underneath. Okay, well I can use my there mouse. There you go. That. Yep, fine. Um, so you've got pre-processing. Uh, you've got a background subtraction option there. See, because as I'm clearing these, actually the newest, the newer. Um, the newer uh, subs that are coming in are getting darker and darker. So now, uh, cause see, I'm not getting a whole lot of noise now. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, okay. You should reset your display histogram, Mike, because you're double stretched now. Oh, how did that get out like that? That's not what I think. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Frank. You bet. More stars now. I did not notice how that got out there like that. Yeah, so that's to reset the color channel balance, I think. That should play yeah. itself, man. That's you got yeah, try, try that background su subtraction. Where is that again? Background subtraction. You're right on it, right there. Okay. Just there. Simple and or bl blended? I think the blended offset is the recommended one, but I don't use sharp it is. cap much. Blended is. I, th I thought that only worked if you were if you were actually getting successful stacked images, stacked subs. You could be wrong. That has to play solve. <laughs> well, I think I, I think I can count twenty. <laughs> failed. Something went wrong. Yeah, that's that's what always happens to me with sharp cap. I haven't got plate solving working on it. And are we sure you can plate solve while live stacking? I thought you had to be, live stacking had to be not engaged in order. To no, play. you you can you can still live stack. And if it if it tries to resync, it warns you first before it moves the mount. Uh, wow, what the heck happened? This all changed again, dramatically. <sighs> we keep getting more and more stars. So I. Are you able to live stack? That's what I'm trying to do right now. Well, no, no, I'm not because it's not finding enough alignment stars. Right. Are you are you on a fully tracked mount? I mean, not yep. guided. Mm -hmm. How stable is it? Uh, it's an AVX with a 12 pound scope on it. Be good. I think you've got nothing to lose by just stacking a few frames and see what happens. I can't. It won't stack. It won't stack because there aren't enough alignment stars. Turn um, off so alignment. Just, oh, you turn off the alignment. It'll just stack and not try to just stack what's there. I Pixel tried that Pixel. too, and it, it I could never get that to work. But we tried it, yeah. Mike. Oh, that's a shame. They okay. told me where they told I'll me where that. Shot. Yeah, they told me where that was. It's the alignment tab of the. Well, you can just turn off align frames here, and yes. I think that will just stack yes. whatever's there and won't even that's try to right. align. That's right. We can give it a shot. <clears throat> I'm starting to get into a, a wire, I think. You see that, yeah. But I think that may be a galaxy. That may be it. Oh, may it be so. 
Capture an image. Well, it just well, I'm stacking. Yeah, he's okay. stacking right now. Yeah, no, I think that's it. Can you save exactly a scene? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can, but save exactly a scene. Well, I should actually do my uh, 74. Save exactly yeah. that scene. Let's hope yeah, this. Just uh, get, we're just starting to get about trailing there. Sorry. Yep. At, yeah. at astrometry, let's hope this solves. Save our scene, clear, start again, because it is continuing to get darker and darker. Oh. What? Yeah, so just the program again. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Good in there. Two stars here, two here, two here. Two stars here, two here, two here. It's good. This has, got, this has got to be it. Woohoo! It's got to be yeah, it. Be it's better because you're running into trees. Yeah, I'm, I'm just coming into. I think it is a tree. Look. But you're yep, so Jeff. close, though. I know Mike. those pictures from last year, last time. You're it's so close, quick. Mike. Yeah, coming into the tops of trees. You could just see it right there. How about you take the black level up and see? The up as into the right? Yep. And just see if anything starts to emerge. Clear it again. This is an odd histogram stretch, isn't it? It's all the sunlight, isn't it? You want to hit that button yeah. to align the, the channels? The color? I've got the saturation off, so well, that shouldn't make a okay. difference, but I guess maybe yeah. it did. This is just a difficult galaxy anyway. That's it, Mike. You're there. You're right there. You're it's it, see how those they almost form like the shape of a hat. The two and the yeah, up. yep, two up top and two and the yep. two here. And it's and it's right Actually, in the middle. It's right two, below that line. Two. You're yep. You're right there. Unfortunately, at this good. point it should be right there. Yep. At this point, it's get it's in the trees. I think. Yep. yep. But I remember you saw it. So if this solves at astrometry, astrometry, we're counting it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Well, I'm really surprised. Actually, I would think I'd get a, I would think I'd be getting more contrast there than I am. But I think it's a dim galaxy and a bright sun. The sky is pretty dark over there. It's not dark, dark, but it's. I just think because the sun is over there, it, it's seeing it from behind the horizon. You know. The nine point four magnitude, and about. Uh, 10 minutes in size. So the surface brightness is pretty low. At like uh, 23 on surface brightness. Like that. You got a so, lot of dark matter there, right there. Yeah, that's spot. a tree. <laughs> that is a dark, tree. Dark it's a dark matter. nebula. <laughs> a dark tree nebula. Yeah. Okay, so. We I just made an attempt at it. For you in this direction, you guys want to see what I got? Yes. Okay, we're done out. We're done out at Death Valley anyway, aren't we, Mike? Yeah, that's that. that we're not going to move out of that tree. Okay, <laughs> so John. Okay. Uh, let me un. Let me stop sharing. So that's what I looked like for most of last night. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for about eight hours or ten hours. Yeah. 
I think it actually helped me to sleep rather than being kept away but awake by bright yeah. lights all night. Yeah. Is that Mars? Well, there's my picture. <laughs> oh no, I thought you were serious that you had it. No, no, I said that my attempt. Oh. Is it my yeah. God. So I don't okay. know. I, it may not be sync, but it's definitely I think it's already you know too far below my horizon here. So thank you, Mike, for getting it. Yeah, so Mike, uh, well, we'll, we'll see. Upload that to astrometry. Ernie, Ernie was saying, um, pull up Livestock next to Zoom. He has log checkbox ticked. Don't we always run with the log checkbox ticked guys in the Livestock? Uh, a log checkbox. I don't know what you mean. In, a log in, the, histi log in the histogram. I don't normally use that. I just do it straight linear, I think it is. Yeah, I always use the log plot. I do too. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, I always, the logarithmic, I see. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've had it checked every time. So Ernie on the YouTube stream is saying not to. Sorry, I didn't see your message in time, Ernie to try that. But uh, Mike's going to upload this to astrometry. Astrometry. It's, I think M74 is already below the horizon now, Ernie. Yeah, it's below mine. Yeah. Well, if you've got a neutrino to detect, you're okay. Say again? If you've got a neutrino to detect, you'll be okay. Shoot straight <laughs> through the air. <laughs> I don't happen to have one line around. A neutrino detector. <laughs> That's great. Well, there's 77. Well, that's better oh, than I've the image. A, that's I've got a line. I could align frames off. That's why it's mushing. And do you want to put your binning back the way it was so you can run? Binning is already back. Background subtraction is already off. Okay, good. <clears throat> See if it'll stack. Yep. Good. It's going to be a lot better than the M77 image I contributed. <laughs> <laughs> you can see there is a roof line creeping up on the lower left oh boy. corner of mine. Oh, boy. So, yeah, because I'm down probably about four degrees on this one, five degrees. So I'll just take a few frames. and uh, Let's see, a few subs. Let's get...
I think I made an unwise choice to not use the 183 mono. Oh. Either way, it was very hectic. Yep, and totally a team thing. Yep. Same with me. We were doing the same thing when it when it was on my horizon, Mike. They would give me all kinds of instructions. Well, you got close. Yeah, let's see. Boy, Zoom window is just in the way all the time. All right, let's try for there. Okay, there's one ten. There's yeah, there's all three of them, I believe. Yeah, we'll just drop this back to about fifty. Come on, let me in. Thank you. Clear it. Thirty one, thirty two, one ten. Well, I've shut my uh, my telescope down for the day. All right. And uh, it's uh, back to doing what I was doing before with the computer, which is trying to back up two terabytes oh my. From, from my Dropbox <laughs> to a very, very slow internet connection to uh, this great uh, uh, double four terabyte uh, external hard drive setup. Oh boy, sounds uh, hard. I've got another two days to go on this. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not hard. It just takes a long time. Yeah. I'm out in the sticks and I, I have internet of uh, 10, uh, 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 very slow internet anyway. Away. And that should be about right. I think I got all three there. Well, if I can plate solve, then I can just annotate it. <clears throat> hmm. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just do this. Thirty-one, thirty-two, and one ten. That's good, Mike. Mine yeah, was in, I think that's that's all three. Yeah, mine was in treetops. <laughs> yeah, well, just the one bugaboo was.
Okay, save image with annotations. Okay, there's all three knocked out there. Not pretty, but that's not what we're up for tonight. <laughs> okay, sequencer. Next target. All right. What's the next? What's next on the list? Uh, I guess. Well, I guess triangulum would have been. If they called. They claim triangulum is before either one of them, but. But it's actually higher in the sky. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Very low when I got it, about 10 degrees or something. So is there anyone else that has a chance at M74? Nope. Well, it's not called the Phantom for nothing. <clears throat> okay, this will be thirty three. <clears throat> and now I've got to adjust the live histogram because it's Upload to astrometry. Oh boy, I haven't done that in a long time. How far am I up? Oh, I'm up almost 10 degrees off the horizon now. Plenty of time. Okay, somebody refresh my memory. How do I get get it onto astrometry? You have to log in with your account. Oh, it well, does. You don't, you don't have to log in. Just, just go to nova.astrology.net. Okay, nova. Dot uh, strong astrometry. Oh, astrometry. Dot okay, upload. Yes, yep. Okay, and hey, the Zoom chat window is in my way. Okay, file, choose file. Gosh, and then the question is, which file are we going to choose? <sighs> Sharp cap captures. Night M74. <clears throat> what all did we do? This one? Or do we do this one? Oh, they're both crap. I think there's a bit more contrast on this one though. 64 second. There's a bit more contrast. All right, so it'll be the 64 second one. So let's go to... Oh. 
software, uh, Sharp Cap Captures, bottom of this, and 74, 64 second. Okay, upload, PNG or FITS, I believe I download them as JPEGs. Thank you for your submission. All right, well, that's a PNG. All right, well, we'll check back on that. Why do you keep claiming I have low system resources? What are you talking about? CPU 86%, memory 80%. Sharp cap is using a ton. Not disk, it must be memory. It's claiming memory. Edge, zoom, and sharp cap is using over a gig. Well, just gonna have to deal with it. My uh, with the SR uh, or the plasma, and uh, I sent it at 442 today's Friday, and just checking to see if, our, if my email is working to you. Um, you can send a Well, I, it's okay, so M33, so you've exactly as seen. I think that's fairly identifiable. Anything that I need to get, or are we just, now it's just screwing around time. What is in our list here? Okay, so I got 77, I got 31, 32, and 110. Uh, I think everything else has been shot. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Mike got 29 and 27. Did you have a blank one towards the top? Sorry, I missed that? I thought there was one. Keep rolling. I thought I saw one that there, right? No, no. There's one that maybe has a name, but it hasn't been updated yet. Yesterday. Yeah, Kim just hasn't uploaded it yet. Got it. M35. <clears throat> okay, but I think, oh, here we go. And 74 we're still waiting for. Or did you just do that? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, we just tried. <laughs> yeah. We just got a shot of it that had some stars in it, but. Hmm. Uh, and 110 is ticked with no name at the bottom. Yeah, I just got it. Okay, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I should. Uh, so I'm not in the list yet. Okay. Yes, create. Doing. Okay, good. Uh, It looked like your astrometry page had solved success. Yes. yes. So, so go to results page. Uh, okay. 
drum roll. Well, it has it identified. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Good job. Congratulations. Congrats. Really good. Well done. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I don't know if you I'm can call impressed. that an observation, take a, but <laughs> take a take a picture of that, and that's what you gotta post is that exact picture. <laughs> uh, I agree. Uh, can you actually download this image? Yes. Do, do a screenshot. Do a screenshot of uh, do a screenshot of everything uh with the written bit as well. Exactly. Use hey Mike, if you click on the start menu in Windows, you have Windows 11, it looks like. Yeah, I can do a I can do a print screen. You can do that, or you even have the snipping tool, which is really neat. You can just take yeah. your top box around the, the, the square. Exactly. Okay, so now I've got it in there, but now That's uh, I don't have it loaded on here. Um I've got it copied. If you go back to your web page, uh, where, um, the result page, and then um, snip. Yep. Exactly. Okay, snipping tool. Uh, just uh, click on new no, at the just, top. Yeah. Okay. New. All and right. Then, and then drag the it. box around you, the area that you want to capture. Okay. Yep. Right there. View. There you go. And now you can click on file. Whatever you want. Save as. And you can choose the graphic format that you want to save as. You can PNG, right. JPEG. Uh, boy, what is our file format? <laughs> I think they're JPEG, aren't they? Oh, you mean the, uh, naming, the naming format, I think, is what Mike means? Um, yeah. It's your name. It's the um, object first. We can rename it after. And your name. Yeah. M74. Yeah. Uh, okay. Come on, and then, think. And then your name. M74, 64 seconds. Actually, copy, paste. Okay. And I will add annotated. And then I can put it right back in there. Save. Okay, and now just because I don't trust anything. The stretch, stretch annotated. Okay, well. I guess that will have to be what our submission is there. It's an observation. It is. Okay, so now we go to Notion. Upload, choose a file. And I think it was the first one. No, it was the second one. Annotated, boom. Yeah. Okay. For what it's worth. Good job. And now for this one. Where's Doug? I haven't heard from Doug. Does he? Does he even know that we get successfully that it successfully identified it? No. Nope. He's muted. <laughs> He's muted. Yeah. Because he would be jumping out of his skin right now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have been yelling up one side and down the other. <laughs> Get on mute. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! So fun. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know that, don't know there was the plan on that, but we got there. That's <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. It's a plum miracle. Wow. Yay, yay astrometry.net. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Wow. Mike, everybody, and Michael, and everybody who pitched in, everybody who was 
looking over Mike Jerry's shoulder, telling him what to do. And Mike Jerry, that, the fact that, that was that it, right down to the last image that truly was a team effort. It was. And Mike Jerry, the fact that you didn't get mad at us, <laughs> you, it, didn't, it didn't tick you off. <laughs> no, at that point I was as malleable as clay. Cause I wouldn't, I didn't know what to do. So I was very happy with the, with Michael and the more experienced voices who, oh who knew how to adjust the gain and the, exposure and knew what would work best michael how long have you been doing astronomy um eia since about august last year started doing a bit of astronomy before that um i did study astrophysics for a master's degree but that's not astronomy you uh, haven't got, you have an ast you have an astrophysics degree and um, master's degree in astrophysics but that's you not already... astronomy you, you can oh. do astrophysics and never look at a single star believe me wow yeah, uh, but I've got quite a lot of experience using um, doing monitor equipment using electronics. So I oh. studied uh, cosmic ray um, astrophysics. So we were studying supernova 1987A oh, and wow. Cygnus X1 look, looking for cosmic ray emissions from point sources, oh. wow. which, which in 1989, um, most people didn't think that cosmic rays came from point sources. So it was not quite pseudoscience, but it was kind of at the fringe of astrophysics at the time. Wow. And, now, and now it's just, you know, well-recognized. They've got uh, gamma ray scopes that'll hunt for gamma ray bursts and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But that was right at the beginning of it. Well, so the equipment required for that was photomultipliers, um, hundreds of kilometers of delay cables, cam wow. crates, computer processors, hard drives, the whole lot. And well, I collecting... Just think we... um, I think we ought to thank everybody, you know, because it's just an incredible, an incredible amount of Mike, you, Mike, Jerry, you being willing to accept all that and everybody giving input and asking questions and have you tried this and are you doing this? I mean, everything was great. Yeah, but I think there's a, a lesson. I think it'd be good if we could actually debrief on that little session, maybe even look at what we went through because yeah. it's pretty clear that nobody on the call actually had a complete understanding of <laughs> how to push sharp cap or whatever to get the the best signal image in the, under the yeah. worst conditions in the shortest amount of time yeah. so really i think there's true. probably a few things we could, we could learn and share it's really true Actually, I got 77 too. I should put that up as well. Oh, yeah. Yours is better than mine. <laughs> uh, I didn't know. So, Doug, you actually um, you had a cloud free session there? Or? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I wasn't dealing with clouds. I was dealing with trees and sun. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, we had everything. We had people dealing with snow and ice, I, I heard. Yeah. That's right. Did anybody have fog? No. Just in my brain right now, about five o'clock <laughs> in the morning. What is, I'm looking at your pictures, Doug. Doug. Uh, yeah, I can see the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty stark. <laughs> Um, look at my image of 77. Should I do uh, should I do an astrometry annotation? No, How do you think no, it's good? Yours, yours is good. I had to put my name in there too. That 77 one looks clean. Yeah. yeah. So did. Triangulum. That was funny that I was muted the whole time I was celebrating. And finally, somebody said, where's Doug? You would yeah, that was so me. Big. I'm like, usually, you you know, you'd be our big, you're our biggest cheerleader. So I can't believe you were. What, he went to go have dinner now? <laughs> I was. I was just going crazy in the background. Didn't know I was muted. <laughs> yeah th thanks doug for all your support I, i'm not sure i would have made it through the night without um, oh, your encouragement listen to that <laughs> and don't forget I, the you, uh, peanut butter pizzas oh yes you and your peanut butter pizza <laughs>
So it seems like to do this again, we need more in the Southern Hemisphere because we've got, um, so I was thinking like South America. Oh, that would be nice. Per, per, I've got some, I've got a, it's a um, so second cousin twice removed in Peru. Oh yeah. Uh, who's got a pretty good setup. Um, so great. we'll see if uh, we can get rope him in. Because that would give that's, us the second time around in the Southern Hemisphere. Well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it would. That, that almost sounds like a line in of Paddington Beer. The second cousin of Peru. <laughs> exactly. In Peru, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we just need to st start sending some of our unused scopes to um, Africa and other places. Yeah. Where they've got brilliant ob observation, observing conditions and very few telescopes. True, yeah. true. Actually, I'll, um, yeah, I'll have a go at the EV scope form. There's a guy who's quite active. He's a, heads out to Namibia sometimes. Wow. It's a country that's almost entire country's bought a one. It's amazing. Okay. So, yeah, I think. Well, obviously a bit of good luck involved in, in getting the last the last two. Uh, M30, I managed to get that. Kim got that as well. But that's just down to uh, good luck actually having um, good enough conditions to be able to take the shot. And there are only two people in a position to be able to do that. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I, got cloud, I got clouded out near the horizon towards dawn. So. Wow. Oh. Yeah, you know, managed to squeeze it in before that. So that that was the risky observation. And I mean, you guys had plenty of shots at M74. Like everyone in the northern, northern hemisphere could at least have a go at it. But obviously, very very hard being that close to the sun. It's a great story. Astronomy is a team sport. Yeah, we just might have to do the highlights reel because I'm not sure that anybody's going to want to watch 28 hours of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. A very slow-moving team sport. Yeah. Well, Doug always condenses it down into a 30, what, a 30-minute? Yeah, I, I don't think even, I mean, um, the last one in March I didn't, but this one I will for sure. Let's see if I can get a better little dumbbell here. Stefan got it, but I could probably do a little bit better. Okay, I think I'm going to try and get a couple of hours of sleep. Yeah, now. I don't but, blame um, you. It's, uh, it's been good. It's really good. Thank you, Mike. Oh, it's been a pleasure, you guys. Uh, Scott C is listening on YouTube and he said, Congrats to all. <clears throat> Okay, I look forward to the the highlights uh, real then, Doug. Okay, thanks. <laughs> we'll Take do, care. Mike. Thank and Doug. Thank you again for organizing. Really, oh, really thank you, job. Mike, for taking part. Take care, um, guys. Are you going to submit and let us all know um, if it's um, the challenge has been um, accepted? Yeah, but it will be. I mean, they're they're fascinated by our approach on this. They they won't deny us. They, they'll accept it. Is that what you mean with SEDS? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they'll they'll take it. Uh, so I can get um, another T-shirt made up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For sure. So, Doug, what was the final uh, decision this time around about the rules for the international participation and when you did end, when you did it? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like how long you need to stay on? Or when you could start and when you could stop and whether you could do consecutive nights and stuff. So we ended up oh. deciding that I would start at the same time that Kim did and only run through to the morning. Yeah, I mean, the rule with SEDS is it all has to be within the same night. So we are kind of gaming that rule by saying we're all working with the same night as a team in different time zones, but it's like a, it's like a relay handing the baton to each time zone yeah. as it goes forward. And they took it last year and they didn't, they didn't complain a bit. They liked it. So as long as we stay within the same calendar night, then we're kind of following our application of the rule and it, it worked great. Yep. 
well, I think I got, well, I thought it had all but one of the things I planned to do, and then it turned out that two of them I didn't have images for somehow. Uh, yeah. So I might have had a bit of a hunt for that. You did great. It certainly was my busiest night of astronomy so far. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think there's any way I could have run, run two scopes unless they're both completely automated. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I'll have to take another look at my workflow. <clears throat> A lot of fun. So, Bob, you you can hit the sack now too, right? Yeah, I'm just um, just going to see what's um, still around and taking a few pictures, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, of course um, it is. Just done the dumbbell. You've just been up a long time, brother. <laughs> so has everyone else. <laughs> I haven't. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, and you haven't. Quarter <laughs> nine in the evening here. <laughs> so I, 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 got, I got spoiled. I got, you know, I got, I got left with a high pressure job, but I got spoiled by the hours. So <laughs> thank you, every. I mean, I'm clearly standing on the shoulders of everyone else. So thank you, that's, everyone that's, who's come before me. That's fun. So Doug, how long are you going to keep the uh, window for submissions open? We'll we'll go till 10 a.m. If you want to stay till light i mean we'll keep it open uh, i want to i want to wait for a break in the cloud so at least i get one picture yeah 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 we'll keep it we'll keep it open as long as you want to brother till it's daylight on your time zone okay right i'll say goodbye now thanks okay, folks michael. that was great fun thank well you done. michael <laughs> really appreciate it yeah with a very thrilling fellow so i'm looking yeah, forward to it really was yeah, great great job guys uh, well done. Um, uh, you you really killed it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Thank good you, night Michael. or good morning or, or good afternoon or wherever you happen to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your hard work all night, Michael. See you. Yep. Bye. There's that dog, Mike Jerry. Boy, he picks it up really well, huh? <laughs> yeah. This is a. I see. I'm not. I'm, you normally I wear a headphone, a headphone with a mic, oh. and so tonight I'm just on using the. I'm just using the, uh, the the built-in. Really. Mic, mic, and speakers on the on the laptop. So it that's why you're hearing all the background. Yeah, it doesn't sound bad at all, though. Yeah, it, yeah. I use it for all my zooming. So yeah, it's a good one. So wow. there's a better picture of seventy-six. Is there any other are any, any other pictures that uh, we could really get a better job of? I mean, you could look down through the con comments. Um, well, you know what we should do before the night is over. We should do M fifty one again. Oh, yeah, because nobody really gave it more than one or two frames and it was really just i mean bob bob got the closest didn't you bob yeah i can um um it's still reasonably phil is, high phil is the only one who's listed as having attempted it yeah i don't think bob's marked his name but he did he did uh, attempt i don't know if you uploaded it already or not bob yeah okay. um yeah. yeah mine's on the bottom yeah. I'll, I'll okay. go for M51. How's that? Okay. I can as well. I mean, I can um, look at it again if you want. Or is well, there any... Uh, I, I think uh, it was just... You did like one two-minute exposure, didn't you? Yep, yep. So I'll let, I, I'll let everyone else... Um, and I'll, I'll just... Um, uh, wait, I'm just doing 97 at the minute. Oh, good. I'll do, I'll do hit M34. Boy, I'm like 15, 20 degrees up from the horizon. Boy, what a luxury. <laughs> there we go. There's 34. Hmm. 
Let's do a quick. Well, these objects are all so amazing, aren't they? Clear that out. Okay. <clears throat> Get these colors in alignment. That's better. Nice thing about star clusters, you don't have to take a lot of time on them. That's for sure. This is 34. <clears throat> Very cool. Save exactly a scene. <laughs> So are there any other ones you can think of, Doug, that you'd no. uh, like me to get? Okay. No, that's the only one I can think of that that I felt like, you know, I felt like we had sort of captured it, but I remember just thinking, boy, it's such a beautiful galaxy and two minutes was a the best we had on it, I think. The rest, I think, are pretty much Messy a marathon level EAA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might go over and shoot it anyway, just for the heck of it. But I think we've got a few people doing it now. Yeah. I should go see where it is. Oh, hold on. Let's turn off stack first. Okay, and then let's try 51, boink. Well, I think it's a plum miracle that astrometry.net. <laughs> yeah. Don't, hey, don't knock it. Why sharp cat? That's the first time sharp cat crashed. Remember the other, last month it crashed several times on me. So that's the first time it crashed this time. Camera is 533. Load sequence. Next target. Okay. Well, let's plate solve on that. Yeah, for some reason, it likes four seconds of exposure to plate solve. I don't know why all of a sudden it needs that, but. It used to plate solve in one second with no problem with this camera. Now all of a sudden it needs four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need blah, blah, blah. John, what, what, uh, what's happening in your world? Did you still have clouds? Yeah, I just went outside and uh make sure the telescope was pointing in the general direction of been 51. got it cloud covered but i'm i'll make it uh 
my mission tonight. Okay. To M51 through any holes in the clouds that might appear. All right. Tom, you still have clouds? Oh, yeah. It's raining. Oh, boy. How about Randy? Uh, can you guys hear in the observatory? Do you have the, the speaker on? Or Rye or Kai. Or Rye or Kai. <laughs> <clears throat> well, apparently not. Brian T. Anyways, Bri talking. Brian T. What about you guys? Um, what about you, Brian T. Have you still been imaging? Or Brian M. Frank, are you still there? I've oh, been there's, I've been there's... watching, but. It's still been cloudy outside, so I'm about How's to pack it? it in. Okay. Well, sorry about that, Brian. It was good. I'm glad there was a little bit of a break. So yeah, got something. Yeah, for sure. Is Frank still listening in? He was yeah, there. That's the exciting that's part. Pretty... Yeah, he was. How about Jeff Horn? I haven't heard much from you, Jeff. Have you been listening in? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just uh, crying in my scotch at the clouds. <laughs> oh, man, your post seemed to indicate you might have had a shot tonight. I thought I did. It was it was pretty good on a couple of sites. I think, it, I think it'll clear up in about an hour. Good. I've got both scopes set up, so we'll see. Good. That's a good image. Yeah, now, Mike, now you're just showing off. I didn't take any flats, obviously, as you can tell by the dark upper left corner and lower right corner, but. <clears throat> no, there's a lot of detail there. Not bad for one sub. <coughs> what ex what um, exposure are you doing? That's a 60 second exposure. Wow. You really must have a dark sky. Yeah, and uh, and you've been photo bombed by satellite public. Yep, of course, of <laughs> course. Now, if I had taken the time to learn how to use the photo the the satellite removal tool in SharpCap, I might try it, but I have not. <clears throat> yeah, I'm somewhere between Bortle two to Bortle three here. Uh, I'm um, uh, six point five. Do I have? Uh, that's that's a miracle, Doug. <laughs> I, Doug, I think you prayed extra hard for that miracle. Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Geometry that, not pulling that out of the, pulling that rabbit out of the hat. I think it was the extra tree in the or the line, the electrical line in the bottom left, that really <laughs> helped it. to shot it over the edge. Yep, that's right. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Oh, and I don't even have the enhancements on. Dang it. That's right, because it crashed. Yeah, that'll look better. Boy, when I started in the year 2000 with a, a C8, um, just straight visual, it was so lonely of a hobby. And you'd be out there at like somebody's field or some deserted road at some dark sky site and you would think you would hear noises of people coming up with you know butcher knives and axes and shotguns in the middle of the night and boy it was just creepy and this is such a different world now <laughs> yeah I, just, I had the armadillos attacking last time if i remember yes that's right yeah you did say that i remember that i remember the armadillo attack <laughs> That may be the first armadillo attack on an astronomer in recorded history. Yeah.
51 is going to be down here somewhere. There it is. Exactly as seen. A lot of objects here, guys. I've just been puttering away one object after another straight through ever since you guys remember when I started. And I, I'm just now at the 45th line. I mean, there are a lot of targets here. Yeah. Yep. And you're a better man than I because I'm I'm probably going to go in and grab a little something to eat. Well, to be fair, my wife brought my dinner for me tonight, so. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. She called, she texted and asked what I'd want from Subway, so. <laughs> she was cooking, huh? <laughs> That's right. Hey, it's great. You get room service in your observatory as well. I know. Isn't that great? Oh, 108. Oh, 108 doesn't have. Oh, it's definitely a good one there. Just a low contrast. That's a good, okay one. I guess I actually don't need to be hogging the share here. <laughs> yeah, like Doug, you're shooting stuff. You might as well, yeah, somebody who's actively shooting might as well take. Well, you're you're actively shooting too, Mike. But yeah, I I guess we could ask if anybody else is imaging. Anybody else got active imaging going on? Um, I'm just just pottering around. Yeah, Bob, why don't you show us one? Um, I've just finished imaging uh, 63, not particularly uh, good, but um, hang on a moment. Um, oh. Nice. So yeah, fly past. Yeah, you had photo bombed. <laughs> Nice. <clears throat> um, I was going to look at um, triplets, I think. Mm -hmm. 66, 65. 65, 66.
Amazing hobby. Uh, how's um, YouTube um, subs, uh, basically people still watching? Uh, yeah. Um, is there are five, <clears throat> five active, I believe, but I think, yes, although... It is kind of an old image, so maybe refresh that. I was able to get a picture of M51 that was good enough to annotate. Oh, good. You, want, I don't to show think it? Want, to see it. you want to show us? Oh, okay. Yeah, it says we've been going eight hours, and there are five watching now. One of those is mine, I'm sure. <laughs> Bob, you want to, uh, was that you, John? Yeah. Uh, Bob, do you mind if we let John show us? No, name? no. Yeah, no, no. Right. You carry on. So I, I, okay. I don't know how to um, swap. John, uh, um, John, go ahead out. So, yeah, go ahead. But I'd like to I'd like to make my entry for the uh, least impressive <laughs> <laughs> night. So but it plate solved and it annotated. So what do you think? <laughs> it's coming up. I can't stand the uh, oh yeah. Mm. Whoa. Wow, that's through the clouds, isn't it, John? Yeah. That's amazing. It's still there. So <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. Benefit of the doubt, I think, is what they're given these. Ah. <laughs> Do you remember, uh, Bob, last year we reached a point in which, you know, there just weren't any others to do after a while, right? Yep. I haven't gotten uh, to that point yet. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you, you learn. Um, uh, plus you did, well, I mean, totally um, um, clouded in on you know, March. You know, it's true that last year we were, you were assigning us different targets. Uh, yeah, because I was clouded in and I seem to recall that um, I also ran the channel for a little while because okay. you had to go away. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, uh, what do I say now? <laughs> yeah, I think I was setting up, and you had to you had to run it while I was setting up. Yep. And look where you are now. Oh yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure having more fun. That's for sure. What about in the observatory, Randy? Can you hear us? Guess not. Yeah, maybe if Randy would be willing just to do a quick walk through the observatory just to show the equipment. That would be kind right. of neat. Right. I can't get their attention, though. Where is that observatory? It's in uh, like about 40 miles from Sacramento in a place called Placerville. 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 Place, yeah. Placerville. 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 Okay. There you go. Hi, Doug. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kim. How are you? I'm good. I'm hey, back. welcome back, Kim. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, managed to get a few hours sleep, but uh, good. 
just had lunch, so I'm back in business. Now, um, I had a quick look at the notion sheet. Does that mean we're, we've actually completed it? We have, Kim. Can you believe it? Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, it was a, a really a dramatic M74. Uh, it had gone past all of Europe and all of the eastern United States. And just by chance, the way it was set up, most people uh, didn't have clear skies in western United States. It came down to one guy, <laughs> Mike Jerry. Oh, and yeah. uh, he had a nice uh, three degree uh, western sky. But I tell you what, it, it was so bright. Just the sun was everywhere. And he fought and he fought. And finally, everybody was uh, looking over his shoulder, asking him, have you tried this? Have you tried this? What if you tried this? And to Mike's credit, he did not get mad at anybody. And we were all asking him questions from all different directions. And man, at the very last second, he said, you know, I think I see it right there. And we were all kind of looking over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. We, can. But it was so... It was so bright that we wondered, were we imagining it? And so we made him send it into astrometry.net. And sure enough, there it was plotted exactly where he'd seen it. So we're counting it. We're, we're, <laughs> we're counting it, brother. Huh. That's, it. Yeah, That's, all, good. That's great news. In all the excitement, someone muted themselves. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had my uh, channel muted from eating a cookie. <laughs> and, Finally, somebody asked, where's Doug? He should be excited by now. And I was hooping and hollering. And they had missed it all. <laughs> huh. Huh. Okay. Well, I, I haven't actually. Well, that's, that's a great outcome. Um, yeah. Congratulations to yeah. everyone involved. I, um, I was just, I've just come in now, just set up my computer again. I haven't I'd torn it down since uh, after yesterday, last night. Yes. And I've just set it up and I'm just dragging all my images across. Good. Them. Yeah, we need that. So, I'm just looking at them all, and uh, how many have I got? But a hundred, well, there's about a hundred or so. But there's a couple of doubles in there. No, that's fantastic. So I'm just going to process them out now, meaning right. not process the images, but rename them. Yes, right. <laughs> so they just come over with come across with generic image names, and uh, it's got today's date on it. But I think that must be embedded. The actual date must be embedded in the file. I'll just yes. check that. Just open it up. Info. Um, yeah, oh, no, it's just got the date. I dragged them over. Uh, well, it was all done online, I guess. I've just pulled them out of the photo app I've got. All right. Uh, I'll go about um, naming them shortly and uh, uploading them. Sounds good. All right. So I'm going to. I'll, I'm just going to, I'll be listening, but I won't be able to participate okay. when I do that. Sounds good, Kim. All right. Okay. Cheers, folks. Thanks. So John's got clouds. Tom's got rain. Randy's, Randy, are you hearing there in the observatory? Looks like Jonathan's. Welcome, Jonathan. Hey there, can you hear me okay? Yes, now you've been back a couple of times since the birthday dinner, right? No, I just, well, I had jumped on YouTube waiting for us, everybody to get ready to leave and was just kind of watching you guys on YouTube. But oh, I see. But I have not been on the Zoom call until just now. Got you, well, welcome. Cool. So where are we at? You know, uh, we're getting like, better images where we can and we're also just doing them on our own because believe it or not by god's grace we have all 110 we managed to get m74 huh? I, looked, yep. I was like that was i saw when you guys got uh 70 uh well was it seven yeah seven yes yeah and uh but I, it looked like 74 was the last one that we were trying to get the last time i looked yeah i was just sharing with kim it was very difficult um I was, I jokingly refer to the fact that we were all looking over Mike Jerry's shoulders. It was all, it was all down to Mike because he was the last time zone. And 
every one of us was arm cheering with him saying, now, have you tried this? Would you plug this in? Unplug that. <laughs> to his credit. I mean, there are some personalities that would have just irritated them to death, especially since Mike's an experienced yeah. amateur astronomer. But yeah, he, didn't, no. he, didn't, he didn't get mad. He stayed in the game. And sure enough, he finally, he finally got an image that he could see. And we had him uploaded to astrometry to verified it and it was exactly where he saw it so it was awesome awesome you there astronomy is a team sport yeah it is i i'm i was telling my wife at dinner i'm like next year or, or at least one of these next couple of years i want to try to do this like as a team but i also want to try to do it individually too at yeah. the same time that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going through and doing as many objects as I can. I didn't get M74. So no matter what, I know I'm, I'm one, one off <laughs> from the beginning. Uh -huh. So what's, uh, let's see, where, let's see, the only bad thing about the, the iPad, one bad thing about the iPad is like different things. So I'm trying to think where I want to pick up here. Get the notion site up who else is on the call at this point just you or uh no we have john rogers uh he's out in california we have um, randy is with rye and kai at an observatory in placerville tom's still hanging out with us from florida even though it's raining uh, mike is still on doing imaging from death valley and we've also got uh Brian, I think, I think Brian's still imaging from uh, Linden, Tennessee, and Jeff is still trying to get through the clouds out in Billings, Montana. Bob, believe it or not, is still imaging from from over in the uh, UK, and uh, Kim is uploading his files from down in Australia. Okay, all those guys are monitoring. Cool. Um, I pretty much lost um, everything now. Um, okay uh um, my guiding is um gone to hell um and focus uh because of cold so i'm just uh resetting everything uh, and by the time i've done that i think the sun is going to be coming up okay so it's uh 5 18 a.m all right wow you better get an hour of sleep no i'll do that tomorrow oh no i'll do that later <laughs> on today it already is tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, go ahead. What's that, John? Uh, I was going to say, what the time zones, the time on these, is that the, uh, is that the set time on the, on the, on the Notion uh, workbook, the sets time, is that Eastern or? Um, well, I guess it would be to your time zone, right? It, it's in, it's an approximate time in your time zone. Right. But it's going to vary a little bit because of time zones. Right. right. Got it. We ought to um, probably ought to keep um, somebody imaging. Um, I'll just go through one cycle, and then by that time, John, I bet you'll be able to go through a cycle. Okay. Okay, so I'll go through um, one cycle here. Hmm. I guess I'll just do my whole screen. I wonder if I think I want to do screen two. See if this works. So I just finished this. <laughs> just finished this. So that what I've been doing is. See, M. Uh, oh, it says Zoom quit unexpected. Huh. So let's see. Let's go to. Um, it's um, too much for what I've got running here, isn't it? It's giving Zoom a, a running. 
Cyborg. Hey, could I get someone who's on a laptop potentially to go mark, just put like my name, like, or just J O N or something like that in the, like on M1 for me? And then I'm hoping after someone puts it on there, I can pull it up. Sure. Not able to seem, I don't seem to be able to do it from. Sure. Yeah. Let me try getting the app. That might help. Yeah, the read only version. Is Is it, is it John Rogers? Jonathan Betts. Yes. Jonathan, hang on. Uh, I, I just added you, John. Okay. Would well, you guys remember how poor that M51 shot I had? Did you just barely see it? Yes. But I can't believe it that SI Air, they started a live stack and it's actually aligning all the images and stacking them. Oh, good. I've just been using um, Preview, I'm just taking a single shot. It's amazing to watch, you know, more and more stars appear through the clouds with each stack. That is amazing. More activity at the observatory. I know. I saw that. It's like I think there's a rave going on or something. Dance, <laughs> dance party or something. Yeah, Doug, I've managed to upload two images just to test out uh, the process, and they, they went up Great. fine. One was, one was for M1, one was for M35. Great. I'm actually copying the FITS file name and just pasting it uh, in place of the JPEG default file name, and I'm just adding my name at the end of it. So that has in there the number of exposures, the duration, the gain, um, the date and the time, to uh, and the temperature um, of the sensor. All right, so I'll keep going. I've only done two, and I'll, I'll go keep All going. All right. Back, in, back soon. Cheers. Sounds good. Doug, I'm um, struggling to uh, keep the eyelids um, yes. from uh, being affected by gravity. Um, <laughs> congratulations, um, um, uh, everyone. Um, really appreciated that uh, you let me play, even though um, I, I just added to what already good uh, content. So have a good night, everyone. Look forward uh, to seeing the results. And... Um, uh, um, Good luck with your editing, Doug. Oh, thank you so much, Bob. You were great. And it's always great to have you here. I'm so glad you made it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and um, good night from the uh, UK. Sounds good. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Doug, should I share or? Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you? I've just left my thing going. So that's 28 minutes on N51, by the way. And I'll oh, my stop goodness. sharing now. That's I fantastic. Just have, I just have left it going. That's fantastic.
You guys able to see my screen or no? Not yet. Nope, not yet. Okay. There we go. I got to hit the right button. Yeah, there you go. All right. So I started with M1 and pulled up. Now I'm doing M35. So probably won't do this one for long because it's a star cluster. Probably only 15 seconds. So I'm shooting with my hyperstar. There we go. Whoa. Like my my filters maybe I don't know I took a flat maybe I take my flats off because it doesn't look like it's quite right tonight. Mm, it doesn't look bad. No. There we go. Probably a little too long in the. Three second. Uh -huh. I heard there's a new version of the ASI Air Live or the ASI Air app. I mean, huh? The ASI Air Pro, but it didn't get yeah. uh, online. You have to go to the, to do the beta. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's got like a a sky atlas concept. Yeah. Frame your helps you frame your. Uh... There we go. That looks a little better. You get some yeah, the yeah. The the latest version was released last night. I noticed when I got home. So it's out of beta. There we go. Hmm. Probably close enough. Yep, looks good. Got a pretty cool annotate feature too. Cool. All right, what's next? I guess I should probably try to upload too.
I've been trying to use sharp cap lately and six three and stuff like that because I, I I having a hard time getting the six three to work with my. SI. I got a shot of one oh eight up. If anybody wants to see it. That um, that looks like Jonathan's screen, isn't it? Probably is mine, but someone else can steal it. No worries. Yeah. You want to um, you want to let Mike show a one hundred eight, John? Do I have to stop in order for someone else to do it? Yes. Yeah. There you All go, right. Mike. Stop. Nice. Yeah, nice. It's fun. What have you got on, Doug? What's that? What have you got up right now? I am working on 98. didn't work for me to share my full screen. It was too much for Zoom. You're scratched. Your image is too good. <laughs> no, we're just too many things going on at once. <laughs> Well, I can say that after doing March and doing this one and having March being uh, at some points being the only one imaging and then tonight not being able to image at all, I'd much rather be uh, yeah. the March one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. M98. Nearly edge on spiral galaxy in the Virgo cluster resembles a thin, elongated glow with a star like nucleus. Larger telescope and dark skies begin to reveal subtle detail. In photographs, the nucleus is reddened by obscuring dust from M98 spiral arms. One of the few. I think the observatory is on. Oh, yeah, good. Hey, guys, uh, we are here at the observatory. We're just finishing out our public night. And we've got some people here that want to say hello. Good. We've, we've imaged about 40 objects so far, and uh, we've got a crew uploading them. And so. That's awesome. Let's just go around the room. You want to say your name? Okay. 
<laughs> we have a shy one here. Okay, and we're we're in we're in our back room here. And we are displaying our objects. Let me let me kind of point the telescope or the camera that way. I don't know if you can see that, but that's our big screen TV that we are displaying objects on. Brian is in there operating our C14 scope. Nice. That was M109, uh, 15 seconds, eight frames. <laughs> so nice, nice shot there. Nice. Anyway, uh, just thought you were about to kick the public out. So <laughs> take advantage of that and then we're gonna continue on. We are so glad that we are so glad that you all have been there helping. Thanks for pitching in. We were able to finish, uh, grab at least a sample object of all 110. So, all right. If you want to get their names, if you want to get their names down, we can mention them in the submission we do to the SEDS database. Uh, well, I'll, I, we, you will at least get all the all of our helpers' names. Okay, that's up to you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and just a little bit after after things calm down here, I'll switch to my uh, to my cell phone and I'll walk you around the observatory and show you okay. the scopes and our setup. Okay? That sounds great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. See you. You say he gets like a hundred people. Hundred. Yeah. It's great. It's crazy, isn't it? It's great. He wasn't kidding. He just kicked them all out. I know. He's <laughs> just. He wants to get to his plane wave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here he goes again. Guys, uh, we think we had about 75 people tonight. I don't know if you can see this, but this is our chart that we're filling out as we image stuff. That's fantastic. And we're about to go ahead and add a second scope to our imaging system here in the next half an hour or so. That's fantastic. So hopefully we'll be able to, to grab even more. But Sounds we've great. A, we've got a team in the office up doing the uploads and a team on the scope. And I'm here telling the public what we're looking at. Make sure, like I say, if they're willing and they don't mind, make sure you get their names for the submission to SEDS. Okay. Okay. Michael, I thought you left. You're back. Oh, I had, I managed to plate and solve my last one. So I oh. did get N41 after all. I thought, thought I'd managed to skip it somehow or lose it, but I seem to have it. Oh, good. So I just, I just thought I'd pop in just for a bit of moral support. Oh, that's great. Um, we have, we have apparently managed to successfully image everything. So that's I would right. like people to think that there's no point in continuing on because we have a shot of everything. Well, we totally understand how that, how you would, because you already gave your whole nightfall. <laughs> yeah, I missed the first part because we, well, in part because we'd agreed that I was going to start at the same time as uh, Kim, so I couldn't right. have a shot at the earlier objects. I was also out, out to my um, in, um, wedding anniversary dinner, which was postponed from February because we uh, we actually got COVID for our anniversary, which wasn't oh, very nice. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. So we went out to celebrate last night, which was great. We went to a the revolving restaurant at the Sky Tower in Auckland. Nice. And got some beautiful views of the sunset oh, um, across across Rangitoto, which is a dormant volcano 
and wow. then out to the east and everything. Yeah, cool. And then I came back and it was it was completely cloudy while I was out there. And then I came home and then the clouds were sort of half clear. So I started and then they, they sort of cleared up. So I wouldn't have been able to image anything at that time anyway. Yeah. So I didn't actually miss out anything. I'd had a really nice meal and a very nice Kentucky Derby cocktail and all sorts. So oh, nice. that's how I started my night. I just made sure I didn't have to, so much to drink that I couldn't actually operate a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> but, if you, but if you are going to be drunk in charge of the telescope, then an EV scope is definitely the one to use. Nice. Yeah, hey, I was thinking um, it might be a nice idea if we could actually get um, everybody who's participated to just put on a photo of their um, setup. That's a great idea. And maybe with a few details of, uh, of of what they're doing. And that would also give a, a bit more context to some of the images. Yeah, oh, that's a great um, there's, idea. There's some beautiful, beautiful rigs out there. And there's some very, very slick setups too. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure how I not sure how much work it's taken to get some of those go, going, but there must be many, many, many hours or days <laughs> or months or years of effort to, to, to get to, to get it to that level of refinement. Yeah. Well, where do you want those uploaded, Doug? In uh, Notion. Okay. Maybe you could add another line for, for um, um, imaging rig photos. That's a good idea. It's uh, it's different because the database we have now is of uh, of objects, but you're just saying put in a line after all the objects for the people. Yeah, assuming it, assuming it might mess up your processing of those of the mesa images. But you're right. That would be really interesting. Um, I'd also be really interested just to know um, just a bit about the technical background of people who participated. You made a comment sometime in the middle last night that you know we're all IT or software developers or involved in computer technology or something like yeah. that. But I'd be interested to see. Um, because obviously EA and astrophotography does have a, a um, technical hurdle to get over to get started. Yes. And yeah, anything that can be done to make it simpler would um, definitely broaden its appeal. Right. Yep. And you see it often enough in the forum, people come in and you know getting guidance to how you set up, and before you know it, they're being recommended to spend ten thousand dollars on equipment and putting <laughs> guide and getting a fourteen-inch and a hyperstar and bloody bloody blah. It's like all I want to do is look at the sky, and I got to do this. That's true. Yeah, it's wow. the reality. The reality is that, you know, if you get an old as mount with a cheap Astro cam and a short to tube refractor or a camera lens, you can do EAA. That's yeah, all you that's need. Right. You know, you won't be doing fancy plate solving and guiding and um, finding N74 what three degrees above the horizon in desperate conditions, but, you know, I mean, uh, you'll, see, you'll see a hell of a lot. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? And that's a beautiful image. Nice, Al. It is. That's stunning. Oh, Al Nebula? That is 108 and 97. Awesome. So what's your field of view on that one? I'm at uh, 600 millimeters of focal length with the 533, which is just a titch over a degree square. Oh, that's just lovely. Yeah, so I can't see the L nebula from where I, I am. I don't think it rises. I'll just check. That was one was off my list. That's what M108. What's your scope, Mike? I see diffraction or spider diffractions on the stars. It's um, an F4 imaging newt. Which is ah. a F4 imaging newt. Got it. Nice. Yeah, so. So I'm told that this object never rises or sets from my location. So I'll have to go to North America to see it. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Michael. It's Kim here. Oh, hi. You got some sleep? Got about four hours, which was more than adequate. <laughs> 
Yeah, I got maybe three and a half, four, something like that. Yeah, I think actually so working, working, I think actually working in darkness, I think, kind of helped. Yeah, I think it does. I, uh, I'm busy uploading. I've uploaded about a dozen so far. Hey, I see, I see yeah. your name, a name against a few of these, but there doesn't appear to be an image. Well, no, sorry, there is an image uh, against some of these that we did last night, I think, but your name doesn't appear there. Uh, you might want to um, just check the Notion page. I'm just uploading at the moment as I go. Yeah, yeah, I tried to make sure, but I might have missed. I think Brian was helping at one stage. I think I jumped in there as well. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a pretty good job of lining my name against images. If you see anywhere, there's an image that's obviously from an EV scope with the overlap or my name isn't there, if we could just tag it. I've seen, I've seen my name against a few images and I hadn't uploaded anything until this morning and I, um, I'm sure they're not my images as I'm doing them now. Um, so there, there might be someone's left their name off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, most yeah. of mine have got the overlay from the EV scope, so the I think it was the only person running oh, an EV scope on this course. one. That makes it easier. Yeah, you yeah, had a few that didn't have the overlap, so I get a wider field of view, and then most of those that needed to plate solve to figure out what they were, <laughs> which oh, wasn't oh. very good. Which wasn't very good planning. Yeah, I hand wrote everything I, I shot last night, and I'm just going through my fits file names now, and I'm copying that yeah. file name into the image. File name yep. and uploading the JPEGs, and um, yeah, it takes quite it takes quite a long time, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm up to M47. I'm doing M48 next. Yep. I've just uploaded M47. Okay, that's up now. After M48, so it's yeah, it's quite a um, bit of a tedious process, but it's got to be done. Yeah, the eight. upload's actually pretty quick. I found the renaming, the yeah. identifying and re and renaming was the most time consuming because the um, the EV scope tags if you have the overlay it puts the object name exposure time coordinates and stuff on the image itself yeah. but it doesn't tag, it only tags the time in the file so you've got no idea what when you have to just have to open the image to take a look at it then manually annot annotate which is a bit painful yeah, the preview images that i got they're only 500k each um but they, they're quite nice um the fits files are much larger of course Yep. But um, the FITS files have all the data in them, including, uh, I'm just doing M93 now, including the file names. But the preview images that are saved don't appear to have, uh, well, don't have a file name. They're just given generic names like image XYZ. Yep. So I'm just correlating yep, that, Yeah, that FITS format, there's a, there's a NASA spec or something that I looked at for one of those. It's, it's quite remarkable the amount of metadata that's put in there. It is. So proper proper astronomy, proper fits file for astronomy will have the um, the uh, right ascension declination of the object and a whole pile of other information. Yeah, so in the interest of not processing anything further from last night, I'm just using the images that were grabbed last night as preview images and uploading those. But I'm changing, yeah. I'm changing the file name to basically it's Messier number, uh, underscore the number of exposures by, times by the, num um, the duration of exposure. Uh, the bin, the gain, um, the date and the time and the temperature and hyphen my name on the back end. Um, That's a, a great level of detail. Yeah, so that's, um, yeah, I, I usually use, I, yeah, I usually, yeah, I usually use ASI live for live stacking. I don't have an ASI here, so it's just using the camera direct and that puts all that information in the file name. And it's just so, so handy when you um, come back to do any image processing to try and figure out what's going on. Yep. Just having all that information on there. Did you use binning um, during the night, just out of interest? Oh, no, I just went straight, straight bin, one bin. Yeah. But then I, oh, should, yeah. I, should, I could have done that, but um, no, I just went with bin one. Yeah, you, you seem to be getting some pretty uh, good images fast on those galaxies, like 60 seconds was giving you some quite nice images on galaxies. Indeed. And that with a similar under my conditions, it was just like, uh, yeah, it's probably a galaxy. <laughs> Whereas yours, you've seen structure and all sorts of stuff. Well, we had a few amorphous blobs in the evening. <laughs> well, some of them are just amorphous blobs, and it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, there's another fuzzy. Oh, there's another fuzzy. I found that middle section to be rather tedious. The, um, wow. Once you get past the clusters and you get in most of the galaxies, you've got that long, long run of galaxies. That, um, a lot of them are just indistinguishable fuzz, fuzzballs. 
I was I was quite impressed with a few of them. I, I had never imaged them before and uh, never seen that amount of detail just on a EAA shot of you know five subs. And um, yeah. I, I want to go back and do finish some of those off probably. That will, that oh, there's cool. definitely quite a lot of those I want to, I want to return to, but. Mm -hmm. um, it's just this horrible compromise of, oh, it'd be so nice if I could give this a 10 minute or a 15 minute or a 20 minute exposure or whatever, but you just don't have the time. Mm. So you end up just seeing one barely recognizable fuzzy followed by another barely, barely recognized fuzzy. And oh. occasionally you get something really nice like a Southern Pinwheel or something where, you know, there's a, a really nice shape that comes out reasonably easily. Yeah, so that, that to me was the hardest, the hardest part of the night. Once you got through that and get to some of the globular clusters, then you and the imaging yeah. really quickly. I think the hardest part I found was, um, um, well, a couple of things. One of them, there were a couple of instances where I couldn't actually claim salt, and yet we were so dependent upon it, right? And uh, and the image was there. You just had to cancel the claim salt, and there it was, centered. Uh, there's just no nearby stars yep. uh, for a couple of the objects. Um, but yeah, the data, the image was there, so that worked well. Um, I found it, um, yeah, I had to click manually, I had to mentally make a note to click the down arrow on the ASI Air app to grab the preview image, which is what, I, which I, which is what I'm submitting. And I missed yep. it on two occasions, had to go back, including on M42, would you believe? But that's quite easy yeah. to image. <laughs> Anyhow, so... Yeah, that, uh, that, whole, that whole workflow thing is quite tricky because, you know, if you're, if you're dependent on actively having to do something to get the image out, and you try to do it at four o'clock in the morning after you've done like seven the images or something like that. It's like, yeah, mistakes will happen. That's why I'm naming the files now. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do this copy paste thing last yeah. night. Which will, I'm just doing M95 now, just naming it. And it's quite easy just copying the Fitz file name out. Yeah, I was just going through just to see how many I managed to um, capture. I still don't know how many I've got last night. I haven't counted. All right. Um, yeah, so that's all I had for now. I'm just going to keep plugging away here. Um, I've, got a, I've done about a dozen or so. I've got pages to go. Well, I might grab a drink and uh, get on with it. Hey, Doug, are we, uh, are we rolling for how long, do you think? Several hours more? Yeah, if the West Coast people want to keep... Um keep imaging i said we would just stay on with them till you know their daylight which would be 7 a.m their time so that would yeah. be another nine hours i bet uh -huh. i'm asking because i do we have to upload the images during this whole session or can we do it afterwards no if 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 you i mean it would be great if we could get to them in the next couple of days though but uh -huh. no if okay I'm, I'm planning to do it today i've got a few okay minutes, yeah so no problem going. But, um, no problem. Yeah, right. It's easier than I thought it would be. Good. All right, I'll just uh, disappear for a moment. And I'll All right. Plug it away. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So I've just done my tally, and I've got approximately seventy-five Mesia objects imaged. Nice. Uh, between eleven p.m. and six a.m., which is roughly twelve an hour. That's fantastic. Which probably explains why I didn't get that sleep break that I thought I was going to get. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes probably, I'll have to time it actually, but I think it probably takes uh, one and a half, two minutes for the EV scope to, once you've told it, told it to go to a target, to actually find the target, right. plates all, right. center it, and then be ready to image. And then um, you know, the clusters, sorry, the open clusters, 30 seconds would be okay. Globular clusters, one right. minute's okay. Sometimes two galaxies, sort of two to four minutes, depending on, on how much you're in there. So that kind of, there was a minimum, I suppose, an average time would be maybe four minutes for each of them. Yeah. Yeah, so that does put a limit on um, how fast how fast you can go. Right. Well, you guys sure churn. Lots, lots of sure. time to conditions and all sorts as well. So if, if your night doesn't go according to plan, it's very easy to get behind schedule, which is what happens oh, yeah. to stuff. Right. Hey, Doug, I don't want you to, you know, keep, uh, you know, the Zoom session open on my account. Uh, I don't know. Well, you know, Mike, Mike is think, having some success. So I, I think the guys in that observatory are going to want to image for a while okay. too. 
Yeah. So, so how many people have they got at the observatory for the session? They probably had at least 20 there, didn't they, guys? Well, they're just yeah. public, yeah. I think they still have four, four or five now. Yeah. And what time it'll be at the observatory? It would be, um, what, probably 10 o'clock Pacific time? Yes, 10 o'clock. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's a, a bit of a different experience. We have a, um, we've got the Auckland Stardome Observatory that the Auckland Astronomical Society runs. Mm -hmm. And they do planetarium shows. Because, of course, you can't guarantee the weather, especially in a place like this. Right. Um, but, yeah, just to actually go to an event where you're actually seeing people seeing these objects in real time you might not necessarily be sticking your eye up to an eyepiece to look through a telescope but you know it's quite a different experience from a planetarium show i think they let them look through a telescope because yep. they set aside the plane way for them to use while they were there i think yep it sounds like it sounds like an awesome setup yeah yeah, because as informative as the planetarium show is, it's it's not going out and looking at the night sky. Right. Now that is looking lovely. That was my last two images for the night, and I think I'm going to pack it in. Yep. So... Doug won't have to stay up late for me. Well, Mike, I don't very, mind. Very nice brought, images, Mike. I brought my sleeping bag, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we already know you get food delivery, so. Yes, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, these will be my last two, and I got I got a, actually a CPR recertification class tomorrow morning, so that's right. that I'm responsible for oh, running boy. as well as attending, so I mean, not, not that I'm teaching it, but I'm responsible yeah. for getting yeah. making it happen so yeah i can't be up all night mike so. thanks thanks for setting up in a spot where you could see a three degree west sky <laughs> yeah I've, I've never left my scope in the middle of my driveway for all day before but that's uh you know I think, well it worked out luckily it worked great <clears throat> clutch great job yep mr clutch not mr choke tonight <laughs> That's right. Absolutely, bottom of the ninth. <laughs> yeah. On your two last, down, last three down. Bases, bases loaded. Last pitch. Right. These two are tough to image together because eighty-two is so bright and eighty-one is so fine and wispy. But they are pretty nice together, though. Okay. Yes, it is. Does Sharp Cap have a, a feature to remove an image? Because I, I just spotted a satellite trail go through there a few frames ago. Actually, maybe even a second one. No. You were just talking about that. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to get Robin to put that in. When I'll click a button, it removes the last sub in the mm -hmm. stack. But so far, no luck. I suppose all you can do is, is go to the file monitor and, and then edit the images that are coming through. Which is almost live stacking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. ASO, ASO Live's got an undo last frame. So if you, uh -huh. if you watch it, you see it come through, you can hit the button and it will dump that last frame. Got a little undo button there, which yep. is quite handy. I'm hoping Robin will do that for a sharp cap too, but not yeah. so far. Or automatically detect them and just reject the frame. That would be even better. Yeah. Could be done, couldn't it, with a one of those full width hat maximum meters yeah well there's very few things in astronomy that are absolutely dead straight lines or dashed lines yes <laughs> i don't recall seeing that many um no. in any hubble photograph that's right doug i'm gonna have to bow out i've got to get uh my grandkid in the morning and take him to his hockey game so oh boy. Uh, okay um, I appreciate everybody doing such a great job and staying with it all day. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully do it again real soon. Let's look forward to it, Tom. And thank you for being a good, good night, sport Tom. And taking part with it. Night. Right. Good night, Tom.
fun. <clears throat> yep, I think it's time to just save this and be on my way to oh, eighty one eighty two. <clears throat> yep, stop the share. So when did galaxies actually get recognized as galaxies? Doug, you know your hmm. astronomical history? Well, I mean Messier, it was 1927 or 24, something like that. Messier did a good job uh, calling them splotches, but it wasn't until Herschel, right? I think Herschel was the one who actually resolved them enough to see that they weren't nebulae. No, that was, uh, was actually Hubble and the research. Hubble, 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 you're right, Hubble. Uh, it's not even 100 years. I think uh, we're coming up to the 100 year anniversary of that. And that essentially changed the notion of the scale of the universe overnight. Yes. Yeah, and then it got scaled up and up and up and up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Several times uh, several times over. The, yes. the age of the universe and the size of the universe. Right. To, tr to truly mind-blowing proportions. There was a, um, there was a presentation on the um, Astro Imaging Channel um, a few weeks ago by someone who tried to recreate Hubble's um, measurements of the Cepheid variable in the Andromeda galaxy. And he got remarkably close from his uh, own observations and own uh, imaging to Hubble's um, uh, uh, predict, um, measurements, measurement uh, data set. And the, um, yeah, the assess, um, what was assessed as the scale of the universe back in the day. So that was only about two or three uh, weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it was an um, excellent presentation. One of the best I've oh, seen. Yeah, ever. it was fantastic. and. It's also going to be a feature article in Astronomy Magazine, I believe, the August issue. That's right. I remember that was mentioned at the start. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's a great article and great presentation. Definitely worth following up on. But it's remarkable to think the, the whole notion of galaxies being very, very far away hasn't even been around for 100 years yeah. <laughs> in terms of that. Yeah. And certainly not sort of 10 to 20 billion light years. Because even those first estimates weren't put in them that far away. Mm. But the more the more you look, the more so that, you find. That, there was a big discovery, oh, a big I, I, discovery on nature, or really, um, an update on a recent discovery on, on ORCs, um, odd radio uh, circles, and these things. So there's a few of them being discovered to date. They're about they, their dimensions are about hundred times that of a galaxy, and they're around galaxies. <laughs> Uh, and what are they? What's what's the rationale? What's the, the science behind them? Um, we don't know. I mean, that one of them, I think there was a write-up in Nature this week about um, the science behind them and the research, uh, the discoveries recently. And we're having one of the uh, researchers is giving us a presentation to our local club. He's here in Australia um, later this year, so we'll get some more lowdown on that. But, yeah, the more you look, the more you find. And James Webb is going to take that to another dimension as well, of course. Yeah, it's one of those um, human bias things that you bias towards things that you can actually see or perceive. And, you know, we just perceive just such a tiny fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, almost nothing of the um, particle spectrum. You just took, I just took a look at that odd, odd radio circle. That is looking absolutely insane. <laughs> I've never heard of it. I'll, I'll take a look at that. That looks that looks absolutely fascinating. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mike. Well done. Good night, Mike. Good night, Mike. Congratulations Great. on your success. <laughs> Thanks. All right. See you on the forum. Sounds good. I'm going back to renaming files. Yeah, it takes it takes a while, doesn't it? Uh, I just I seem to do them in batches of six and I just have to stop and grab a drink. <laughs> I, must have been, I was struggling with the renaming this morning. I was thinking half the time I had to look at it twice to make sure I got it right. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. I'm cross-referencing some of the glob globulars with um, uh, images in a, in a book. So, yeah. Anyhow, I'll keep, I'll keep plugging away once I'll be here. Yeah. Um, to so that recreation of the Hubble data set, so that was done with an imaging rig rather than a large telescope, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Um, it was a 14, yeah, C14, that's right. Thanks, Thanks John. Yeah, so what, what was Hubble using at the time? 
Oh, I don't know. It is it is captured in the presentation. Or maybe it's a hundred inch. <laughs> yeah, they got some pretty big reflectors for a while there, but then they were using either visual or um, photographic plate for image for image capture. So you know, a massive, massive telescope, but a really inefficient detector. Yeah, I believe that was done with a hundred inch Hooker telescope. Man, it's hard to imagine a hundred inch, isn't it? And you can see equally deep with the. Uh, a 14 inch off the shelf yeah, Celestron telescope. Do, uh, uh, off the shelf yeah. technology nowadays and the algorithms and the software and the CPU uh, to push it along. Quite remarkable. Well, after that presentation, I actually went back to my the desktop uh, image that I have or the background image that I have on my computer of M31 taken with an 80 millimeter uh, refractor. Yeah. And I actually zoomed in where you know the b1 the first variable star that he discovered in m31 and it it was actually there i could see it and make it out yeah this this whole the area of um i suppose citizen science is one way of doing it, like calling it like amateur science um yeah the technologies getting there um the ev scope has its um, citizen science project I've only actually had my EV scope for about three weeks. I've been using a more conventional imaging rig for uh, the last nine or 10 months or so. Uh, but it just removes the barriers to doing those kinds of observations because with the, um, you're just following the procedures. You can uh, zoom to the target that you need. It sets up the game that you need. It does the observation. You make sure it takes a decent dark frame. And then you can submit um, information that can be used by Steady Institute or others to actually, you know, um, contribute to exoplanet discovery and other things. Um, so so my, I think we're here, my, Sorry, my, one of my colleagues here has an EV scope and he, he did just that for an exoplanet transit, suspected transit. Yep. So he participated in that, sent away the data. And yep. a few weeks later, he got the, um, the nice graphs came back uh, confirming he had actually observed the transit of the exoplanet and there was some data around it. So yeah, I did it. That yeah, it's yeah, it's it's really nice. It, the the whole system could still be a little bit slicker. That's still it's it is it works and it's fairly easy to do, but it could be a little bit slicker. But just that whole thing of sending things away and then they do the do the work and then it comes back and you can see the light curves that uh, have come that come back from you know the dip from the exo, exoplanet going in front of its star or whatever, and having your name attributed to particular observations. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a pretty neat thing to be able to do. Um, and it's also just really expanding what the a professional astronomers could do because they don't have sites scattered around the world. You know, they can't necessarily turn 50 telescopes at once onto one object because, you know, professional telescopes have got schedules and um, cost money. So it's a, a fascinating area to be uh, to be involved in. Yeah, yeah I did some observations of um, an exoplanet WASP-52B a couple of nights ago. I'm not sure. I don't think I followed the right procedure, so it might not be usable. Mm. But I did a asteroid observation a little while ago, and uh, it came back and let you see the ast asteroid streak uh, coming through. That was uh, just to try and refine an orbit of a planet. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, trying to uh, uh, refine the orbits of the asteroids. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's got huge potential because if it can get to the stage where it's um, gets beyond the um, ecosystem of you know an individual scope manufacturer and becomes like a, a wider standard where you know provided you choose a certain number of products or a certain number of products that comply or you assemble a rig that has these parameters it's like you can then you know do an easy observation have it submitted in a standard way to be used and especially if you could get remote control and scheduling and these kinds of things involved i mean then you could just say hey you know i've got a clear night Hit the button that says my scope is available to be used for anybody that wants to use it for scientific observation and then crowdsource it. And then you've got, you know, some professional astronomer who, you know, maybe can get, you know, 100 telescopes around the world looking at the same exoplanet at the same time, you know, at the press of a button or just by putting out a request. Mm. Uh, so there's, this no, whole... there's no shortage of exoplanets. It's what, around 5,000 or so at the moment. And um, none of them particularly well defined, I think. 
So by uh, drawing upon those resources, that in many cases have just been used, well, let's say to take pretty pictures. But you do find yeah, they're, they're not. Yeah, they're not running out of them. The rate of discovery is just accelerating. I think WASP 52B, I think that's like 1,200 light years away. So I, I just found it really mind boggling that just sitting here under light polluted skies with, mm. uh, with a um, four and a half inch telescope, I can make an observation of an exoplanet that's 1,200 light years away. <laughs> it's just insane. Mm. It just, it just shouldn't work like that. I mean, 1,200 light years, you know, it is an astronomically large distance. I mean, I know it's close compared to a lot of the other objects, but it's a long, long, long way away. And then to actually be able to make an observation of a planet going around a star at that distance, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Well, if you think about it, I mean, the, the telescopes, the EV scope and the Stellina, um, I mean, that is, in effect, uh, an ex the next generation that we're seeing now coming through. And you could actually have products produced that are certified to um, have the right filters in them, et cetera, to do observations of, uh, say, exoplanets, yeah. et cetera. And, it's, uh, and if you buy into that, if you want to buy that version, and uh, you buy into that whole idea, and I'm sure that's that's a marketable proposition, um, yeah. the, these devices will be out there. And you'll never have enough of them to capture all the data you need on exoplanets anyhow, and other, and other yeah. um, celestial phenomena. So I think there's a real market for that, actually. People want yeah, to get we just need to get a lot more of them into um, Asia and South America and Africa. Mm. Um, there's, uh, if you go to the Unistellar page, they have a uh, network. I'll just open it up and share it at some stage, actually. Um, so they have uh, everybody that um, registers their telescope. You can have yep. a geographic coordinates put on the map. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely a rich Western playground at the moment. For want yeah. of a bit of a word, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just pull up. Also, a community, uh, a community of users and uh, who want to contribute to citizen science. That's, that's the big differentiating factor from other program, yep. other scope manufacturers. I think. Yep. Yeah, so there's a citizen science. I mean, there's other ways of doing citizen science and astronomy. So there's ones that don't actually need any equipment at all. You just are getting involved in categorizing objects or doing analysis on um, on on images. Yeah, so well, this one's also sure. facilitated through a business uh, model as well, which is which is quite interesting. I'm sorry, yeah. This one, this particular uh, program, is it uh, facilitated through a business model, the citizen science program? Yeah. They basically created the the product and said, "Hey," and they market the fact that you can do citizen yep. science with it, and people buy into that. Yeah, so this is the current network of registered EVA users. So I'm one of about, I think, three in Auckland. I'm in contact with one of the ones and a few others. We've got a, a EVScope New Zealand page, which has all of 11 Facebook members. Mm -hmm. and we might have half the telescopes in New Zealand there, but you can see how um, Africa has none registered whatsoever. There's a handful in South Africa. And it pretty much follows the light pollution map. <laughs> To a, large, to a large extent. And Japan has a huge number of them. It's quite remarkable how many are floating around in Japan. And they've got some pretty high levels of light pollution through Japan. But, um, one, yeah. of the, uh, one of um, two days ago, um, someone local donated Navy scope to our club for use for educational outreach. Yep, um, oh, that's awesome. So we've, um, we have one, we're going to pick it up next weekend. Yeah, it's just so easy to use. I had a friend come over on Monday. We talked a little bit of astronomy, and I uh, actually went on a on cycle touring uh, around the Coromandel Peninsula, and we got to a site which would have been probably Bortal Two, maybe edging Bortal One, a beautiful beach camp site right at the end of the Coromandel Peninsula, and had a beautiful clear night. And Ryan was rising, and just said, "Oh, you just take your phone," because I told him about it. And you have the app, and then you just put it on on the ground, and you let it expose. And he uses his phone and gets some images of of, of the Orion Nebula, mm. just off a smartphone. Well, so I think, the, came demo, around. I think yeah. the demo you ran last night to capture M30 was just brilliant. I mean, you literally picked it up because it's so lightweight. You placed it somewhere under cover, I think, perhaps, or out. And you, it, yeah, I moved it and took an image. <laughs> Yeah, I moved it. I had to move it two or maybe three times. I, I'd had to retreat to 
actually having it just at the threshold of my garage in the east because of all the condensation. And that's when I was shooting with all the objects. And then as soon as, as soon as the window came to having um, M30 high enough, then I had to move it out. So I moved it out, telescope pointed right at the side of the house. So while it was still trying to acquire the target, I just picked it up, you know, didn't stop it. I just picked it up, moved it a bit further down the driveway, then it pointed into another part of the house, and then I finally moved it into a place where it could find it. Didn't even bother to level it. Um, so it would have been a little bit out of level at that stage. And then it just plate solved again, figured out where it was, and went back. And it was as easy as that. And with it being battery powered and portable, there were no cables to mess around or trip over with or whatever. And it was just, you know, grab it and move it. Um, so that's um, and that's one of the benefits of portability. So I've also got a imaging rig on an EQ35M equatorial mount, which, you know, as soon as you move that, you're gone. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what I was you know, give, give, it, give it too much of a bump and, you know, it's going to be 15, 20, 25 minutes before you've actually got it lined up again. Yeah, that well, kind of thing. There's my rig. That's what I was using last night. You can see the large building observatory in the background. So I was on a concrete pad in the foreground. Yep. So at least it was hopefully level. Well, I leveled the whole thing and it was obviously fine. Um, but I, um, that's what I had out last night. And um, you can see the Ethernet cable. I had to resort to using Ethernet after the Wi-Fi sort of started. It was becoming a bit flaky. Yep. Uh, and I was inside in a hut the whole time. Um, but no, you cannot pick that up and move it at all. I can't. It's way too heavy. And, oh, and then um, as, soon as, as soon as you do, the alignment's completely gone and you have to re-level. Oh, or yeah, you've got a um, polar line, line and everything. Like there is excellent, uh, very quick, yeah. but um, it's still a pain. But the thing yeah, is, you it's can't. Not, it's not automatic. Do you have to manually adjust the, um, the, uh, the two yeah. axes? Yeah, you do. But you yep. sit there. I did it last night. It took a bit longer last night. It took me about six minutes to do that. Yeah, um, no, it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot of time, but it, it sort of chews into the imaging time. Yeah, yeah with the AV scope, it's like if you know I can stick my head out, and if I've got a patch of sky that is clear, and I want to image something in that, then I just point the scope into it and say plate solve, and that's it. You know, I can image in that patch of sky. You know, and if ten minutes later the uh, clouds move in, I can you know put it away or choose to find find another target. It's just so frustrating when you set up your rig, and by the time you set it up, the clouds have rolled in, or you start to imagine, and then you're chasing objects for the rest of the night while the clouds are rolling in. It's like I've had a few nights, a few nights like that, but it gets pretty discouraging. So, is anyone actually imaging anything at the moment? Uh, I am. Yeah, I've got right, something let's see too. Let's see it. Let's see it. Share away. I'm doing. Um, let's see. Let me get um, first. This is um, the planetarium software. Um, and right now I'm doing, uh, it's a part of Markarian's chain. So starting here with M90. Uh, so let's see. And it would be um, this frame here. No, this frame. That's the 178. be this, this frame. Yeah. Um, such a wide angle, but it's so full of, um, of galaxies. Let's uh, annotate it. How about that would be the easiest way to see what yeah. we're looking at here. Um, I got my first look at this region a, a few weeks ago then when I had my first attempted me uh, mesi marathon because this is the so, since i only started imaging about nine months ago this is the first time this area of the sky has come around to be viewed it is. so it's just it's amazing just, to it's crazy, see a galaxy it? but a galaxy next to it and then nudge a little bit there's another galaxy and then another exactly. galaxy 
exactly. That's just amazing. I mean, M89 is the, the main one I was going for, but it's just an ocean of galaxies, isn't it? Yeah. And those are all outside the plane of the Milky Way. So presumably there's a, a whole pile behind the Milky Way and we just can't see them. Right. That's at, that's actually like a, looks like a little elliptical blob galaxy, doesn't it? So, but anyway, <clears throat> that's what I'm grabbing now. Who else? Yeah, Jeff, so what are you imaging? What's what that? are you imaging on? What are you imaging on? What's your setup? It's the Rasa 11 um, with, in, in that observatory you see in my little frame. Yep. That's actually a live view of it there in the lower right. Um, the, the second image up on the lower right, that's a live view of it. Rasa 11 on an Ioptron CEM70G mount in a PeerTech uh, observatory with a PeerTech um, adjustable height uh, peer. Yeah, and what's the camera? It's a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. Wow! So you've got the you've got the Cadillac there. I don't know. It 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 sure is fun. That's for sure. Oh yeah, it's a that's that's my, is that a full frame sensor or getting up there? It's APS-C. Yep. So you've got both hyperstar. So you're imaging at what's your focal length? Seven hundred or something? Uh, six. 40, I think, and the focal ratio is f2.2. Yeah. So what's your field of view? One and a half degrees or something? Yeah, Two it's degrees. almost yeah, it's almost exactly that. Um, yeah. And then you can obviously digitally zoom in quite a way yeah, with that quite a ways. resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys want to see 32 minutes of M51 through clouds? Oh wow! Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. How bad were the clouds? <laughs> uh, well, I showed the first image before that actually plate solved and annotated where M51 was, but you couldn't see anything there in the first image. But this is after, this is a stack of 32. So let me bring that up here. You guys see it? Yep. Yeah. Looks like a world pool to me. I'm convinced. Yeah. That's awesome. That's with the uh, William Optics uh, Xenostar 82 ED with a, a focal reducer, field flattener, and a Nikon D600 unmodified full frame uh, imager. Nice. So, but I was looking at Astro and it's supposed to be clearing up here in the next hour or so. So it looks like between 11 and one, it's predicting uh, uh, clear skies for me here. So I'll continue to press on just to nice. see what I can get. How about you, Jeff? Yeah, I've got um, about 10 minutes on the beehive cluster. Oh, that's beautiful. Finally getting some work done. Good. And my other rig is on the needle galaxy, but we won't show you that one. Oh, wow. That's not in the M thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're allowed to, the odd one. That's right. I think that's enough on that one. Yeah, the, the Mesia catalog does seem to be a bit of an exercise in frustration because it's like stuff that was always hard to see and always fuzzy yeah. rather than let's choose a bunch of objects that are actually nice to see and yeah. easier to resolve. And, yeah. It's true. So I'm looking forward to a Caldwell marathon at some point. All That'll right. Really nice well, let's do it.
Yep, might as well. I'm not sure if there's an optimum time for it. I had to take a look at the yeah. um, distribution of RA and DEC yesterday, and it's, it doesn't seem to be any obvious time of year when it's going to be better than any other. So maybe just have to have a few a year. Yeah, probably so. So I think we need some um, spherical sensors because the one of the big breakthroughs in um, astrophotography when they were doing play, uh, film photography was um, having curved plates or curved film. Hmm. So you could use a, a spherical mirror. Wow. Um, so the Smith, uh, the old Smith cameras, which is yeah. where a lot of the images used to be yeah. done in the sort of 1940s, 50s and 60s and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason they worked was you could have your um, photographic film in a sphere so you didn't have uncorrected coma from a spherical mirror. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, so if we can just persuade Sony to make a, a spherical sensor. I don't know how they'd manage it with the current <laughs> chip making technology. It's a great idea. It's all been designed to make things super flat down to nanometers or something like that. But I've got a curved oh. monitor in front of me. Yeah, you have? Yeah. So they're, they're doing it with monitors. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine what the next breakthrough is because we, you know, we're seeing um, some very fast focal length telescopes or systems coming through, but they cost a premium. Hyperstar is very expensive. You can get down to about F4 without... Uh, on small sensors without too much difficulty, but getting much further than that's a lot harder. Yeah, um, well, Doug's down to two, right? Yep. Yeah. But your Hyperstar is what, $1,400 US dollars or something? For the, uh, uh, yeah, you're on the RASA. For your, you can have a Hyperstar on a system that'd be like $1,200, $1,400, but the RASA itself is a is a, quite a premium price scope. It is. Yeah. But I'm just imagining if. You know, if you could have a a, a um, curved sensor, then you could use much simpler uh, mirrors oh. to generate a coma-free image. Or if someone had come up with a cheap corrector that you could use on some of these small telescopes. Because could you imagine, you know, citizen science using uh, an EV, EV scope device that actually works at F1 or F2? And costs say five hundred US dollars. Wow, that's great. You know, could you imagine you know more better performance or similar performance to your Rasa system for five hundred bucks? Oh my goodness, that would be radical. Well, years ago, I couldn't imagine the you know quality of images coming out of iPhones. And look how true. small that sensor is, and look at the resolution you're getting. It's just uh, it's mind boggling how they're able to do that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's that's this possibility, and I don't think it's in, t in too distant a future. It just needs some business or some people to get stuck in and figure out how to do it, and you know just disrupt the likes of um, Celest Celestron and Skywatcher, because uh, most of what they're doing is just you know a fairly um, pedestrian evolution of their previous systems. It's cool. Imagine if it was on your phone. <laughs> yeah. You know, a 300 or 400 millimeter focal length F2 camera on your phone. Yeah. With stacking software so you could handheld and take image of, images of galaxies. Yeah, it's probably a few technical barriers to get over to get that. But... It's really cool. Yeah, but I wouldn't put anything out of the question from what I've seen in those. Well, well with hot lots of. With your hyperstar, you're at the at the you sh you're, um, you know your shortest your practical short exposure is short enough that you can run on a, on an Altas mount, no problem with stack. And if you go shorter again, then you actually wouldn't need a tracking mount at all. So you just put it on a tripod. Um, has anyone used the Pentex Astro Tracer system? No. Um, so the Pentex K1 and a range of their K cameras. Um, they've got image stabilization, which actually moves the sensor to achieve the image stabilization. 
Wow. So they built so they built a system that tracks that is a star tracker by tilting the sensor within the camera. Wow. Um, so it's it's um, built into K1 Pentax K1 and a range of other cameras. Uh, all it needs is a GPS signal so it can figure out where you are so it can um, apply the right uh, correction. And then it enables you to just put it, you know, on the ground pointing up or on a fixed tripod and have it uh, star track without trails uh, for long enough to do, um, you know, reasonably long exposures. And that's just that's just built into the Pentax cameras. Wow. Well, that's the way they used to guide big uh, cameras on the on the big telescopes years ago, they didn't they didn't move the telescope; they just moved the uh, the plate. Yep, it's a lot easier to move a small plate than a than a ten ton telescope. It's true. And was that automated, or did, did you have to sit there and just sort of crank the handle and stop things falling off or something? Well, they, I'm sure they had a guide star there going by, so they're probably looking, you know, off axis on the plate. Like, can you imagine that just you know guiding for ten hours at a time? Wow! In the cold. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, the whole night's ruined. Yeah. Yeah. So what else are we looking at? I'm going to go to M89 just because I'm fascinated from what. I saw in Doug's images. Yeah, it is a fascinating part of the sky, isn't it? And it's pretty high right now, so. Right. Are there any uh, ASI users on here tonight? I use the ASI software, but I don't use ASI. Uh, ASI, ASI Long. ASI Air Pro. Jeff, I've got the ASI Air Pro. So I've got an interesting, too, interesting dilemma. Um, let's see if I can share my screen for a second. I think my time is off on my... Let me click this. So in my preview, let's say I want to go to M51. Uh, interestingly, I can see it in the sky. It's really high, but my graph shows that it's, <laughs> I'm not sure why my M51 is so low. And if I go to my mount settings, my time is off by two hours. What about that sync to mount button? Yeah, this is not, um, this is the longitude. I don't know that it fixes the time. Does it fix the time? I don't it takes, know. It normally it takes the time off or an iPad. To the net. No, I, I heard somewhere where the you weren't supposed to use daylight savings time with the ASI airs. So I see. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever connected the hand controller. That's the problem. UTC minus seven. I try yeah. changing that to UTC minus eight and see if that corrects it. But I can't change that on here, right? That's the handset. 
So is your hand controller well, set with daylight saving? Uh, well, do you have your hand controller connected? I do not. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's in the box. I use the hand controller with my yeah. ASIE. Um, it's usually the phone or the iPad. And sometimes if I use the iPad, which is not connected to the to a GPS um, or the internet, I get a message saying straight away, hey, I don't have updated data here. So what I do is I switch, I use my phone then to initiate the ASI Air, and then it grabs all the relevant data, temporal data and spatial data off that. And then I continue using the iPad. All right, um, I think I'm going to go walk I, out I to the yard and see if I can fix that. At times or anything like that. It just grabs it all off the phone. Yeah, I'll just share my screen for something completely unrelated, but what the heck. I'm just looking at the asteroid um, occultations coming up. So I've got one. So I'm in Auckland, so the centroid of the path is going right over my house. Uh, on the 10th. So I'll definitely try and get an observation of that one and try and get a few more EV scope users in New Zealand to have a go to. Yeah, so that's just the calendar of upcoming transits. Yeah, so Kim, your club's getting an EV scope? Um, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I just walked away. Um, yep, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so this uh, is the kind of thing I can do. There, there seem to be quite a lot over, more, over Australia more so than New Zealand, probably because you're closer to the um, equator. That path seems to be close to over the top of us in South Australia. Yeah, so the, the uh, yellow edge of it is, um, I mean, that's the level of uncertainty they have over it. So it could, the path could be anywhere along there, most likely. So this is an asteroid occultation. Yep, that's an asteroid occultation. There's a few others that are hidden over various parts of Australia. Um, currently, you basically have to scroll through the map to see visually whether or not it's going to be close enough. They don't actually have a system that says, no, you're here, therefore these are the ones that you know apply to you. Um, so it's from time to time to go through. It's also also a Slack channel um, for the Unistellar and what, on the occultation Oceania, Oceania one. So the... Um, Scientist on that will put out a call and saying, "Hey, we've got this coming over Australia and New Zealand. Anyone can anyone observe?" No, we, we have about three members who have them, and um, yep. we've just, as I said, we've had one donated to the club for um, our young astronomers people yep. group. Um, yeah, it's so an awesome system. I, I had a friend come around to uh, do some astronomy, and I just said, "Hey, down, download the Unistellar app." So he came along and said, "Okay, just connect here." Blah, blah, blah. Okay, scope's yours. Yep. What do I do? Yep. Pick up the camera. And he just spent like about three hours just exploring the sky, having a great time. Yeah, no, they're, just, they're, I mean, I've got, really does. I've got the Frankenstein version of that, which means I've, I've put together, I basically have an old telescope, a couple of old telescopes. Yep. And I'm basically um, using the ASI Air hardware and software and all the bits and pieces. Yep. I've created something very similar. Yeah. Um, very heavy. But once you get it all, all hey, rigged um, up, it will. Yeah, I'm you've actually got quite a few going over, over Adelaide over the next month. Yeah, I see that. And uh, one of our members, I'm sure, will be on top of that straight away. Hey, I've got, I'm just going to set up my ASI Air here just to test uh, test out the local time and how it works, given what Jeff Jeff said. Because we're currently in daylight saving, but it switches off tonight, so we good test before and yeah. after. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll just fire it up uh, shortly and um, and uh, see what it reads out, and I'll share that for Jeff. I see he's off at the moment, but I'll just get that ready to go once he's back. At least we can just uh, follow up with this question. Yep. Right, so you've got sorry. three EV. Sorry, I just want to go back. You've got three EV scope users in your club. Uh, there's two that I know of, and the third one would be the um, the donation. It's yeah, because at the moment they've got an experimental observation program running where they're trying to look uh, better understand how the EV scope can measure variations in magnitude. So what they're asking for is people to observe. Um, an, an asteroid um, and if they have simultaneous observations it really helps uh, the calculations mm -hmm. and if you have simultaneous observations from the same site it is super helpful for the, for mm -hmm. the calculations because in theory you've got the same luminosity from yeah. from the object you know because you're only a couple of meters apart so the atmospheric distortion shouldn't make actually make any difference 
Um, yeah, so one of our members is the Unistella EV Scope ambassador uh, in Australia. So um, okay. he'll uh, he, he'll rope in the other guy for sure. <laughs> yes, he's, he's probably probably aware of it. That's been put through the um, planetary defence um, program. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to set up some hardware here. I'm just going to mute and um, get back to my renaming eventually. But I'll just I'll just get ready for when Jeff's back on. All right. Just excuse me for a few minutes. Nice image, Jonathan Betts. Thanks. <laughs> Brings back some memories of 12 hours ago. <laughs> that is a very, very, very wide field. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's with my, I just have a next star six C that I'm using a Sunstock mount. I've got the Hyperstar on there, so. Yeah, uh -huh. wow, so cool. that explains that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, quite a large camera sensor. Yeah, it's 183 MC Pro. So, yeah, pairs pretty nicely. Yeah. With this, this goes. So how, how do you find that for, for EAA? Because it's, it's a bit, a bit of an older sensor. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, I, it, you know, it probably would be nicer if it was a little bit more, maybe a little bit more sensitive, but it's, you know, it's, it's, I, I think, uh, you know, I think I, I've liked it a lot. So I've heard it's the first one I've had as well. So I've heard it's really great and very high res. Like it's, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the pixel size ends up with being a very small pixel size that gives you lots of resolution, right? Right, right. It's like it's like just barely over two microns, I believe. So. Right. Yeah. yeah, which is what you need for the hyperstar. Otherwise, you'd be um, mm -hmm. under sampling and lose the detail. Uh, yeah, that's it. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't I, I, the guys in Starzona kind of helped me with, with picking that out. They said it goes really well because it's uh, Hyperstar 6. So I live here in Arizona, so I could actually drive down there and talk to them. And <laughs> yeah, I just bought a Hyperstar last week to, sorry, a C6 to replace my ATSE. Okay. So I'm just I'm trying to figure out what camera and what, what other stuff to put on to put on it. Yeah, I just found the ATSC to be a bit too long a focal length. Mm -hmm. And it just makes everything, you just need more and more gear to make it work, which is, I just find it more complex and expensive than, than I'm uh, wanting to do. Yeah, yeah so this has proven to be a really s simple setup. And, you know, I, 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 the only thing the downside is, is, you know, the objects, you know, because it's such a wide field of view, you know, when you're looking at some of the smaller galaxies and some of the smaller objects, it's, it's got its pros and cons. I mean, the pro is I can do something like this where I can bring multiple, you know, star clusters together. And it's just a lot of interest in what's going on in this image versus downside though is you want to look at a you know, smaller galaxy and just it's a really small in the image. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a high resolution sensor, so you'd be able to zoom in by a factor of two or maybe even yeah, three. Yeah. Still, have a, still have a nice image. It's getting a little anyway, I've got, a, I've got a shoot. Yeah. I've got a shoot off. Uh, good luck with the rest of your observations. Thanks, Michael. Right, and have a lovely morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever it is. <laughs> thank you, and thanks for all your good work. Right, thank you. It's been been, been great fun, and, and Doug, thanks again. You've uh, really made this this event en en enjoyable. Really, you're very, you're very kind. It was fun. enjoyable because everybody pitched in, and you were one of them. So thanks. Great. Thank you. See you. Looks like Jeff is uh, laying face down on a couch now. Just like he fell over with his face down. Oh, he's got his blanket. It's kind of bad. <laughs> must be in must be chilly in Billings.
Cheers, guys. That uh, phone sync fixed everything. Hey, that's awesome. Good. Well, I was just going to demonstrate it for you, Jeff. I've just set up my ASI Air here. I'm just going to run it through and share it. But if you if you're fixed, you get good. The thing is, we're on daylight saving for um, about 12 more hours. So I'll check it now and I'll check it tomorrow as well to see if it's made the switch or not. But um, no, it's good that you, the phone made the difference. Doug, this is Randy Hodges. I put the Zoom on my uh, cell phone and just let me walk you around the crew and our equipment here. Sounds good. This is Elizabeth and Rye. Hello, this, Elizabeth and Rye. This is I. This is Rye, and this is Elizabeth. They are knocking out objects. I think at last count we had just passed fifty. Nice. And um, most of those are uploaded already. They're operating our C fourteen. Not sure if you can okay. see that well. Let me come around the other side. This is astrophysics uh, mount with a C14 and a ATEC camera hyperstar. Nice. And it does some very nice images. That's what most of our ones so far is. And this is the, this is Brian. You guys know Hello, Brian. Brian. Hey, Hello, Brian. And Another Carl. Carl and Paul, Paul over Hello. here. And this is our plane wave. Probably can see that better from the other side. Fantastic. And we're just trying to get it up. We're still working on it. This is a 17 inch plane wave on an astrophysics mount. Fantastic. So, and we're in an open air. The whole roof of this comes out. The main room is probably 20 by 20. Uh, with the two sculpts in it. It's great. So this is what we get to play with. And yeah, this is a cooperative venture between the, the Rotary Club and the local school district and a bunch of the corporations, Intel and wow. Aerojet General and some other things that all contributed to this. Fun. Good. And, and let me just take you outside for a second. Okay. We're on a hill, relatively dark. I don't, I don't know if you can see anything, probably not. Um, but we have a, what we call a sky theater, which is three rows depression in the earth where people sit laying back, looking at the sky. Nice. And we run that. And then we've got, this is the bathrooms and such forth. And then back here, we have what we call our research dome. We've got a, a 10 inch, and that's not showing up at all, sorry. Uh, a 10 inch Richie Crichton on a nice mount uh, that does spec spectroscopy. Nice. So, that's something that we do. We make that available to the local college students who want to use that for research purposes. And we've got a weather station and a 24 hour camera and a weather quality measuring. We've got some, some nice equipment. It's good stuff. That's awesome. So anyway, just thought I'd walk you around. So who is the visionary that actually got this all dreamed up and made it happen? I'm not sure. Um, it's it's been a a pretty dedicated group of people that have been behind this. It it was 2006, and in 2006, Rotary International made a big deal about they wanted every Rotary to do something that would positively impact their community. Yes. And one of the local Rotary members says, "Why don't we build an observatory?" Wow. We still. I, I left 84 or 5 minutes. That's great. Just before what you guys were doing before. Mm -hmm. 84 then, please. Yeah. Hey, uh, Randy, my name's Kim. I'm from uh, calling in from Australia. Could you um, give me some more details about the location of the observatory? 
Uh, we are near Sacramento, California. We're in the Sierra Nevada foothills, about mm -hmm. 40 miles east, about halfway between Sacramento and Lake Tahoe. Yep, okay. And what's the name of the observatory, the facility out there? It's called the community, well, if you go to communityobservatory.com, but it's also called the Placerville Community Observatory. Really cool. And what we've done now is uh, all of, both of the computers that we're imaging with right now are connected to laptops or connected to computers. And we've shared a drive and I'm in the office now. And this is where we're doing the uploads. Nice. So here's, here's the shared folder with everything that we've done so far, 53. Mm -hmm. And then M87 will be the next one I upload. Nice. Interesting. I'm doing exactly the same thing here in Australia at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for you. So what time is it in Australia? Say again? What time is it? Uh, where I am at the moment, it's just um, approaching 4.30 p.m. on a Saturday. Well, it'll be a while till you have dark, huh? No, I, I did my imaging 12 hours ago. So I was yeah, I bet. With Michael and um, I ended up, I did a quick count. I reckon I've got 75 images according to my That's handwritten great. notes. And That's I'm just well, loading them at the moment. So uh, that'll, that'll give me the actual number. Well, it's about 11 o'clock here and we've got the rest of the night. So yeah. we should do pretty well, I hope. That's awesome. We'll see. Okay. So you're going to be around all night? That'll be good to follow? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do some Google searching and find out a bit more about your observatory because we're quite interested in um, sort of moving forward with some plans we have. And we're at the conceptual design stage and, uh, and drawing up requirements, I think. Um, yeah, well, I was impressed with a couple of things you said there. So um, I'll, uh, I'll follow up. I might make, make touch base with you at a later date. Yeah, well. and uh, we, we happen to have a technical genius that makes everything work. And you probably need someone like that to do something like this. So start, start looking. Yep. <laughs> That's good. No, thank you for answering those questions. Oh, you are welcome. And we'll come visit your observatory when you build it. Well, we have one already. We built it back in the mid eighties uh, as part of the, um, the return for um, of Haley's Comet back in 986. And uh, yeah. we got a lot of support from the community and from government to facilitate that observatory. And, um, and uh, we, we've got encroachment, urban urbanization issues that are starting to impact us, even though we still have a Bortle II site. Um, we, we need to net and commence planning for something um, at, a, at a future site. And uh, right now we have a very large international dark sky reserve to the east of us. Wow. Um, and um, it's Perfect very, very large. Go ahead. Sorry. I said Bortle 2 is impressive. That's that's great. Yeah, it's Bortle 2, but it's heading in the wrong direction. Um, but the actual dark sky reserve, I think they claim they can get down to 21.9 uh, in terms of, I'm not sure what units we're talking about. My head's not clear at the moment. Um, but it's uh, 3,200 square kilometres of protected dark sky. Um, and um, so that's become a huge astrotourism uh, site as well now. So there's a lot of uh, appropriate development going in there and businesses setting up catered for that market. And we think we should be relocating our, our facilities or some new facility out there as well. So well, we look at approximately where are you in Australia? So we're, we're based in Adelaide, South Australia, which is on the oh. southern coast. So it's, yeah. the, um, it's in the state of South Australia, which is a very large, dry state. Um, yeah. very, by very large, I mean it's, it's actually 40% larger in a certain area than Texas. So it gives you a sense of scale. Um, Texas, Texas is pretty impressive. Yeah, this one's where it's about 40% more of uh, uh, desert-like conditions, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what the joke that we we tell Texans that uh, that if you were to cut Alaska in two, that Texas would be the third largest state. 
makes them very mad. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, so we have typically very dry conditions, and um, which well, is good. That's... But we don't have a lot of altitude, um, so we yeah. can take what we can get. Well, good. Well, maybe we'll come visit you someday. You should do that. We've had quite a few people come through our facilities over the years, and uh, we uh, we're actually the um, as a club we're the oldest club in Australia of this type. We were founded in eighteen ninety two. Wow. We have about just over 700 members at the moment. Well, that's great. So we want to um, continue to uh, do the right thing and evolve our facilities and our benefits for our members. So, yeah. Anyhow, yeah. I'll leave it at that. You're most welcome to visit us. And as I said, we've had a lot of visitors from the US and elsewhere over the years. Pro pro probably not next week, but maybe at some point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to Sacramento once, and I think I was driving through to uh, uh, what's that town out in the desert? <laughs> Palm Springs. Palm uh, Springs. No. Oh. Uh, Phoenix. No. Um, I, I can't think at the moment. I'm still. I didn't get much sleep at all last night or this morning. So I'll think of it in a moment. Hang on. I'll just go to Sacramento. Sacramento. The Sacramento is our state capital, and it's kind of the middle of the state. And I was driving through to uh, the neighbouring state, actually. Uh, well, we, we, we live in the place where gold was discovered in California. Oh, okay. I went to Carson City, Nevada. That's where I went. <laughs> <For Wow. business. laughs> well, that's, that's a relatively dark place. And yeah. the, fur the further east you go in Nevada, the better it gets. Yeah, yeah. Spent a lot of time in the states and uh, and in Canada over the years. So, but yeah. Anyhow. Well, our our project for the summer is we're gonna camp uh, up in the wilderness in in uh, Alaska, but not wow. gonna not much to look at in the sky in the summer in Alaska. Mm. Oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Although two years ago, we did camp up above the Arctic Circle and got to see the sun not set. So that was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's made a circle around us during the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. Okay. All right. Nice, uh, nice chatting. I'm going to continue naming <laughs> and uploading. Well, thank you. Cheers. I wonder if I have SharpCap set accidentally to save tons of stacked frames because boy, my hard drive's filling up fast. I bet it's saving all the stacked frames. Whatever it is, I have to find a way to deactivate it because I am completely out of space. Hmm. Let's try that.
So where would where would it say when I'm saving? Where would the switch be to save only the final frame rather than the whole stack? Anybody know the answer to that question? Now you tell you on the ASIR Pro, but not. <laughs> okay. All right. But it's probably under the stacking menu. All right. Where you tell it to save uh, individual images. All right. Hey, Doug, I had a question. Yes. Since uh, this is my first night participating in three outings, um, how do I add <laughs> a picture to Notion? <laughs> well, the, the typical... Um, in the image section. Yeah, the um, typical problem has been that the person was logged on view only instead of, instead of preparing a credential. Um, so do you have your email? Do you remember when you clicked on your email, did you click external... Or did you actually create a, a username and a password? Um, I think I just clicked the link, but I had created a username and password in the past. I see. Let me look and see what, how it's set up for you. Let's see. Yeah. Would you have wanted your... Um, Gmail, or would you have wanted your? Uh, yeah, the Gmail. So not your health one. Yeah, correct. So it looks like you've created a name for your Gmail one with just your first name, and then your other one is also created with your first and last name. Hmm. So you just want to log on somehow with your Gmail one. Do you have that email, or shall I? Shall I revoke these and then resend them? And that way you'll get a new email. Um, let's see. Yeah, maybe a new email to the Gmail. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to... I don't see a place on here where I can log in. I'm going to remove the... Um, the G Jeff one, and I'm going to share it again. I'm going to say send it to the Jeff, to that one, invite. So when you get this invitation in 30 seconds, um, one will say, go to the external, and that's not what you want. You want to go to the, create the username and use your Gmail. Oh, it just says click here to view it. Uh, there should be another prompt, I would think, that would let you create a credential. Here, I'll share my screen. This is this is all I get right here. Uh, you invited to this or click here to view it. And then when I click, it takes me to the... Yeah. You don't want that, do you? There's no login. It definitely says edit here. So you have rights to edit it with your Gmail address. Um, Let me just go to notion.com and see if I can show, log in that way. Show us that email again. All right, hang on. Share my screen. Yeah, that's what I'm getting right there. You have been invited to that. Now, what if you click that? Yeah, that that's what I keep. That's what I keep oh, opening really? up. Hang on. I see. Uh, so if I click here, unsubscribe. Maybe this is. It doesn't look like I'm on the list of uh, last viewed by. See, I'm on there. 
Jeffrey Horn. Yeah. All right. So let's say I want to do an M51 edition. So you you would click in the image column beside M51, and when you clicked on it, it would show a drop down, a drop down list, and it would say add image, add, you know, pick your file. Oh, there it is. Add file. Okay. Good. All right, I'm good. Okay, good. All right, I think I got it. Good. So M forty nine is a M forty nine is a elliptical. Not even Charles Messier did all these in one night. Sixty one. One. What are you doing now, Doug? I'm doing M sixty one. M sixty one. All right. Yeah. How about you? Um, I just finished fifty one. I'm gonna go over to like one hundred six or something. Okay. I'm just surprised at the way this kind of night just really focuses on developing our muscle memory for 
workflow. Oops, I got to change that. 61. Spiral Galaxy. Are you still imaging, Jonathan? Yes. That's nice. You're still at it, huh? Yeah. I'm going to pack it up here in a little while, but mm -hmm. it's going to be off a little bit. Cool. Got a pretty nice third sky out tonight. So yeah. I'm actually sitting here. I also have my binoculars out, so I'm sitting here. Oh, wow. Toggling kind of back and forth between, uh, obviously, I'm not going to fully manage us, but toggling back and forth between the EAA nice. side and looking through a pair of binoculars. <laughs> nice. I've got um, one telescope doing astrophotography on one object and then the SCT running around on all these EAA objects. So a little bit oh, of wow. feet in both bathtubs. You're a wild man, Frank. <laughs> You're wild. The swelling spiral. Sombrero. I like the Messier Marathon. Well, yeah. It's so strange when ASI says these things aren't in uh, aren't in view again. I'm not sure why it reverted. Yeah. See this, Doug? It's got like uh, M87 is not even visible. So you can't rely on that? it. You can't rely on it. That is weird. Huh. All right. I guess I got to go back to the mountain, figure that out. Yeah. Because um, all these so. things are supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it says pinwheel. What's that? Is. I said, I wish I knew how to help you, but I don't I... Well, I'm just afraid if I hit go to on my laptop, it's going to crash the thing. Maybe if I just sure. go out there and 
Baby said it'll be fine. You didn't happen to just download the newest update that just came out. Or you're you're using ASI Live or ASI Air Pro? Um, I'm using ASI Air Pro and the app through BlueStacks. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll be back. I got to go to the yard. Right. Good luck. Sixty-eight globular. Oh, yeah, right there it is. Eighty three Southern Pinwheel. And that is a C spiral galaxy. half a degree. There it is.
You know, strange when I go out to the yard with the uh, iPhone, everything works fine. <laughs> Maybe I just need to close BlueStacks and restart it. Oh, Let's try God. that. Now, isn't it's always something, right, Doug? It is. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> no, it's isn't interesting, it? Jeff, that you're writing BlueStacks and you're about an hour ago, you're pointing out how your uh, mount time was two hours off. Well, I checked yeah. mine. Mine was four hours off. Whoa. Was it still working fine, or did you have problems with Meridian flips or anything? Uh, no, I don't I don't have it set to do Meridian flips, but I uh, – yeah, no, it seems like it, it's doing okay because all the pointing – and I think all the actual calculations are being done in the ASI Air Pro. Right. I don't think they're being done in the mount itself. So I don't know. It's 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 kind of weird. The other thing I'm finding is that when I do the download of the stack, yeah. And Kim earlier today was saying that there's a a JPEG file that's saved. That's uh, I think 50%, yes. something like that. But the only thing I'm getting is a very, very small thumbnail. Like it's like a six kilobytes in size. Oh, yeah. hi Jeff. Let, uh, sorry, uh, John. Let me just jump in on that. Yeah, there is um, there is a JPEG that's saved alongside the um, the fits uh, file, and it's next to useless. It's as you said, very, very small. Yeah. When you click that down arrow. It actually saves it on your iPad or iPhone in the photos directory. So if you open yeah. up the photos app, it's in there and it's it's not 6K, it's typically about 500 k And that's what I've been that's what I'm currently uploading. Okay, that yeah, because I'm running it through blue stacks on a PC. So I'm under under uh, Windows 10 and I look in the photo, I actually did a search of the, the hard drive looking for you know file name and you know coming up empty. So I don't know if it's something I'm just using the snipping tool. Mm. Okay, so you're not actually that's, saving a. Or, that's the best idea. Okay. I, I think that's the best idea. Um, yeah, well, I guess the download arrow, and it'd be interesting to see if there's any documentation, not that there's much at all on the ASI yeah, anywhere, where that, what that down arrow is meant to do, right? Um, certainly on the iPhone and, and iPad, it saves it in the Photos app as part of the uh, image gallery. For all, with all your other photos, I might add. And that's where I'm extracting it from. And I've been doing that from day one. Um, so I've been using okay. ASI Air now for about two years, or close to two years. Now, I'm trying to remember, is, is the ASI Air Pro under BlueStacks? Is that a different version? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I think it's the same version, but I, uh, I'm only using it on an Apple iPhone or an Apple iPad. I, I think it's a different app on the... Um... The iPhone and iPad, the BlueStacks runs off an Android uh, system, so it's a it's from the Google Play Store. So it's same looking app, it's just a different platform. So how often does that get updated? I'm looking at mine right now. It's uh, 1.8.3, and I guess the build is 9.12. Well, it was uh, okay. I'm at I'm 1.8.3, 9.12 as well, and I'll bet there's a. Uh, the updated version for the iPad just came out today, and it's the one with the Sky Atlas and yeah. all the new fancy bells and whistles. Yeah, uh, I haven't downloaded that yet, but it's uh, it's there for the time. Just looking at it now. Um, yeah, the new version is that's available now. As of last time, I noticed the one point nine dash nine dot five three. And that All right, I'm going to share my screen. I've got M106 here. I'll probably put it in the list too, Good. just for fun. When you, when you say snippets, do you do essentially a screen grab? Yeah, um, let's see. Let me share my entire screen. Mm -hmm. um, screen. So I just go down here to search and hit S and go snipping tool. Uh, hit a new snip and then um, you know basically just do a drag and drop and it'll it'll capture that 
And then I can uh, file save as, and then save that to my uh, desktop. And then that can go in the Notion directory. Okay, so, so what I do is see the, the down arrow on the right hand bottom right hand corner. I just yeah, I usually that. do that on my iPad, but since I'm on Blue Stacks, there's if I hit the down arrow here, it just saves it. Uh, I don't think it saves it to this laptop. Yeah, Does it, it sounds like no functionality to it, but there may be there is. Um, we well, can try it and we can find out. It does bring up a message if it if it actually is successful. So you click on it and uh, a few seconds. All right, let's later. see what it does. Well, save succeeded, but I don't I don't know if that just saves it on That's, the uh, uh, that, that bit there that just flashed. That just up. saved it to the ASI device. No, when, yeah, when I when I click that, I get an image on the uh, image gallery in my photos app on both devices. It's uh, not a, a, I don't know where that would go on my laptop though. No, you don't want to mess around with that now. It could right. be in your, if you look in your Photos app, it could actually be in there. But you can do that offline and let us know. All right, let me see. I'm not a laptop PC super user, so I'm not sure. Is there a photo? Oh, let's see. Maybe it does. Let's, let's take a look. It was on your screen a moment ago. Um, you had a, a photos icon, so it might be in there. All right, let me share my screen again. Um, let's see, I don't see photos. The only thing that I saw was. Uh, there it is right there in the middle on the icon on the right. Here are photos. All right. Yeah. yeah, I don't see. There's nothing in here. Hmm. So I, don't, right. I think it saves it to the device, Kim. I don't think it. I think on BlueStacks, I don't think it saves it to the to the device you're working on. Yeah, that's, I think that's the key difference. Um, all the FITS files are saved on the device uh, as, as you go through the night, including the stats. Yeah. But when I click that down arrow, and again, I've seen no documentation on it, it ends up on a separate device, either the iPad or the iPhone. And from there, it goes into the cloud. It goes on one device, then goes mm. into the cloud and is on my desktop as well. And didn't you mention too, Ken, that if you annotated your image, it'll save the annotation as well? That's right. It saves that. So I've got several of those, um, particularly towards the late last night as I was walking through and getting a bit tired. I just wanted to back up just to verify what I had. Yeah, because on mine, I found a, a BlueStacks folder under the pictures directory, but there's nothing in there. Okay. It sounds like the functionality may not be in, enabled through BlueStacks, but maybe yeah. it's also, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a BlueStacks user. But I've, I've used that approach since um, um, first time I got an ASI Air. I was on an Apple iPad and it worked, it has worked that way ever since. So. Well, interesting if there was a manual. <laughs> Anyhow, all right, I'm going to keep renaming, or not renaming, but naming files and uploading them. It's going to take a little longer than I thought, but I'm not even halfway at the moment. All right. It looks like I have about 75 images. So last night. Okay. Talk to you later. I'll, I'll be listening in though. Wow. I guess I may work on just some of these later pictures down at the bottom of the list that just have one, one example. Maybe I'll just add to the body of, of work since all the ones above have yeah. two, three, four. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, I'm just going to have some fun. <laughs> Good. Are you still in Markarian's chain, Doug? No, I'm at uh, M57 right now. Isn't that, isn't it just an amazing, an amazing thing? Just remarkable. Oh, nice, Doug. Yeah. Look at that white dwarf in the middle. Really nice. Of course, of course that's kind of more like a um, digital zoom instead of optical zoom, but. I and like it. Can, you can see that white dwarf. Good color. Right. That's the 2600 MC. Uh huh. Man, yeah, nice. The amazing thing, isn't it, that it's just 80 seconds. I just, I can't get over it. 80 well, seconds. Well, that's the Raza for you. Yeah, I guess so. Six. Fifty six is a globular cluster. Right there it is. What a rich star field, man. It's a really star rich portion of the sky. Doug, I've seen recently that the uh, all the Celestron scopes have gone kind of up in price. Have they really? Yeah. I mean, even a lot of the stuff that I got last year, like the uh, the Skywatcher refractor and the SEM 70, they're all they've right? all been jacked up. The SEM 70 is up like 600 bucks, I think. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Was it around this time of the night last year when we had caught up and we took- Yeah, it was kind of a lull. Yeah, we took like a two hour nap or something. How, how's Sanjeev doing? I haven't really heard much from him. He um, moved to Florida and work is busy, know, or he must be. He talked like he would help in March, but I don't think he helped that much. And then he has been a no show for this one. Yeah. So I don't know what he's doing. John, you looking at anything there? Uh, yeah, I just finished up my M89. And I decided to go for to M57 and see if I can or compare it with what Doug's getting. <laughs> That's so. funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm using a refractor. I'm not sure that I'm going to get quite what the Raz is pulling in. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Yeah. It's kind of a loose uh kind of a small grouping of stars this m29 cooling tower
That would be a open cluster. That's nice. A simple little thing, isn't it? Hmm. Well, we got some nice sombrero galaxies, that's for sure. Oh, good. I'm just looking through that one. Thirty nine. Uh oh, that's getting close to the trees. really close or maybe it's just now rising maybe that's it 39 is an open cluster yep very open Twenty seven. Don't you think the um, M twenty seven looks a little bit like an eyeball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how low some of these things are, man. I know. Did you do any surgeries today, Jeff? Uh, I did. It was my first day back from my sort of back injury. Oh. Um, and yeah, it went well. Were you sore? 
Yeah, I was pretty sore uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then it sort of gradually got better Wednesday, Thursday, to the point where I felt like I could do stuff today. How I told you I was supposed you? to be going out of town today to New Orleans. Yes. And I canceled that whole trip just gotcha. because of what happened. So, How did you hurt your back? Uh, yard work. Oh, my goodness. That's so sad. It wasn't even anything fun. <laughs> not like a, a water skiing accident or anything yeah like mountain biking or something <laughs> yeah. exciting yeah Yeah, a little dumbbell there. Yeah. It is uh, the big dumbbell. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Yeah, it's funny, Doug. Uh, one of my surgical partners is always going to my office asking me about my pictures and uh oh yeah i was telling him today about the uh the marathon oh. and he he knew i used to actually run marathons i told him that we were doing a marathon tonight he's like wait what you're running a marathon tonight i'm like no 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 it's a different kind of marathon <laughs> that's funny i tell you i like the idea of the I guess it was Randy who uh, had the Rotary Club and community support for the observatory. Wow. I, may need, I may need to push for that in Billings here. I think that's a great idea. I've often thought, you know, Doug, uh, you've sort of inspired me with your uh, your little outreach center there on your, your yeah. property. And yeah. my, uh, my neighborhood has a sort of a central pond area with a gazebo. Yeah. And... Um, there's a bunch of kids in the neighborhood. And I thought about over the summer setting up a uh, TV screen right. and doing some EAA for the neighborhood kids. Yeah. I thought They'd that would be that. cool. They love that. Doug, I've got a black eye galaxy if you want me to share. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, man, has this has this been on this whole time? <laughs> I'm sorry. I what, your screen? This, I forgot this was on. Has it been oh, on the right. whole time? Man, go for it's it. It's nice to see stuff. <laughs> I forgot it was on. All right, I'll share my... Okay. Yeah, there's my. Uh, oh yeah, that's very cool. That's about four minutes. Wow, it seems the refractor. That's not bad. That's terrific. What well, um, what focal length is that, uh, Chip? Uh, I have it set up at one X with a flattener, so that's uh, eight fifty. Okay. Cool. It's a Skywatcher Esprit one twenty. Oh, very nice, very nice. I've thought all along that would be a great scope to have. I love it. It's uh, so I got it um, spring of last year, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I have it with the 1X and the 0.77X reducer. Yeah. And so I get 850 and 650 basically. Yeah. Um, and it's been really good for sort of nebula season. Um, and so now that the SCT is. Uh, I've got it doing some AP on the Needle Galaxy. And so tonight the Esprit gets to do the EAA. Nice. Hey, one, of the, uh, one of the really nice things is if you click the tools uh, icon on the left there. Uh, tools, yep. 
you click annotate. Yeah. We'll, we'll label it just in case there's any doubt. But often it picks up so many other objects. In, in the I really love that tool on this, uh, cool, especially when you're on like Mercurian's chain or an Able cluster. Oh, yes. It's really nice. Well, if you click it on uh, M59, you'll see there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six other galaxies in the field of view that are identified. That's M59. If you get around when you get to that one. All right. I'm just I'm just happen to be on that image at the moment that I'm just fixing um, entering the file name for. <clears throat> That's a, that's a lovely image. Um, I took one last night. I'm, I haven't processed it. I haven't sort of processed it. I haven't named the file yet. Um, it's two away, and I'll upload it shortly. I'm just on M59 at the moment. Okay. I tell you, the processing part is a, it's a whole different learning curve. I mean, this has been a big learning curve here, just doing EAA, but the, the well, PICS Insight well, stuff is a whole other... My, my take on that is uh, I don't want to do it. Um, I'll only process two images, I think, in two years. And um, eventually um, artificial intelligence will get on top of it and be able to do most of that for you. To the yeah, point that's true. It'll, it'll keep 95% uh, people happy. Because <laughs> uh, that, that, that picks in sight scares me. I've, I've come close to buying it, but I just don't have the time to do that, quite frankly. I've enjoyed doing EAA. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, with I'm it. with you. Yeah. I just love I, it. I really like doing both. Um, I really oh. like getting in the weeds, I guess, is what I would say. Hmm. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of pretty advanced processing with the Pix Insight, and it's been, it's been fun to kind of learn. Yeah. I, I just like exploring um, just with EAA. Oh, you know, yeah. Just, just move the scope to something I've never looked at before. And, and the idea of being able to do that while you're sitting inside, and you see objects and then you do a Google search and learn something about them that you never knew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you keep yeah. exploring um, that way. And I, there was an object I saw a few weeks ago, and I think I mentioned it at one of the, one of the shows recently, and that was NGC 2020. And uh, that was just a stunning object. Never heard of it before. Apparently Hubble had taken Im an image of it. And it's quite a, it's a blue um, nebula. And there's a red nebula nearby and a white nebula nearby. A lovely star field. And it's, it's in the neighbouring galaxy, a large Magellanic cloud. It's a beautiful field of view. If you search for a cosmic, uh, what is it called? The cosmic, uh, Hubble's cosmic, uh, something or other. Cosmic Reef, that's right. Cosmic Reef, you'll see the Hubble version. And I was really happy with the image I took, I can assure you. And I, I just just blew my mind. So I've tried to process that one out, but I'm, I'm still learning how to process images, I guess. Oh, here it is, I've got it here. Okay, I've, got, I've got an image of it here. I'll just, I'll just flash it up on the screen if you... And it's not EAA. Yeah, let me see it. Just, uh, let me share. Oh, here we go. Let me share it first. I've got a compressed version and a not so compressed version. Which one do I want? This is the full frame. I'm on a 533. So I'll just put up uh, this version. Let's share. Yeah. Have a look at that. Isn't that a beautiful field of view? Oh, that's really nice. Wow. And most of that is in the large Magellanic cloud. And, uh, and was that with a uh, NBZ filter, Kim? No, that was for the LX Stream. LX Stream, okay, yeah. Oh, that's so it's beautiful. Alpha, O3. I love the uh, the gray and red combo. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah it depends on how you process it. that gr um, that gray blue thing, that circular thing on the bottom right, which is MGC twenty twenty. I've got another image of it. Yeah, here. Yeah, really nice. Lovely field of view, and if you search for Hubble, what scope was that with Kim? Uh, that would have been. That's with the max suit of Newtonian. So it's a one meter focal length. Uh, Got seven. It. All right. Very yeah. nice, man. Oh, so this is beautiful. Completely by surprise, right? So uh, it's just lovely. But if you search, if you Google search, um, uh, what's it, Cosmic Reef, Hubble Cosmic Reef, which refers to the combination of image, um, 
the blue and the red images on the right there, you'll see what Hull's version was. And um, this is pretty good from a Bordel 7 site. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Oh, well, yeah, that, I see the Hubble image. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I've seen that before, the blue 2020 and the mm. red other thing. Yeah, that's great. So I had a slightly different version of that. This is a close-up. Processed a bit different. I'll just share this one, and it's it's cropped. But, again, that's my one of my first attempts at uh, processing an image. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I was really happy with it. And that, and that was just a, um, <clears throat> I just stumbled upon that as I was just exploring the night sky from my backyard. <clears throat> and that's really what I enjoy it's visual, electronic visual observing, but, um, having, doing it from inside and uh, finding stuff and exploring it for yourself. So it's very experiential, experiential process. Doug, what are you on now? Uh, in 107. Not uh, not as striking as some M107. Not as striking as some clusters. I guess this is supposed to be a, a globular, but it's not so tight. That's pretty low for me, man. Mm. Let's see what else I can get. Let's see if we can do M87, one of my favorites. How's the, uh, is it 88 beside it or am I wrong? Has a, a no, I think that's close. Has a twin beside it, I think, doesn't it? 87 is the one with the little uh, relativistic jet. Oh, nice. That was one of my uh, first uh, real mind-blowing EAA targets when you take a picture of this thing and it's got this little <laughs> yeah. kind of apostrophe sticking out of it. And you're like, and then you read about it and you see some other people post about it on cloud and you're like, Oh my gosh, that's a, yes, that's right. That's a jet. That's crazy. I'll share, um, you know, Kim, you were talking about, I know we're not talking about processing here, but, um, there's, uh, I started taking pictures of this. Let me share. How do I? I'll share this with you. Can you guys see this? Yes. This is a NGC 3718 and um, this Hickson group I think it's 56. I can't remember, but these five little galaxies here. Wow. Somewhere off, somewhere off in here in this area, there are three or four supernova. And I learned about this on cloudy nights. But they are, you know, four, eight, and eleven billion light years away. Wow. Somewhere over here. Um, and I remember when I first saw this object and read about this Hickson thing and these supernova over here, I was just I was blown away. Yeah, no wonder. No, that was very nice. A colleague of mine was imaging a ga galactic cluster last weekend, and uh, the number of galaxies in the field was just phenomenal. But um, yeah, he was obviously spending many hours on that, and he'll process that out. Yeah, I think. Um... Uh, this uh, spring, while the my Edge HD is focused on some of the bigger targets, the uh, the refractor is going to be doing some work on these uh, like galaxy clusters, like these Abel clusters and these uh, Coma clusters, and you know, I, 
all these uh, imaging fields where in one picture you can see like 300 yeah. different galaxies. That's, that's yeah. just, I love that it stuff. It is. So he was imaging Abel, Abel 1060. I've just looked up the email and um, that's quite spectacular. Wow. So there's always something to do, huh? Yeah. Right, right. Kim, I can't remember. Um, I've heard you talk on here a couple of times. Do you, do you guys have a, um, for your big, large group at Adelaide, do you guys have a big observatory? Yeah, we or do. A center? We have an observatory that, that the club owns, and um, it's 70 kilometres north of Adelaide. It is at a Bordel 2 site. Um, there's a 20-inch Cassegrain uh, Newtonian in there, in the large dome, and there's a smaller dome as well that I don't believe has a scope in it at the moment. Oh man, that's awesome! Mm. So we're we're looking at um, our future, a future dark sky site. Now that site that I just mentioned is at Stockport in South Australia, and that's we developed that in the mid 1980s and funded it through a lot of the excitement and buzz around the return of Halley's Comet back in the mid 80s. Yeah. So that was a pretty spectacular effort to put that together and um, been used thoroughly ever since. Um, so, yeah. There is some information online about it. Uh, if you go to our website, which is awsa.org.au, you can find some information about it on our facilities page. So it's Astronom Society of South Australia, AWSA. Dot org dot au. You'll see some images of it there. But I think with the advent of EAA and um, technologies that support that, um, the capabilities in fairly modest telescopes seem to surpass what these larger scopes could do even a few years ago. Um, yeah. The convenience factor is a major part of that. I don't so, think I could do much more than a uh, an eight inch SCT here. I think uh, our, my, my seeing here is not statistically very good. Um, average makes me jump for joy. So <laughs> um, I think anything longer focal length than what I've got at 1422 is would be a real challenge. Yeah, I think um, the scene conditions are often under underappreciated by a lot of folk. I mean, I, I've got to the point now hey, where Ryan. I, just, I go outside and I just look up in the sky and see what, how, how well, much stars are twinkling and then decide yeah, whether it's... Crazy. Yeah. Okay. I've Doug, what you on now? I am on M14. Yeah. Show us. You're wild. I'm, I'm okay. It's, it's, you know what? As much as I like to see Jonathan Bitt's name, it's stronger than they have any telescope. You better to see your target. That doesn't work. You just keep on, you know, what's going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, you want to interact with the uh, group for a while? Okay. Um, Ooh, sure nice cluster. That's got a unique or color to it. We can it? do it together. Number 14. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 It's kind of got a uh, mottled yellow. Because so I looked in the heater. Yeah. My favorite photo. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures? Pictures? Actually, actually, I've started using Affinity. Which I like. Uh, awesome. So we'll, we'll we're in no rush. You got it, you're not flooding us anymore. No. Go ahead, Randy. So why don't you guys come in here and we'll interact with the uh, the worldwide group.
Oh, bring and share. You're talking to them. He's not talking to us. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are EAA worldwide, aren't we? We are. <laughs> we're, we're EAA worldwide. A true international effort. <laughs> we were today, man. All right, I'll share my um, go for it. M87. Nice. Well, I I'm, I'm having trouble getting the uh, finger oh, to point out yeah, of the that's, side that's, of the. That's nice. Oh, I got up at um, 2.40 this morning so I can take over for Doug until 9. Well, <laughs> I did go back to sleep for a couple hours, yeah. <laughs> I was debating whether I was going to work today. I said, you know, the ASI <laughs> system looks really easy. <laughs> It doesn't have as many sliders, Doug, and that's kind of what I like. Ah, about. what do I do for work? <laughs> <laughs> um, not easy to explain what he does for work. Yeah. Are you, are you, and it's so uh, comprehensive, isn't it? Yeah. Architect software. Um, and so that's our annotate feature, yeah. which gives you a couple looks at some different galaxies. Yes. But now I babysit the, the system. I if you're trying to do some better, centering stuff, you've got a centering tool. This, this week. Mm -hmm. so, what do you work for? I work for the Secretary of State. So, so I designed all of their online business files. So. Okay, okay. So, Doug, the, so um, the one thing that I, mm -hmm. I like about ShortCast that, that I showed here is know. the um, white balance uh, and the different color sliders. I haven't been for yeah. a while, yeah. for the last couple of years. Um, just because they want the other people to take over responsibility. And so it's, no, 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 don't. I, do you want me to do it? I can do this like in three days. Now, let them do it. Okay. Three months later. That's kill, me. <laughs> kill me now. Kill me now. But uh, yeah, I, I, I like to sit there and say, my wife, my wife gets on me. She goes, do you have any work to do today? And I go, I'm paid for what I know, not for what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Good, good place to be in. Now, the better place, Randy, is uh, starting April 1st, not April 1st, starting March 1st, I had enough vacation time to take me through the end of the year and retirement. I had enough time to not step foot virtually or otherwise into the office. Until oh, I good for you. Um, well, <laughs> I, I, I'm hanging around basically until the... Um, until the Lots of globular clusters. Uh, we got this. We got this end this year, this month. Confident on the people that you're handing it to, or um, well, you know why? It's, it's not. I mean, there's only certain parts of my system that the new system didn't replace. Yeah, and, I'm around uh, up the yard. I got a uh, meridian flip to babysit. All right, <laughs> because. Doug, this is Randy. We we've got the whole. Late night crew in here. We're we're at the gap in the middle. We've, All right. We can do for a couple hours. All right. These are these are the these this these are the ones that have stuck with us. We kicked everybody else out. <laughs> they're uh, the they're so, the faithful the faithful. So, so we have Elizabeth and Paul 